We don't start the fire. We didn't smoke the cigarettes. La di da di da di da di da di da da. Winston Salem, North Carolina, yeah. in the tobacco fields they are chopping the wood and breaking the plows and going in a mowing and a seeding and a hoeing. <laughs> yeah, that was dedication to keep going. Yeah, if I got further, that would be like queen of improv. Do the history of tobacco. In a song. Yeah, that'd be great. To the tune of weed they're smoke. chopping the tobacco, they'll let her dry in it. Now they're gonna have it sit in a barn for 17 hours. We didn't smoke the cigarette. Uh, hi, hi, Witch Up, what's up? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon, watermelon. Hello, Miss Blue. Hello, Jules. How are you? Hello, you. How good are morning. You? Yeah. Good morning, Janice. We are smoking on the cigarette. Hello, prawn cracker. Maybe the quiet. Uh, <laughs> I got some plans, bros. I made I made a whole plan list of what to do today. You got some biscotti shatter in the rig, bro. Oh my God. Nice. Nice. Hi, Becky. How are you, beautiful girl? What's going on? What's the news? Well, you know, I'll just speak for my head. Jeremy Renner yeah. is proof there's a God. <laughs> and I don't care what anyone says. That is proof there's a God. Yeah. He got... Did you hear the news about Jenner, Jeremy Renner? Dude got run over by a seven-plow... A seven-ton plow while saving a family member, and he fucking is alive. He he he's knocked up, but he's still alive, and he's he's doing good God after like after being run over by a seven-ton plow. Like he, that's proof of God, dude. Hawkeye, yo, that's right? right? He got superpowers. Yeah, bro. God bless him, right? Yeah. He's still alive. You should see it. Look up the news on that. He looks a little beat up, but he's living, man. Yeah, man. That was bad. That's insane. That's proof there's a God, dude. I don't care what anyone says. Like, that's proof of a God. I think so. I think he might see it that way, too. Yeah, man. Oh, man. I wonder if he is a Christian. Probably. You Catholic. Think? Catholic. You think? I'm saying Irish Catholic, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he was actually saving someone else who was stuck. I know he's a hero in real life. Yeah. Wow, maybe. He is a beautiful person. He plays a superhero in movies and in real life. I know, man. He's he's it. He's cool as shit. He's the man. It boggles my mind how people can't see the evidence of God existing. That's that th right there. Very true. There's the story. Yeah. A seven-ton plow, and he's still alive. Holy crap! It's insane, you know. That's crazy. Thank God we could have lost him. I know, man. I like Jesus him saved actor. him. Like I like his older work. <coughs> his older movies. He's a great actor. Yeah, man. And then you want me to cross into the foodie beauty world? Right. Holy shite. Do you really want She to? is such a phony she is a liar and i i i i can no longer like support her at all Oy. at all at all like it's so bad the things she's done because you know i i i saw what all was saying and, and and he was 
Allah. I think it's Allah. I have no idea, dude. Allah. Uh, yeah. And and he was coming off just a dude just telling a story. Mm -hmm. Like it was it came off truthful. I think so. I think he's pissed off that he got disrespected so many times by Foodie Beauty, you know, her showing his car, him showing his camp, and then him using the wives in the camp like slaves. <laughs> Hell. Like, who does that fucking Canadian think she is, man? She's just a fucking YouTuber. She's not that fucking special. I think yeah, I, I think Salah's friend was severely offended by feeling like he was a servant to her. Yeah. With her just sitting there. Yeah. Like, he didn't like that. She came off as racist. Sort of. Like some kind of white fucking dignitary coming into their fucking country. Oh. Uh -huh. And demanding worship. Fuck that bitch. I'm done with her, man. She's a bitch. She's a really bad, shitty fucking human. And she and her and Salah, their relationship, completely fake. And, 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 and how she was eaten on camera in this indignant way yeah. and being so arrogant and cocky and making faces like she owned this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he showed you hospitality and that's how you reward him? Pretty weird. Like... The wife washed her feet? The wife washed her feet. Very disrespectful to someone. That did that to you. Yeah, fuck her, man. I'm done with her, man. Very disrespectful. She's not worth anyone's view at this point. Anyone's. Because all she's doing this for is just money and clout. And she's just just feeding on all that negative attention and all that drama. And she's just like... Thank you. I take this evil energy into me. Kind of. Pretty much. It's gross. Yeah, dude. Let me, let me. I'll put it in the, um. I'll put it in the chat for you real quick. Let me find this. All right. Like and, and and this is this is why if you watch this video this video I'll give you a tag to his video so but you can subscribe to it of course there but um in this video you can see that Foodie Beauty's full of shit about the Habibs and the Hijabs and all that shit you can tell that she's being very deceptive over it because women are showing their hair. They're, they're clothed normally. Here, that's the link to his channel. Good morning, Tears. What are funkle feet? Feet with fungi? I don't know. She never shows her feet. Because apparently they're like really gross. Yeah, she's full of shit about everything, man. Everything. And she's hiding from this guy. That's why her windows are all taped up and boarded up. She doesn't want them to know where she's living.
Like, watch that video. You'll see the dude go like this with a sword while saying Salah. Yeah. I don't know what else he was saying, but he definitely was saying Salah and do this with a sword in that video. It's crazy, man. It's, it's, it's like, me and Jason saw that. He was saying Salah, and it was like, and it's like. What? What? I understood that fucking body language. Nuts. Man. Pretty clear what he was saying there. Mm. Pretty clear. She needs, she needs to get over herself. But anyway, I'll just move on with that. You know what I was saying about Trisha the other day and how she should bring back um, Trisha's baby fishes, kisses, and all that? Well, this is, this is kind of proof that I think she probably watches me because look at the title of this video. Like you're gonna you're gonna be shocked at this when you see it. Yeah. Kisses to my little baby fishes. Dude, she just came out with this video. Yeah, at least that. Again. And it's called Kisses to My Little Baby Fishes. We were literally saying this the other day, dudes. Yeah. Little baby. Dude, what if Trisha's in the audience talking to, talking to us? We don't even know. She's just under a thing so she can fit in with people. That would be awesome. That would be cool as shit. That is so cool. <laughs> Someone's in the chat being really weird, wanting me to talk about something really weird that I don't know anything about. Look at that. I know. What? FB reported barbecue, right? Demonetized yesterday. Yeah, I saw that, man. It's like, dang. You guys really need to learn how to, like, stop doing stuff now. <laughs> learn how to, like, I don't know. I remember my baby when she was that small now. She's two. Oh, my God. The baby in the video, it's so cute. She's smiling. She just, or she's a daddy's girl. You can tell that. Yeah. She loves her daddy. And she's giggling. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's so cute. I know, they grow up so fast. I was just thinking yesterday, like, Zachary used to sleep on my chest. And I, I like, that feeling that I'll never have that again with Zachary sleeping on my chest. Kind of broke my heart because, you know, I just, like... That was just like, ah, your babies grow way too fast. Like, just love them while they're, you know, small. <laughs> you don't like babies. I love babies. Wish we could put them on pause, you know. <laughs> right? I used to tell the boys, you're not allowed to grow up. Mm. I'm not sure if it was FB or someone else. Either way, it boggles me how YT can stop reaction channels ASAP, but allow FB to keep her channel and monetization makes no sense to me. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, I hold a baby and boom, I want one. 
What's the bad news, Comfy? Is comfy. Yeah. What's going on? I I know that babies equal time and money. Yeah, but the love is worth it. You guys are wrong with the Funkel shit. Funkel shit. That's wrong. You guys are wrong with that Funkel shit. That is wrong. Definitely wrong. I thought it was fungus, man. Nah, nah. Nah, that's something way deeper than that shit. I, I still don't know what it is. A father uncle. Oh, a father uncle. Okay. Yeah. Now I get it. Yeah. Brother and sister. Jesus. Happy together. Whoa. I recommend starting a lawyer because trolls have apparently hired a public lawyer for the whole... S They're insane. It's, nothing's gonna happen. Really? Ridiculous. I'm not. I'm not afraid. I think they're making shit up, dudes. Yeah. Cause really, I didn't take any money for cancer at all. Yeah, they're talking about it in Discord right now. Okay. Yeah, let him. Nothing's gonna happen. It's ridiculous. The public attorney is doing an investigation, not the trolls, which is bad. Yeah, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Some people are in too deep, right? Yeah. There's no record of you ever saying you were taking cancer donations. No. You never did. <sighs> Period. Like, holy shit. Hey, if they come over to my house, all I'm going to do is fucking flash them. Like, look at these tits. Now, please, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to get it figured out. Leave me alone. <sighs> Nothing the trolls say scare me, nor should it scare you. There's no investigation. People love to claim you're lying. You're just trying to live your life as full as you can with your illnesses. Yeah, exactly. Everyone knows you did not take any donations for cancer. They're just like, they just like to cause trouble. Yeah, exactly. True. You don't, I don't think that's how exactly it works, but I wish you luck and pray for you. I love you too. I'm not afraid of it. Like, it's literally what I'm do going to the doctors for. Yeah, it's fake. It's not real. They say you've been doing it for years. What, talking about my breasts? Yeah, I've had problems with my breasts for years. Yeah. And that's why they're suing? Because I... Suing for what? Who is suing you? The attorney, the attorney general is suing you? Suing for what? It's ridiculous. Me having problems with my breasts for years? It's not made up. Okay.
Nah, she's really not worth the investment of time. I'll be honest with you, sunshine. Hi, Ted. It's bullshit anyway. It's bullshit. They just are trying to get in my business that way by opening up investigations so they can have FOIA files. Yeah. Yeah. You're beautiful, mother. Don't let them anger you. They're trying to sue you over talking about your breasts, how that's illegal. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, the claim is that you take donations for cancer. And that no, I don't total. at all. There's no record of that because we've never done it. I've never done it. We've never done it, period, ever. Thank you, Foods Vegan. It's just dumb. They're just trying to start shit. They think maybe if they say this stuff, I'll, I'll like confess to something and there's nothing to confess because it's like I literally have a lot of problems with my breasts and I'm going to the doctors for them. It's your own medical business. Yeah. yeah, it's my own fucking medical business. You just ask for donations for Food and Delta. You're honest about what you want for money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is just dumb at this point. And they're trying to start some kind of weird fucking drama that isn't even true. You're welcome, sunshine. It's always some, something else. But that's for content. Yeah. That's what they're doing. It's for content. And they even have people that can make up, they can draw up fake legal documents. Yeah. And they make it look real. Yeah, you know, they do. Paralegals. They have paralegals in their crew. So they can, they can type up documents that look very close to what could be real. So... Yeah. It's so nuts. It's just so dumb. It really is fucking dumb as shit. And and if you want to, if, if, if it does go down to that, you guys can be my witnesses. Like, easily, you can be my witnesses. I don't have to so show any papers to the the attorney general without a court order. The attorney general. Yeah, I don't have to show any papers to the attorney general without a court order, and that's what I would say. Get a court order, Jenny. If you if you. <laughs> were... I don't know if I believe this. Sounds like people wanting you to do a rage. That's what I'm thinking. I'll stand in court of law for you, Shani. DM me if anything actually goes down. I'll be there if the trolls even try it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sunshine. They're full of shit. All they're doing is trying to start... Like, they're going to get you in trouble for false reporting someone. Yeah. Well, if they watch her at all, they would already know that they only ask money for Delta, eight, eight cigarettes, food, whatever. Nobody's said specifically for cancer. No. Never. No. Yeah, who cares about what you two do? Yeah, exactly. We're just trying to ruin your show. Yeah. Yeah. I probably should block that person who said that. I think so. Yeah. I've noticed them for a while that they come in here and start fucking shit. Like, fuck them. We're just trying to ruin your show. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's not that hard to understand. Yeah, man. People butthurt over other people making content. 
when their only content is your content. But I would. They come over here to investigate. I just lift up my shirt and I'll be like, I'm going to the doctors for this. Any questions? God, my God, I don't know. Be like, I don't know, you didn't have to do that, but I get your point. Uh. And they probably wouldn't have warned you in a private message, not here during your show. Yeah, that's true. They're so fucking dumb at this point. They're finding, they're trying to find any reason. Anything they make up in their head they think is true. And it's like, I ain't doing shit other than trying to feel better every day of my life. Yeah. You know? I'm trying to deal with mental illness every day, so it's... You know, before this show, I was... I was actually, like, wiping down and cleaning under my breasts because they're seeping underneath it. So, <laughs> fuck them. I, I got, I got, my body's my fucking proof. She, Annie, I'm sure that if there were things like this, you, you would know that you're under investigation. Yeah, I would know I'm if just I'm saying. under investigation. You're right. Okay. This is total bullshit. But they can make fake documents to make it look semi-real. So it's just, it's it's shanty fan fiction again. It's... Have you had a mammogram? Not yet. I'm hoping, I'm hoping on the 10th my doctor sends me right away, you know. Because I, I, actually I'm going to demand it. I need a mammogram link right away, you know. Yeah, I hate that they're freaking mean to me, too. Yeah, they're open wounds. And then there's a huge rash, too, like, under here. And it goes, like, right in this area. So they hurt. Let me look fancy. Like, I'm not getting any... It's like, fuck them, man. I can get donations. Why does it always have to be something sinister why I get donations? No, I didn't see anything go through, hon. They want to destroy your show. Anyone else sends a letter or harasses you, I'm going back to my hometown and throwing down. Yeah, man. They act like they've never done anything wrong in their lives. They need to stay in their own lanes. Yeah, they're actually doing something illegal by false reporting me all the time for these invisible fucking crimes I'm always fucking doing. No, I'm not putting baby powder in that area. That could cause problems, dude. Like, they got sued for baby powder recently. Mm -mm. Oh, I see it now, Fancy. I'm sorry. I see it. Thank you. I see it now. God bless you. Thank you. Let me look on my Twitch real quick. You gave a community sub out gift. Aw, thank you, Fancy. I see it now. I saw it. I, I just didn't say it we oh. because we were talking. Oh. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. People literally have nothing better to do with their lives other than see others screwed over, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, exactly.
Yeah, it's not a fungus, idiot. Why go after people who are charitable towards you? They're like they're going full force. Yeah, they're making themselves look like they're really bad. They're just making themselves look so bad right now. Oh well. Maybe someday these grown adults will grow up. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe someday. But, like, I don't know if they will. Like. Yeah, yeah, Jane. Jenny, please get an advocate to help you and Rev apply for your disability. I promise you will get approved. All right, thank you, Jane. Advocate. Yeah, they might be too far gone. Who knows? Okay. I don't know about Twitch though. Like I have an income with Twitch. So it's like would I have to stop doing Twitch? Cuz I like if I do Twitch, I wouldn't need disability. You know what I mean? Well, it well for now you kind of still do need some help. Mhm. Mm you're not you're not there yet. Yeah, I'm not there there yet. There there. Yeah. So I think they adjust that stuff. It's all Thank you, Fancy Jane. I do I do air it out. Why not? A lot of people ha that have jobs and still get partial disability. Partial. Okay. That's what you would be, yeah. They'd be decreasing it as you make more and more Twitch money. Twitch doesn't pay enough to disqualify you. Okay, I'll still look at it then. We'll get everything taken care of. Yeah. We will. Oh. Yeah. I know. I Disability goes off work history. I just finished the process. Oh, okay. I need to make over 20k in Pennsylvania to not be able to get assistance. All right, that's good. I'm nowhere near that. Uh, there you go. You want you want a crocheted blanket? They're nice. Uh. <laughs> I've watermelon baby goes. Being cuddly goes. She is being a cuddly goes. Being a lap kid. She's like, I just love love. She, she's a good girl. She really is. Yeah. So anyway, I think Fox, we're, we're, we're in the Twilight Zone when it comes to the news lately, especially uh, Fox News. Something's going on in Fox News. Uh, I think they might go liberal, and I'm going to show you why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my freaking back. Uh, all right. So, well, what she say, Ted? So I emailed Jules to get the bottom of all this bullshit, and she was surprisingly nice and respectful to what I was asking. Should I take it with a grain of salt? 
Probably. I don't know. What did she say? Uh, yeah. They're always trying to get me in trouble with the law. Always. Now anyone who watches my show will be like, there's nothing here. All right, hot mama. Can you check my check my PayPal baby? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my fucking back. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Shani, I'm actually very proud of you and Rev. You have come a long way. Thank you. Oh, heat and pad. I would be like just... Uh... <laughs> I do need a heat and pad. So bad. You achy girls. I am. I'm an achy baby girls. Drag... I need to know something. You you were in the inn, in the inn, in the inn. What's all this stupid bullshit of people trying to get me in trouble with the laws with this, like, cancer scam bullshit? That's fucking bullshit. Like, I'm taking donations for cancer and all this stupid bullshit. Who the fuck made that shit up? I really want to know, like, who's making this stupid bullshit up? And the DA is going to open up a case that has no fucking evidence at all? Other than a woman talking about her breasts? Shani, people are saying you're lying about cancer, just a heads up. That's them. That's not my problem. Why should I get in trouble with the law because they think I'm lying? Why should a pr why should they waste a DA's fucking time and energy? Oh. Shani, Shani, they're going to start, if there is an investigation, they're going to investigate it, right? Yeah. They're going to go to your channel and see that you've never asked for money for cancer once, ever. Yeah. Case closed. It's over. There's no evidence that, that you've done it because you haven't done that, ever. <laughs> That's it. A lot of people say that you can give yourself cancer by thinking, if you do, thinking it. Stress and shit, too. I believe that. I think there's various things that cause it. Yeah. Like, it's bullshit. I don't think cigarettes cause cancer. <laughs> I just don't believe it. I'm just trying to live my life. Why all the fucking wrenches? with the legal system all the time. These people are fucking psychos and liars and they need to be put in jail. Yeah, I agree. Because it's slander. 
bullshit. It really is. It's it's open slander and libel both because they're doing it in text too, of course. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's awesome. Nice people. It's so nice to interact with nice people. I just don't understand this, man. Why make my life harder? Get off on it. Whatever. I'll take the hits as they come, I guess. That's all you can do. Oh, you want to put a, a big heating pad yeah. on Amazon yeah. and then give the Amazon link out? Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. For every one troll, there are ten of us who like you. Yeah. You haven't been through enough already. Yeah, right? right? <laughs> I know, right? I've never heard you say, yeah, yeah, man. I never heard you ask for a donation because of cancer. No, I didn't. Never happened. Never happened. Ever. I don't like Kratom Logan, Logan's mom. I tried it. It doesn't work rare. Yeah. Right? It's okay. You have to keep trying to get rid of pain, anxiety, depression, and fatigue. Yeah. Like, please just. Like, give me a break. Don't add more shit onto me. Hey, man. This is, this is why going home seems like a really good idea. Because I don't have to deal with this shit if I go home, you know? Thinking about going to Duluth to visit for friends and stuff. And to show Jason around Duluth because I think he'd like it. But I would definitely go in the summertime. You're welcome, Fancy. Thank you. I was instructed to, to give you a hug. Oh. She's sick that she's she's fucking sick of you going through bullshit. I know, man. Like enough is enough, guys. It's like, not fair. Leave a lady alone. She ain't doing anything. And you're just trying to have someone, like, break the law. No one's breaking the law about anything other than being sick. No, I mean, that's not even breaking the law. I'm just br being sick. You're just sick. <laughs> Period. Fuck the haters, man. Like, get a life, man. Yeah. 
for real. My breasts are fucking proof. Thanks. It's not the detergent drag. I've been having these problems for years, okay? Yeah. Just too scared to go to the doctors. Well, you are now, so. Yeah. Too scared and 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 not only scared but depressed and not wanting to just go anywhere because I'm just so emotionally and mentally exhausted from any everything and like like I don't know about y'all but this girl needs a break from all the fucking bullshit and drama and shit like I need a break from it. Like, leave me the fuck alone. I got other things I'm dealing with with my life. With my health. With my body. Thank you, Tippy. Oh my God. Shut up, debate troll. Get off my channel. Why are they stressing the uncle out? Because they're nuts, man. They're nuts. And I could easily tell the DA and be like, look into them for giving false reports out through the years. Isn't there some foods or supplements that can at least make you feel better? I don't know, man. I've tried everything at this point. So people hope to influence Rev's uncle so he can kick you out? Oh, yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do, man. Yeah, man, these people need to just stop over their stupid bullshit, man. Thank you, 617, for giving Sandra Zago a gifted sub. That's sweet of you. Whatever. I don't got energy for it anymore, man. I don't got the energy for it. It's okay, though.
can I check and see if it went through? Boy. Oh, I see. How are we doing on that charge? I think so, Fancy Jane. Where did you send it? Is it through the Twitch or the PayPal or... I think they're trying to get you to take in donations for saying you had cancer when you haven't been diagnosed. Crazy, huh? Yeah, man. I don't know who comes up with this shit. No, I don't want to hear what Sokka has to say, drag. He's Did you see DiGiorno Pizza made a pizza that's just dough and mac and cheese? No, I didn't. That's crazy. I wonder how that is. Yeah. Like, DiGiorno makes really good pizza. How is there a mac and cheese pizza? I bet it's good. Yeah, dude. I don't need to do anything, man. I got my proof. You better get a fucking court order before I turn any fucking shit over, though. Period, man. And you don't got, and the DA don't got any proof to actually get a fucking court order, so suck my dick. Oh, if you would have read Checklist. Oh, it's on Amazon. If it's checked on Amazon. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, okay. The heating pad, right? Mm hmm Someone has purchased this item from your list recently. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're the best. That's going to help you so much. Right. I'm having major fucking problems, dude. I know. Aw, thank you, Fancy Jane and the Cat Foods. Oh, my God, Gavin. Gavin, uh, you're going to get your cat foods. Thank you, Jane, so much. You're wonderful. You're the best. Look at watermelon. She's like, cat foods? Uh, yeah, you got to wait a little bit, maybe a day or so, and you'll get your cat foods. Gavin's going to have his gravy. <laughs> you're excited? You're excited, watermelons? She's like, yes, indeed I am. Is it at the door yet? <laughs> Hey, you sent the foods. I did. It's coming. The foods is coming. You'll probably get it. Possibly today. Later on. Look at her. She's so excited. Her eyes are so big right now. Yeah, she wants meat. The boy is a cat bo damn boy. He's good a good boy. boy. The good boy. I'm going to protest this stream until I see the boy. Where is the boy? <laughs> it's probably on the Probably on the bed. It's a good boy. Yeah, I do that. What's my favorite laundry detergent? I don't have a favorite laundry detergent. I just buy what's cheapest at the time, so it's usually game. <laughs> He's on his way down. He's a good boy. He was on his way down. He was? He yeah. hurt foods. He hurt foods? It's the boy. You hear foods, Gavins? Wait, let's let's put the 
the big screen on so they see him better. It's a boy's. He wanted the food, boy? He wanted the food. He wanted food. There's the boy. He's a good baby. He's got his eyes trained on something today. He does. He's There's like, the... okay, I got to do something. <laughs> he's got to do what he's got to do. He's looking for the food. It's like, where's my food? He licked his lips. Yep. Yeah, I love my sweet boy. I'm actually disappointed you probably don't have cancer. Wow. What a piece of shit. Like, you don't know what I have and what I don't have, dude. I know what I have, so fuck off. You're such an idiot. You're hoping I die? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Really don't like people much. Yeah, they really are. Shit, man. I seem like I'm pretty vulnerable right now. Am I okay? No, I'm fucking dog shit. I feel like dog shit today. No, the cats don't like peanut butter. No, they're not into it. The cats have food. They just want their... They just like their canned food. The wet food, yeah. The most. Like, that's their favorite favorite. And Gavin loves his fish. It's coming. Your fish is coming. No, oh, he's getting gravy cans. Yeah, his gravy is coming. Gavin, you're going to have your gravy. Mm. No, I agree with you, Katie. You know, they started testing me in Colorado, and then we had to freaking move. And I didn't get the results then. You were supposed to have an MRI or whatever? Yeah. Or a CAT scan or something. Yeah. And then I And came. then COVID hit. And then, yeah. Then COVID hit, and there was quarantine. Yeah. Like, fuck. And then here, you were going to rehab, and again, COVID fucked it up. Yeah, we didn't even get to the breast issue yet. No. And then we just got to the fucking testing part of it. And then these idiots, like, G-Man threw a fucking wrench and I couldn't go to my doctor's appointments. Maybe. And it came back with the T-cells and everything being off the charts. Elevated. Yeah. That's what, like... can't blame me for the life circumstances. No. Nobody would be blamed for that. No. Yeah, well that's scary. What if you had it for a long time then? I, yeah, I know. I think that's why I'm rapidly losing weight. And stuff. So that scares me because it's like I don't have the answers that I need to have, man. I need I need to get the steps I need right now. What's my favorite variant of Delta Eight? 
I like me some hazes or jack hairs, baby. You seem to like the mango. That's pretty fucked up scale, Firefly. How happy will I get be if I got a real diagnosis? I already been in the diagnosis point. I just need more testing. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? How can I send some Domino's pizza here? Fancy J, go to my Instagram and he'll give you information. Oh my god, I'm so fucking tired right now. I'm sorry, guys. I'm telling you, I'm in the middle of fucking testing. Leave me alone. You're asking all these fucking weird fucking questions. Just leave me alone. <sighs> yeah, exactly. But... <sighs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm glad the boys aren't seeing what I'm going through right now. I wouldn't want them to see that. I'm so proud, so happy they're in a place where they don't have to see that struggling mama. Yeah. Like, to be honest, I don't want them back until I'm better. Just so they don't have to see a struggling mom. Cancer is not as straightforward as getting a COVID test. Come on, guys. It's not just yes or no. No, it's not. You have to go through, like, a bunch of tests to get everything together. Quite a bit involved. And we're just at the beginning stages of it. So please just be patient with me and stop trying to, like, say I'm lying about this stuff because I'm really not. No child should be going through that. It must have been heartbreaking to make that decision. Yeah, it was, but it's like at the same time I knew they they wanted to they wanted that too, that break. Yeah. You know. So I did it for them. Because they deserve the best. They don't deserve a mom who can barely move or do anything for them. They deserve someone who can do something for them. Because they're great kids and they deserve the best. They don't deserve a sick mom. No, I don't. Good morning, Huda. How are you, gorgeous? Whew. All right. I'm going into the Fox News things. I need, I need like... Energy. Yeah, I need something to make me laugh. Because this is just depressing the fuck out of me. Because it's like, it's too much to handle. It's mentally draining for me. So, we, we have reached a climax in this world that Fox News, Fox News, Fox News 
has pretty much given up on the Republican Party. I said it. I know, it's fucking weird. But Fox News has given up on the Republican Party. Yeah, just just watch. New Year with the Fox News Alert. It is day one of the 188th Congress, and House Republicans now are on the verge of becoming a total clown show. A total clown show. <laughs> I bet my fellows from the Midas Touch Network, and that was what? Sean Hannity. I've never, ever in my world would ever thought to see Sean Hannity never. call the Republican Party a clown show. Never. I've seen him do it to a lot of liberals and, and celebrities is calling them clowns. But now it's the Republican Party. You know you've, you've done some fucked up shit when you have that man calling his own party out a clown show. That's rough. It is so rough. That is so rough. Holy shit. They're eating each other. And they're eating each other. And they're distancing themselves from each other, too. Like, yeah. I'm not part of this problem. I, no, I'm not part of this problem. You're all part of the problem. Well, the ones that have been in there are like, we're just regular Republicans, you know? <laughs> Yeah, we need Jesus. Uh, we need Jesus. We really do. He's saying that the Republican Party is on the verge of becoming a clown show. I think the word verge was doing a lot of work there. I mean, the MAGA Republican Party is a total and utter clown show, and after the House He's of having Representatives adjourned Instagram and me. Can she go to Twitter? Honey, can you figure that out in the comments? I'm looking. Okay. He'll fit. Yeah, go to my Twitter. She have you on Twitter? She should have me on Twitter. Okay. I'll wait for a message on Twitter then. Okay. Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Tuesday, because Kevin McCarthy cannot secure the votes for speakership, actually losing support in the third roll call with 20 defections, 20 Republicans voting for Jim Jordan as the Speaker of the House, and Hakeem Jeffries, uh, the Democratic leader, receiving more votes than any of the Republicans in the three roll call votes. You also had Janine Pirro on the five of Fox, and on her appearance, and she said, the ordinary Americans are sitting at home and saying, what is going on? Like, what is wrong with these Republicans? What's wrong with these people? Here, play this clip of Janine Pirro. <laughs> oh, my God. Another one where a woman's tied up and being tortured. <laughs> okay. And McCarthy's... We really need to investigate this game, Hero Wars. Is it, my it, eyes worse than that, man. I've seen ones where it's 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 a pretty realistic looking cartoon, but it's a cartoon. But it's a woman that's dressed up in like a, a nurse outfit tied up in a dungeon. Like, what the hell are you doing in that game even? Yeah, there is something about these advertisements that are glorifying women being harmed. I, 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 I yeah. It's like hentai shit. Oh. hinting at a like assault porn. That's I don't like it. I don't either, dude. I that don't like it. I don't that like triggers me because that it I know, baby. It does. Still confident he's gonna be speaker eventually. Keep this in mind until Republicans can agree on a speaker, the house is basically frozen. Meaning they can't even swear in new members or investigate Biden like they promised. Judge Janine, yes. Not a good look for Republicans today. No, the ordinary American is sitting home and saying. <laughs> Maybe it's because they don't have anything on Biden other than, you know, him having a fucking drug problem, Hunter. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I would like to report those ads because I don't want to see them anymore. I'll look next time. There should be a way that you can single out certain. Oh, I can't wait till I get YouTube Premium. Yeah. That well, that fixes it. Yeah. Do we have enough to get that, actually? Uh. Yeah. We, we could do that right now. I mean, yeah. You could if you want to. And get rid of that shit. Yeah, let's do that. You want to transfer? Okay, I you're gonna let have me, to go let me, into your... where, where is it in my PayPal? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. We'll do. What a boy. Oh, what a good boy. Yeah. Fuck these ads. I'm tired of that. This is called an investment in my channel. I mean, Shani does play, like... It's very much like hentai, right? Yeah, only thing that, uh... Oh my god, I'm sorry, Drag, my eyes are so bad. Lack are the tentacles! Yeah, I... Like, and for me, that's like sex... That's like porn addiction stuff, and it pops up, and it's like, shit, what the hell? Like, I, I ran from this shit. I don't want that in my life, you know? And I'm sure there's some guys out there that feel the same way. It's just like, just get over it, right? Just get over it. Because it's out there, and, and it's becoming, like, bigger, definitely. The, like, cartoon sex stuff is definitely becoming something. We got some wet cat foods on the way. Yay! Yeah, the tentacle thing, Drag, is like, what? Like, that never, that never, like, got me going. Like, I just don't understand that. Like, the appeal there. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's weird. It's weird. It's just, I try to get, it's like, for somebody that's in that world, it's like, I try to get away from that stuff. And the images and the sounds are very triggering. So, that's all I can tell you. But it's like it's getting it's it's getting in the mainstream like way more, without a doubt. Which is fine. It's art, you know. I'm not saying silence art uh, just because of me. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I guess Dre. I don't know. It's the way they draw it, you know? Everything's accentuated and, very, like, the angles are extreme. Like, the, yeah, they're talented at drawing that stuff. That's all I can say. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know why it's very... Code? Can you just... Yeah, of course. That? Yeah. On which... Zip code on which, on what card? Cash app. Oh, it, okay. I all right. That's that's that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> right. There we go. Exactly, Dre. Yeah, you know, you get it, Dre. You get it. And they draw the women like shimmery, like they're sweaty and, and they're wet and moist and stuff. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Yep, I've seen some of that, Ted, definitely. It's crazy. It's crazy shit. There we go. It's crazy shit. Dudes, no more ads. Ever again. Mm -hmm. 
That's a good day. New year with the Fox News alert. It is Wait, day we're... one of the we were, we were, we were... Congress and House Republicans now are on right. the verge of becoming right. a total clown show. Right here. No more ads. Just Jeanine. Yes. Not a good look for Republicans today. No. The ordinary American is sitting home and saying, what the heck is wrong with these people? <laughs> And we elected them. We worked hard. We gave them money. Look at we that beautiful thing. Premium. In the house. There you and go. they can't get along with each other. They don't, they don't like, have enough problems with the Democrats that they at least can't align Thank you with guys. the Democrats. Here's the and then, of course, Tucker Carlson had to weigh in with his bizarre yeah. conspiracy theories like and yeah. his own take on it. And he was saying that if Kevin McCarthy wants to become the speaker, he needs to do two things. Things. He goes, the first thing Kevin McCarthy needs to do is to release all of the January 6th committee files and reports. <laughs> Not just the reports, but all of the raw data. See, so basically, premium was equal to two of my subscribers. Yeah. You guys paid it for it. Yeah, you it. guys paid for it. Two subs, yeah. It's worth it. Follow you back on... Twitter, so I can. Okay. Okay. We'll do. Follow back. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. And DM her. Here, I'll do this. Hi ho. Hi ho. Hi ho. for a response and then I'll give the address. Yeah. Give me your address. Do it now. Do it. Do it now. Give me your address. Are you Kylie? Yo, Snow White is my favorite Disney princess. Do you guys have a face prince? What? A fave princess. Oh, Jasmine. I don't know. I've been low hung, Ted, recently. I've been low hung, <laughs> not high hung. <laughs> you know what I mean? He dragon, dude. I don't know what it is. He dragon. <laughs> Did you get my message? I mean, most people love Jasmine. I feel like, ja I've felt like Jasmine a lot of times in my life, like alone in my castle with my cat. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite princess and the most, wow, look at her, and I loved her fucking shit, definitely, is Ariel. Without a doubt. That's my answer. Yeah. Ariel. Yeah. Ariel made me go, oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, she is Bay, definitely. You just want to cuddle her. That's that's what went through my mind first. Is to like her boobs, her boobs, boobs. Jazz, or sorry, Ariel. Ariel's. Oh, you want to cuddle her? Yeah, but do you really want to fuck a fish? <laughs> that's it. Okay, I said release cut her. I agree. Release all of the files. Fine, cuddle release a fucking fish. Yeah, she, no one on the she still smells like fucking fish, That's dude. That's true, though. Cuddle a some, something that smells like a freaking ocean. Fine. She can't moan. <laughs> a starfish? Yeah, that's how Foodie Beauty fucks. Just like the starfish pose. Not even move, just... Was she supposed to be 16, Ariel? You become a pervert on that? No, I'm saying I, I felt that way when I was like 14. I, that now I would probably look at her as like a young girl. Yeah, now. She said, you can do a lot without even movement. 
Yeah, that's real good sex is not moving sex. That's the Kegels. Yeah. She's squeezing the Kegels. Yeah. Damn redheads. Oh my god. Democratic side objecting <laughs> to the release of Come all on, the no. data and all of the all of the files. In fact, it was the Republicans who immediately removed the January like 6th committee's anyway. work from the website. One of the very first thing that the uh, Republicans it, yeah. did in their rules did is I to get try the right to person? seize all so. of the January 6th committee materials. The other thing that Tucker Carlson says, and I'll play the video, is oh, once a committee I got her now. going okay. to attack the Department of Justice the right and individual. the FBI, and the reason that MAGA Republicans hate Hi, the Department oh. of Justice and the FBI Hi, right now is because oh. they executed a lawful search warrant on <laughs> Ago, there we go. Out that yeah. the cult leader Donald Trump was stealing Their thousands cult leader, Donald of government Trump. records, including top secret, sensitive, compartmented <laughs> information, our nation's top secrets, which could have and likely did result in the death of American. What the fuck? Wait, 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 drag. Yeah, this I, sounds. Yeah. Have you heard of OV poisters? They are like dildos that can deposit jelly eggs inside a. Ew. No, I didn't hear that in real. I thought you were talking about the hentai that's like that, where a thing lays a thing inside a chick. No, they actually have that now. <laughs> what the fuck, Shanty? I don't think you're up for that. That's just weird. Nah, man. Off to work, they go. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> She's singing along. Uh. Like, last time I dropped a jelly egg, it was literally the cap off my freaking cervix. Right. Before I gave birth. It was, it's so gross when that comes out. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm out. <laughs> no, drag. that's wild, man. No, there's this film that is grow that is like when you're pregnant that go that is around the cervix. So you're the the mucus plug. That's what I'm talking about. The yeah. mucus plug. It's snotty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When when you want your pizza? We could do it now if you, you want. You want to. a pizza now? Yeah. Later, this shit is sickening. All right, fine. You don't want to hear about women's muc mucus plugs, but you caused your mother to release her mucus plug, you little bastard. <laughs> we all force our mothers to drop their mucus plugs. Freaking the guys out over childbirth. Isn't it funny how they freak out? They're all like, eee! and it's like, dudes, it's literally what we have to go through. Don't you want to know? No, you're not the only one into some freaky shit. Okay, not at all. It's, it's, just, it's just that's part of my past. I'm See, Drag's not even bothered by that shit. You could tell he talks to his wife about fucked up shit if he's like not even bothered by mucus plugs. He's like, yeah, women have mucus plugs. It does get released. It's really gross. <laughs> Why do you fun. talk about all this personal garbage? Mucus plugs is personal garbage? It's like literally what every woman has to go through through childbirth is mucus plugs. Did you know that? I was a combat medical in the army. They have to decide as a part of training or desensitize us as a part of training. <laughs> Donkey show Ted, holy shit, dude. Oh my God. I'm an ex nurse, seen it all. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't want to see a woman go through that. Are you kidding me? No, just watch Clerks 2. It's good enough for their donkey show. Yeah, it's fake. It's yeah. just a movie. They're right. You don't yeah. want to see that. Yeah. Women, I think, yeah, women have been killed. No, doing fuck that, that shit. They haven't.
someone's asking if if what is Rev what likes is Shani's gruel. What is the, gruel? Gruel the food? It's like oatmeal. I like your food. Yeah, I know. I think that might be a sex something. Oh, never mind. I don't want to know. <laughs> Not everybody wants to talk about body functions and perverted sex. Well, I'm sorry you got so offended by mucus plugs. Well, drag is he's got a he's got he he likes sex. Not going there. Y'all want to Google it? Go ahead. Krista, you've had a bunch of babies. You know all about mucus plugs. Discharge. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, look, if it's weird, it's weird. But if, if like, you're, if you're asking me that when I get her off and it's and the stuff, oh, that, I like that. I do like that. It's your own. It's just you. It's you. I like it. Uh, I'm pretty much bomb proof at this point. Jenya, you don't want to know what a donkey show is. Uh, I do. We were talking about donkey shows, though. Krista would rather talk about donkey shows than mucus plugs. All right. I think I'm hilarious, guys. Rev, you think you're some kind of sex god? No, I never said that in my life. Oh, Why he the fuck is. Would I say that? I would. It's the best I ever had. Well, thank you. Anyway, talk to her. I, I didn't say shit. They're just being an asshole. And assets abroad and troops abroad and imperil our nation. No and spam also in my the chat. FBI and the Department of Justice are prosecuting insurrectionists and domestic terrorists. So because they're doing that, now the FBI and the Department of Justice are detested by Republicans. They hate law enforcement if Water law enforcement's going to focus on domestic terrorism yes. and investigating Water their sports. cult leader for trying to destroy our Constitution, destroy our country, and imperil our troops. Here, play this clip of Tucker Carlson. How badly does Kevin McCarthy want this job? 20 of his colleagues have just publicly disavowed him loudly and again oh, and again. God. Oh my God, even Tucker's saying it. Yeah. Well, who's going to be Speaker of the House? Okay, can we fucking do it? You guys all freaked out over Nancy, and now, now you can't even make a decision who's the fucking Speaker of the House? Like, Jesus. I know who should be Speaker of the House, and I think it would be hilarious. Give it a Bernie. Now listen, listen, listen. All of you. Listen, this is just outrageous how you guys are acting. Outrageous! I, I'd love to see that shit. Oh my God. Bernie as Speaker? Shani, what would you do if you were Speaker? Oh, I'd be, I'd be horrible. They'd hate me. Are you kidding me? I'd call them out over all their bullshit. <laughs> but Americans will say I'm the best damn Speaker of the House ever calling them out over their bullshit. No, they actually do need somebody like Lindsey Graham to come in there and go, Hey guys, we really have to get along here. Okay, we're looking pretty bad. Listen. Come on. Come on. Don't insult him. Leave, with leave the Bernie of alone. He is old, I mean. But still. He's old as dirt. I don't care. He's beautiful. I I want I want in my background that that Bernie meme where he's sitting at the inaugural with his little cute mitt mittens and the and the face mask on. I I I want that in my background so much. I love Bernie. I, I adore that man. Anyway. <laughs> He's just beyond cute for me. Like, I just, I would, I would love to have Bernie, like, Bernie on my shelf. One of those people, like, I put, like, Bernie on my shelf. So, like, whatever I need, like, Bernie, I'll just pull him off the shelf. And he'd be like, this is outrageous! And, and it'd be amazing, you know, and his hip, you know. Hands will flail and everything, because he can't talk without his hands. <laughs> so to win them back, McCarthy is going to have to give them 
something real, not more airy promises, which he specializes in. He's going to have to give them actual concessions. If Kevin McCarthy wants to be the speaker, he is going to have to Hi, do Fancy things Jane. he would never do otherwise. Like what? We can think of at least two things. First, release the January 6th files. Not some of the January 6th files and video, all of it. And not to some phony committee that will hide them, that in fact is designed to hide them from the public, but put them online. Release them to the public directly so that the rest of us can finally know what actually happened on January 6th, 2021. It's been two years. It's long overdue. It's our right as Americans to know. And McCarthy could tell us. Second, Kevin McCarthy could put Thomas Massey of Kentucky in charge of a new Frank Church committee designed to discover what the FBI and the intel agencies have been doing to control domestic politics in this country. Oh. They've been doing a lot. But no one in Washington wants to talk about it. This topic is effectively off limits. It has been. In fact, no one's talked about it for almost 50 years. Now let's go back to the clip that opened this up, play the full clip of Hannity with the Fox alert saying that House Republicans are now on the verge of becoming a total clown show. Play the clip. So here with the Fox News alert, it is day one of the 188th Congress and House Republicans now are on the verge of becoming a total clown show if they're not careful. But despite the cheering and the elation from Democrats and the mob and the media, it's not a dire situation yet you know as they the great reporter scott mcfarland said he goes if this is how republicans are acting now voting for their speaker can you imagine what's going to happen yeah. when it's sure. time to that's raise awesome the debt i love you and actually get something done um, and speaking of clown show here oh was... i'd love to be a fly on the wall in those meetings Oh, you know they're saying some nasty shit to each other. Yeah. I honestly think I I would I would like to go into politics to tell you the thing, tell you the truth. I think I've been trained enough through all the harassment and bullshit mm -hmm. to be able to be very good at talking to these type of people. I can be diplomatic. But I definitely would run on a Democratic ticket. Well, that you fit there. Yeah, I would definitely run on a Democratic ticket because the Republican Party... Or maybe I'd just join the Republican Party just to j fucking troll out the Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you in the Republican Party? To troll the Republicans. <laughs> I, a lot of people are saying that's what Trump did. Maybe. It was deliberate to destroy the party. He said he was going to drain the swamp. He did. If I was a fly, I would name myself Ned. I don't know why. I think... Ned. Man, now I want to see the fly. It's a good movie. Not the old one, the one with Jeff Goldblum. Yes, that one. They're going to redo another fly. How much do you bet? Probably. They're probably going to reboot the fly. Probably. Could you broker a piece with your trolls? I would like to. Hey, Drag, you remember Joseph Pierce? Me and him are friends on Facebook, Joseph Pierce and me. And, like, he's raging right now because they're redoing The Exorcist. They're going to release it during Halloween of 2023. And he's just raging right now. You do not have to freaking ruin this movie, too! Yeah, it's true. Uh, you're friends with on Facebook with him too? Yeah, Joseph is a sweetie pie. I love him so much. I always like talking to him. Yeah, he is a sweetie pie. A cool dancer dude. He's such a cool dude, he's man. Yeah, he's awesome. He's just chill as fuck. Yeah. I love me some gold bloom. Oh oh, I do too. I do too. He's awesome. Whenever he's in something you wanna see him. Yeah. 
He's one of them. I mean, I you know how I feel about Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Of course. I mean, I love it. Leonard Nimoy, Jeff Goldblum. I mean, come on. That's like a freaking just masterpiece in, in just amazing it, It's just Leonard Nimoy and Jeff Goldblum and seeing them interact in their, like, Jeff Goldblum, like, Spock-like ways. It's beautiful. And then you got beautiful Do Donald Sutherland, and he's my favorite Sutherland. And then the ending. I mean, that's probably the greatest ending of all movies is the... <gasps> and then she's screaming... <laughs> Oh, oh, great ending. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Great ending. I recommend watching the 70 version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. It's a great movie. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. I love that movie. Have you thought about running for a city council seat? You could work out some local reforms. Average Americans need to exercise their rights more. I could start that way and work myself up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shani, getting into politics. She's the badass politician that doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Shaddy, could you play one of the victims in a horror fli flick? I would love to. Trauma. Yeah, I would love that shit. That would be great. <laughs> I wish I could do what you do. I really, I type really good, but I talk like a mush mouth stumbling over my words. Oh, God bless you, Ted. Shit happens, bro. Dude, be like, be like a Twitter dude. Like, you can make money on Twitter memes and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of running involved with that. He's yeah, right. dude. He's right. There's a lot of running. Seems like a whole lot of running. Yeah, but this could be like the disabled person on 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 that one uh, Jason movie. Well, no, they, they like if you were the if you were the main character vic victim girl yeah. in one of those movies. I could be the disabled be girl that survives the killer like they've never done that in a movie is have a freaking like no, disabled person say, survive you'd be the first chick to be putting your arms up and fucking right you just cut you want to fight come on that'd be you he'd be running from you come on you fucking son yeah. of a bitch so that would be the fucking movie that you're just fucking just wrecking them boom, destroying boom, them, the villain boom. but he keeps coming back of course but you just beat the shit out of them the whole movie? That'd be amazing. That would be a great movie. <sighs> Disabled woman slash superhero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be phenomenal. You want to play Chet at the end of Weird Science? <laughs> I don't remember that movie. Well. I don't remember it either. We need to see Weird Science then, because that's like right up our alley. I remember it being good, but we tried yeah. to watch Biodome, and that's horrible. Like, it's not even watchable. Yeah, it didn't age well. No. It's not a good movie. Yeah, it didn't age well at all. Some of those older movies, I think, are like that. Like, of yeah. a certain era. Yeah. They, they, they're just outdated. Which is funny. It's got very Beavis and Butthead, like, humor in it. Kind but of. Beavis and Butthead is timeless. Yeah. It's just always good. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. We should rewatch all the Beavis and Buttheads again. Yeah, we should. That that should be a mission. That was really good shit. I just wish black characters didn't die within the first 30 minutes of all those films. No, 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 drag. If you remember... I don't know what I did last summer, too. Brandy survived. Yeah, she did, didn't she? Brandy survived, dude. Yeah, she was the first like one movie. But she was like the first black person to ever survive. Well, that's what he's saying. Yeah, dude. They killed them all the time, man. Pretty yeah. fast. He's right. Have you watched Beast Drag? 
That was great. You would really like Bees. Yeah. Because they did survive. Let's check that movie out. Today. Yeah, you'd really like Bees. Good acting. Yeah, that's a great movie. If I was in a horror movie, I'd just be in a rascal scooter speeding away at four miles per hour the attacker. I haven't seen Beast yet. Do it, dude. Make that a date night with Miss Dragon. Yeah, you really will like that movie. It's, it's intense. It, yeah, it's really good. We should watch that again, actually. That's a good movie. Yeah, it was good enough to watch again. I want to see Maverick again. Yeah, me too. Drag has seen Maverick. That was so good. Yeah, he loved it. Yeah, it's just so good. It's a master movie. I love Paramount. <laughs> yeah, Paramount kicks ass, and then you get Star Trek too. You get everything Star Trek. That's the reason why I got Paramount, because I'm like, Star Trek, I miss it. I need Star Trek, my baby. And I'm like, $3.99, really? Yeah, there you go. Yay! I could see it now, cheap. <laughs> Made Mrs. Drag watch the first one before we watch the new one. Yeah, oh, the original. You did? Oh, yeah. Jeez. What did she think of Top Gun? That movie aged pretty well. Three ninety nine Netflix step step up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Netflix is what twenty dollars. Yeah. Not only Paramount has all the Star Treks, but yeah. it has Beavis and Butthead. I'm just saying. She got bored, man. She got bored, went to sleep. I'd m oh, man. And then that. Like, why? Women. Women, man. We don't need to know that, Pip. It's weird. Ted? Ted? Mentholated balls. Ted. Let's just, can we have some stuff? <laughs> I'm not okay. Oh, Jesus. Ah, you're burning your balls off. <laughs> but I just want to say God bless Val Kilmer, you know. <laughs> Oh, Val. We got to get some Val Kilmer love. My know? baby. Oh, my God. That just tears me up seeing Val Kilmer like that. Because he's Sick. just, he's so beautiful. I know. It made me sad, too. Cooking. I want to do cooking streams, mm -hmm. man. Pray for your yam bag. Yeah, dear Jesus, please heal Ted's. Yam bag from his terrible mistake. Amen. Yeah, he won't put mentholated uh, powder on it again, Lord. <laughs> Just heal him. That, that's an icy hot mistake. I cook everything. Yeah. Jesus. I have many talents. Yes, you do. Sure. I could do a lot of shit. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, babe. <laughs> Clacker bag. Clacker bag. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I love all the different names for men's testes. Sick. Teach my boyfriend something. He burns rice like... Did you guys get my cream soda with this pizza? They didn't have I don't Oh my god, man. Most places don't have cream soda. If drag ever freaking visits, I have to get cream yeah. soda for the dude. Yeah, definitely. That like, would have to be a thing. Like, we need to tell, like, Mrs. Drag, get drag cream soda. You might have some. Maybe. You might. My taffy sack. <laughs>
was a post by Tom Bonier, who says, oh, the, the Republicans are doing the classic, if you want pizza, you're going to have to come to my office move. Advantage, Kevin McCarthy. And what he's referring to Aww. is that there was supposed to be a pizza party, a pizza party that the Republicans were going to hold after the speaker vote. But Kevin McCarthy... Kept they were going to have a pizza party after the vote? A Yay! A pizza party, a pizza party. Yay, we have pizza. Oh my god, Republicans are so fucking dumb and cringe. It's like they got out of elementary school. And then they canceled the pizza party. Oh. <laughs> you didn't vote, so we're canceling pizza. You guys don't get the pizza. Mm, you didn't vote. <laughs> you didn't do your homework, Jimmy. Jimmy, you don't get any pizza time because you didn't do your homework. Mmm. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh my god, they're so fucking. They're sitting in their desks. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh -huh. You didn't get your pizza. Ha uh ha. -huh. You didn't get your pizza. You didn't get your pizza. That's the Democrats. They're children. Yeah, school pizza parties were the best. <laughs> no food for you. <laughs> Fix your hijab. <laughs> Hey. Canceled the pizza party and he moved it into the office that he had moved into here. Do we have the clip as well of Kevin McCarthy earlier in the day before the vote, uh, the three roll call votes where he did not secure the speakership? Just play a little bit of this clip of the uh, moving crew moving Kevin McCarthy into the speaker's this office. This is sad. They can't get a leader. Vote. How humiliating. Here, play this clip. What? Recycle bin bins. So yeah, so Kevin McCarthy canceled the pizza party and then moved all of the pizza boxes oh. into his uh, fake speaker's office. So he actually said, no pizzas for you, and he took the pizzas actually out. There was already pizza. Where'd they put... Where, uh, did they give it to homeless people? They better have. Please, what did they do? That's our tax money. Oh. Did they just waste a bunch of fucking pizza? They better have given it to uh, homeless, a homeless shelter. They better have. Massages and milkshakes is what make real men. That's hilarious, Drag. I like it. God, these people are fucking children. So that they could have discussions there. Um, but it is a total and utter clown show. It's not a on the verge of being a clown show, what we observe today. It is a total and utter clown show with... Marjorie Taylor Greene is calling Matt Gates a traitor, and Matt Gates is calling Marjorie Taylor Greene a coward, and Marjorie Taylor Greene saying, you don't know the art of the... No, he took the pizzas out. He canceled the pizza, period. What did he do with all that pizza? Where'd it go? Yeah, where did the pizza go? Wait, y yeah, man. Yeah, I, I can't stand wasting food hate that shit. It's the worst. <clears throat> it's nuts. Fucking assholes. They're acting like elementary school kids. No. No. <laughs> no. No, you're not being mugged. But like the Republic, like they wasted a bunch of fucking pizza. <laughs> That's, like, fuck you, Republican Party, for that bullshit. Do you know how many people love fucking pizza that you could be giving that shit to? That's tax dollars, and you're wasting it? Fuck you. No pizza party for you. You go home. Watermelon. Right? Your taxes getting wasted daily? Fuck these assholes, man. And Bobert saying 
you are bullshit and just cursing and it's just some bizarre bizarre they're stuff fucking cussing that each that other out today and that's what's going on and fox and then you have donald trump saying that he's not necessarily still supportive of kevin mccarthy where he says we'll see what happens we'll just see how it all works out and then donald trump issues a statement saying oh there's just so much unnecessary turmoil taking place in the republican party right now you know whose fault all of this is his any accountability Donald's? for anything yeah. so he goes it's mitch mcconnell's fault that he says a bunch no. of things about mitch no, it's yours, Don. I don't know how it's my fault. I just love the American people. I'm just a little turtle, man. I just go slowly and, and, and just see where the tide goes. I don't... I'm here to work for the American people. <laughs> and then he sinks his head back in. You know? Mitch McConnell. No, he didn't blow it. Trump blew up the party. Yeah, Pizzagate. Exactly, Rook. He closed that Pizzagate. He was like, fuck that shit. Um, yeah. That's been a theory. That, that Trump was a ringer to destroy the party. It might be. It could be. It looks like it's happening. Yeah, I know. Mitch okay. McConnell Mitch McConnell's was wife, Elaine bomb. Chow, who, by the way, was uh, in a Donald mm -hmm. Trump's cabinet. He was a Donald Trump cabinet secretary of transportation. And Donald Trump attacks her in racist and xenophobic terms. He says, look, what's really going on Jesus. here is just everything's such a downer right now because the omnibus bill passed. And that's what's really uh, to, uh, to blame here. Oh, then, yeah. Kevin McCarthy earlier in the day on Tuesday saying that Matt Gates would rather have Akeem Jeffries be speaker than Kevin McCarthy. You had Kevin McCarthy yelling in the basement of the House floor the guy's before got to uh, he did not secure the Fuck. votes on Tuesday saying, I earned this, damn it. I earned yeah. this, damn it. And then Boebert saying to him, bullshit, you didn't earn it. Oh, my God. Kevin McCarthy was yelling, I earned this. I mean, whatever, dude. You guys got to come together and agree on a leader. This is nuts. This is embarrassing to me as a Republican. You need to stand. Somebody needs to stand up, and whoever stands up like that should, probably should be the leader. Right. We have to come together and get a fucking leader here. This is a joke. Yeah, they're acting like fucking children. It's more about politics to them than actually doing something for the fucking country. I want the ball to play with the ball. I want the gavel to play with the gavel. Drag, order a fucking pizza, dude. You're getting pizza after work? Yeah, Celeste. Clintons are besties with the worst people. Epstein, Weinstein, the Democratic Party protected Harvey, but no one knows why. Yeah, I don't know why. Because they're all fucking perverts. Yeah? That's why. Yeah. They're all into... Let's say pederasty. I think they're all into it. You want some of my pizza? You ain't having my pizza? I'm a fat girl. I need to eat. <laughs> That's what's going on, folks, in MAGA Republican land. And as we've always said, these people cannot govern. They, yeah, sure, they go on their Fox and they talk about the green M&Ms and they talk about testicle tanning and they really <laughs> mad about pronouns. Testicle tanning? Are they, are they, why are they so worked up with people's junk? Why do they want to be in people's pants so bad? I'm not understanding this. And they're always talking about release the laptop of Hunter Biden because they all want to see his penis. So weird. Like, what the hell? why do Republicans want to see Hunter Biden's penis so much? It's just a fucking dick. Tan your balls. Right? What's the purpose? Tanning for what? A nudist beach? Like, yeah, well, like... How does your balls look when they're tanned, exactly? I don't know. I have no idea. Probably like dark black almost because most guys I think are probably reddish at testicles. I don't know. What the fuck? I'm done. Whatever.
you know, stop this testicle tanning conspiracy. That's some ego feed and mind stuff there, ball tanning. Yeah, I'll let you guys know you don't have to fucking, like, tan your balls because women don't give a shit. So, yeah, you don't have to tan your balls. And they, the, the rage against pronouns, and they attack librarians, and they attack school teachers, and they um, they talk, they attack Dr. Seuss, and say, "Oh, Disney is too woke, woke this, woke that." People want people who can govern. Okay, they're real serious issues taking place here in our country. We got to deal with issues like health care and jobs and education and protecting a woman's right to choose or right over a bodily autonomy, people's right to marry who they love, protecting our veterans, our allies abroad. And the MAGA Republicans are just in complete and utter disarray. I mean, how embarrassing, how humiliating. These people are not leaders. These people are not... <laughs> or an old bowling bag. They're not capable of governing. They what should the hell? nowhere near, nowhere near our... Uh, Capitol building at all. And could you imagine if they controlled the That's House some of ego if you have to tan your during fucking the 2020 balls. election when they were objecting to the electoral count? Could you imagine what they would have done then? Or insecurity. My balls aren't dark enough, man. They're too pink. I look like a fucking child, man. They need to be more brown, dude. <laughs> You're looking... <coughs> if you have to tan your balls, you're looking at your balls way too long in the frickin' mirror. Probably. Like, Jesus. Yeah, I think that's true. I'm sorry. That's just ridiculous sounded to me. My age is showing. Yeah, they would have just thrown... It's like, like women frickin' like... Um, bleaching their asshole and vagina. I don't understand that shit. I don't like that at all. I see porns with chicks with that done, and it's like, no, you want to see brown. You want to see, like, the colors, natural. Yeah, it just seems like a waste of money with me. Because it's like, don't you like anything natural, bitches, anymore? Us into complete constitutional chaos, which they've been trying to do at each and hot. every step. We'll see what happens, you know? but here we have Fox shouting them out and saying, Clown show. Well, Fox, this is your crew. I like that. Complete natural. and utter clown show that you've enabled, that you've aided and abetted. And the next thing I look forward to is the Fox defamation lawsuits. Um, going to trial, the Dominion versus Fox lawsuit set to go to trial in April. Excited when people like Hannity and Tucker and Janine have to testify publicly in front of everybody. We'll be covering that as well. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Until next time. Later, um, bro. Hit subscribe, will you? He also, check us out at patreon.com slash Midas. Oh, yeah. He's so happy. We need a palate cleanser after that stupid shit. There you go. Look at that. That's that's it. You see? He's like right in between her tits. Yeah, and he gropes her. And tits he's too. looking right at her fucking nips, man. Yeah, and he gropes her tit. Well, play yeah, it. yeah. You have to play it anyway. He gropes her tit. Oh, oh he didn't. He didn't actually. Okay, His I need to flip this smooth. over to premium. Sorry. <laughs> hey there, Vern. <coughs> so this is the untrue, the untold truth of Jim Varney, a.k.a. Ernest. I love Ernest. I thought that would be a good palate cleanser is us doing Ernest. Ernest is nostalgically. At my age, I gotta be careful not to sit on my balls. Ah, oh, fuck. No, that ain't fair to say, though. Hi, Desi. Mo, because, look, me and Shani are basically the same height, so that that did not reflect us. No. Definitely not. No. No. Nah. Man, that's an old school TV. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love retro technology.
it's the best pretty much if it, if you can keep it yeah if exactly you can keep it working Oh, Autumn, thank you for the 100 bits. Thank I you. love the rainbow unicorn. It's perfect. I'm so glad you're here to join us today. Do you remember Ernest P. Wuerl, the first viral superstar? Know what I mean? Yeah. He was huge before smartphones and that strange new app called Tickety Talk that all the kids are on nowadays. Today's the day, Vern, when Ernest will go down in those big, thick history books. So come on, let's look at the colorful life and tragic ending of Jim Varney, the man that stared straight into the hearts of all of us in the 80s and 90s. Amen. But if you think Ernest was all Varney accomplished, or that Jim himself was a bumbling fool you'd be sorely mistaken Very mistaken. jim always had a knack for making people laugh a thankless job but somebody's got to do it thank you those who work thank you thank you ernest i loved him as a kid man i do too i just loved him as a kid oh jesus my heart no it's okay how you doing brother Man, that's great. Thanks, dude. Take care, all right? Stay safe. Wow, she hooked us up. She did. She Thank you. Hooked us up. There's like, I don't know what that is on the top there. I don't know what this you is. You want me to just put these in the fridge for now? Because you're good, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to need a Dr. Pepper. You want a Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. So oh, baby, they're ranch. Yeah, we get a ranch with our paisa. Now, of course, I'm not going to eat this right away because I can't. It's too hot for me. But let's, 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 wait, let me, let me get the camera on me for a second. We got to, we got to have the big reveal of the pizza. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. Oh my God, that, thank you so much. Oh. Oh. Are you happy? Baby, look at this. Oh, oh, that was amazing. Look at that, yas. Oh, thank you so much. This is amazing. We're gonna enjoy that. Yeah. A couple plates? Okay, baby. Yeah. I gotta cool this off. It's very hot. Let me put it down here. He'll lift it. Wait. Uh. I need to find a place to let it. Oh, uh, I'll hold it for the minute. Aw, oh, thank you, Fancy Jane. You want to hear the food moans? Oh, you smell. You want to smell it? What you think? Okay, you're gone already. She's like, okay. <laughs> Have I ever had a garbage plate? No. We just had a McDonald's and pizza yesterday. I know. Oh, okay. Lucky you. It says recycle this pizza box. Mm-mm-mm. Domino's carry out. It's like a pizza scented air freshener for your car. Except you don't hang it from the mirror. <laughs> No, I've never heard of a garbage plate before. I have. That's like every breakfast shit. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Like half okay. and eggs and shit. Ooh, this is hot. Is it? Yeah. Is that fresh? Ooh. It is. Nice, hot, and fresh. Yeah, can you get, put a slice on the plate for Yeah, me? yeah. That'll help me. Here. 
you might want the plate real quick. There we go. That's you, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's got peppers and ham. Oh, that's so yummy. Oh, my. Oh. Oh. Yay. 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 Ooh. Wait, you got your ranch? Oh, I got ranch? Yep. You got to dip it in. I've never had an extravaganza before. Really? No. They're good. They're really good. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's almost cooled down that I can handle it. Sorry, I have temperature problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Isn't it? No, Domino's piece has gotten a lot better. Mm-hmm. A lot better. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna try it out. I'm definitely trying it with the ranch. I'm gonna dip the crust in right now. Dip it in the ranch. Mmm. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. So good. Oh. Uh, we can have pizza all day long, a slice, a little here, a little there. Oh, exactly. I love that. Yeah, that's the way to be. Yep. Mmm. Mm -hmm. We're making the cats salivate. They can sense where they can food. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, man, that smells good. Oh. Nice cold Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love how they've made now their crust by default is like a breadstick. Yeah. Oh my God, that's brilliant. And they should never stop that. Mm hmm. Oh God, that's good. Dr. Pepper. They're actually really good on sales, actually, more than any other soda right now is Dr. Pepper. Ain't that cool? Sales off the chart. Yeah, Dr. Pepper's winning the soda freaking uh, wars, and I'm for it. Yeah, I agree. I just personally believe it's the best soda. Feel good in your stomach most it of the time. It does. It's very medicinal. It doesn't make you sick. No. It's the opposite. It's very much like a di digestive. Like if I could have, like I should, I should drink more water. I know I should, but if I could have like a Dr Pepper and then water all the time, I could like. Yeah. Uh huh. No. Gotta try to do something with the water intake. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mm. Their ranch got better. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, Domino's got a lot better. Their meat tastes a lot better. Mm hmm. It's like COVID forced people to buy better ingredients. Oh my god, that's good. And I dig it. Solid pizza. This is more like a pizza. Mm. From a shop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
they were first to change it up. So thank you, COVID, for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. You want to get into some Jim Varney? Yeah. All right, let's do that. I'm done with it. Mm. 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 Close with him said that he was funnier off camera than he was on. Ernest was lovable, goofy beyond belief, and very relatable. We all know someone like Ernest, and that's why the character was so <coughs> successful. I'm looking straight at you, Uncle Glenn, and I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick. And let's jump on in and see if I can channel as much contagious energy as Ernest. <laughs> I'm thinking of a color, a color between one and ten. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't be shy, Ernest never was. And subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. A young talent, James Albert Barney Jr. Oh was my born on goodness, June. look at that face. Little baby. I had to pause on the baby face. Adorable baby. Little baby Jim Varney. Oh my god, and his little hair is sticking up. Oh, very cute. Well, William and Zach were such cute little babies. I miss having babies. I like having babies. Mm. My God, Mountain Mama, little piggies, so cute. Little baby piggies. June 15th, 1949, in Lexington, Kentucky. As a child, he had a knack for learning poems and stories to entertain friends and family. His mother soon realized that he was imitating the cartoons he was watching and immediately enrolled him in theater classes. He was only eight years old. Varney recalled this time, saying that he had a loud and clear speaking voice, which made the classes fun. He continued his theater career into his teenage years, even winning state titles for drama in high school. Wow. And Barney was performing professionally in nightclubs and coffee houses. That's awesome. Houses by the time he was 17, but he had a little to learn before becoming earnest. He's just an entertainer. The apex uh -huh. of clean comedy. Jim Barney got into television in 1974, appearing as various characters on Ralph Emery's country program Pop Goes the Country, which was a spinoff of the Porter Wagner show. Mm. Tell them they can have the free tickets, okay? Please, Tom, I'll pay for the tickets, okay? Tom! Then in 1976, he joined another crew. You may have heard of them, as he became a regular cast member on the show Johnny Cash and Friends. And in 77, he began awesome. scratching that wacky improv itch, becoming a recurring guest on the Norman Lear created parody late night talk show Fernwood Tonight. Barney created Virgil Sims, the local mechanic who offered automotive advice. I don't smoke no dope, I prefer RC. Coke, like my whiskey and my dog, and my mom. He just could do that southern accent so well. Yeah, he made it his thing. Mm hmm. I heard that's what Larry the Cable Guy did. Really? Yeah, his 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 voice is fake. I didn't know that. Yep. You could probably tell that by voice analysis. So is Gilbert Godfrey's voice. Yeah, it's that was fake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I thought that one. Is there video of Gilbert just talking? Mm-hmm. Normally, like a normal. Person? Yep. Okay. I want to see that. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Not now. No. <laughs> also in 77, he got a huge breakout role, cast as Doom and Gloom Broom in the television version of Operation Petticoat. So enjoyable to watch. You
who was one of only three actors rehired for season two of the show. They even passed on the legendary Gomez Adams, a.k.a. John Astin's renewal. Then he was part of the notorious flop, Pink Lady and Pink Jack. Lady. Again, using his versatility and improv skills to morph into different characters. Barney also toured as a stand-up. I don't know what happened to Larry the Cable Guy. We should look that up. What happened to Larry the Cable Guy? I think he's around still, but he does just small shit. Huh. He's not involved in huge shit. Oh anymore. my god, that's such a beautiful hairstyle. <laughs> I love it! It's so retro. Back in the day. I should have been born in the 70s. That You feel like that's your era? Mm-hmm. Or 60s, 70s, you know... Free-spirited. Fucking 40s. You feel like the 40s? Sort of. A more polite culture. Well, I might be like a beatnik. Nah, I, I'm Rapper a... From I'm the more, 20s? I'm more of a hippie slash mm. disco dancer type. Yeah. Comic. And along with Robin Williams, Varney was one of Los Angeles Comedy Store's original alumni. He and Williams would remain friends until his passing. Aww. People, they're used to dropping them and things. That looks better for the documentary footage. Varney was great at making up characters <laughs> and entire backstories <laughs> that he would then utilize I in future projects. They even started advertising him as Jim Ernest Varney for things. Like when he That's true. That's true. You just skip the truthful comments and just go for the trolls. You are trolling yourself. Pain went away awful fast. She's still in pain, ma'am. Jesus, I can't be happy and laugh? That, that deserves a bye-bye. Yeah, go fuck off. If you want to have, if you're if you're envious of the pizza, go get a pizza for yourself. Yeah. Christ. Like what the hell? Pain went away real fast. Uh, no, honey. <laughs> no, you're wrong, baby girl. Why? Cause I'm watching something. Like what the fuck? People in pain can experience joy still. Do people <laughs> get that? I hope people get that. What the fuck? It's ridiculous. People are assholes. It's just ridiculous, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> no shit, you guys are just prioritizing the most important people in the chat. That's all. I'm I'm prioritizing the whole chat, though. That's the we thing. We prefer people that can chat well. Yeah. And aren't just throwing railing accusations for bullshit's sake. Yeah. And being an asshole. Like, let Shandy right. have some fucking joy. Like. I know, man. You can't have some joy because you'd enjoyed some pizza? Oh, I, I shared joy. That means pain has gone. No. That's insane. No, motherfucker. Don't work that way. I'm sorry. You can be in pain and happy at the same time. I'm sorry you're so ignorant that you can't. Even and, and, and you've never experienced pain like I have, so you can't even conceive such things. True. So, fuck you. <laughs> oh, starred with Medical Center's Chad Go Everett eat an in the asshole. series The Roasters, where Jim played Evan Earp, a descendant of famed Wyatt Earp of the Wild West. In 1985, he even co hosted Hosted HBO's New Year's Eve special alongside Johnny Cash and Chris Christopherson. Ernest oh. came to fruition in the early 80s. Could you imagine be no. doing that with Johnny fucking no. Cash? No. What an honor. It's the coolest shit ever. I had no idea he worked with Johnny Cash. That's really Neither cool. did I. What an honor, dude. Legend. When Varney joined a local advertising agency in Nashville to help pay the bills and made connections that would change his life, he began working with John Cherry of the advertising agency Cardin and Cherry. Their goal was to bring comedy back into commercials. You are important, Ted. 
You are important. I get better every single day. What is fibromyalgia like? Pretty much like you've been beat up every day. While being Emperor Palpatine with electricity going through your body. Let me let me just. Uh, there's a visual so you can. Wait, let me, let me, I gotta do something so they can see this. Man, that looks painful. Yeah. One minute. One minute, guys. Yeah, I gotta move, I gotta move my window real quick. But it looks like this. That's the visual representation of how fibro feels. So, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Horrible shit. <clears throat> like I said, it feels like you get beat up every day. My baby, girl. I want to heal my girl. There's also this one. This is a good visualization of it. It, will, it probably would be better if you actually look like that because people would know you're actually in pain. Yeah. And not call you a liar. Like, this, you know? is, this is how it feels with people. If people want to know. And that's every day of my life. No breaks. When you go to sleep, it's just horrible shit. So when people make fun of fibromyalgia, I question how they really researched it. Yeah, I like drag my arms almost falling off because a lot of the times I am rubbing her. Yeah, he is. I rub my baby girl. I love her. But. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's why when someone says I have fry, bro, you should really feel bad. Because yeah. they're under a lot of pain. Which means a lot of stretch. Which means. You know, sometimes they can get a little cranky here and there in life. You would too if you felt like that. Some days are better though, it's not as bad. Other days it's worse, it's usually when it's overcast or cloudy or cold out where it can get really bad or rainy. But it's bad. But the show must go on. You're welcome for the educate or you're welcome for me educating you on the visual display of fibro. Horrible. Don't make fun of people with fibro. It's not cool. No. You don't understand. Specifically at the local level. The first ad they produced was for the Nashville Purity Dairies. And their first character was Sergeant Glory, the drill sergeant that everybody wanted to please. But that was just the beginning. Let's stare straight into the gold mine of a simple buffoonish Ew. redneck who always Ew. seemed to have himself in the end. Like, I used to do that when I was a kid all the time when he'd do that. The Ew. Ew. I did it too. You did it too? You didn't. When Ernest was in the lexicon, he was everything, man. I know, man. The best shit ever. I love when he dressed up as that old woman with the, with the gray hair uh, and the glasses. God bless your Aunt Autumn. I'm sorry about that. 
Yeah, every people think she's whining. It's not. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not. It's torture. Yeah. It's like being imprisoned in your body with pain. And I feel it coming off you. Like I feel it. Yeah. Hey, Vern. It's Ernest. Ernest P. World. Jim Barney's truly icon. Notice I'm not having much freaking diet stuff as much anymore. Because I know it affects me really bad. Some of them do, yeah. Definitely. Iconic character wasn't the sharpest tool in the small tool building. Pib is better? And sure, he was more than a bit. No, 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 no. No! Don't you dare defile the Dr. Pepper. I don't man, I don't mind the, the Dr. Thunder or whatever it was. I didn't mind that at all. That was alright. It ain't Dr. Pepper. I'm offended by that, Jason. It tasted okay, though. I'm offended. Because they were good drinking. I'm offended. Right. Accident prone. You know, Vern, this must be some kind of a cigarette lighter. <laughs> But we rooted for him because his heart was always in the right place. Ernest's first appearance was in 1980 for a commercial for Beach Bend Raceway Park in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The character was primarily a local sensation at first, but then brands all around the country came a calling. The Ernest character was unique for many reasons, mainly for his addresses directly to the camera, yeah. as if he was speaking to a friend. Oftentimes, very close to the camera lens. That's what made like it. he's a close talking relative. <laughs> you're always inching back. Dude, <coughs> if he was alive today, could you imagine him on YouTube? TikTok. Yeah, or TikTok. Ernest TikTok. <coughs> he's made for TikTok. Aww. You're welcome, Rollinator. It's like having flesh prison with electricity on the inside. Yeah, exactly, no, drag. That's, huh? And drag, it's crazy. I'm telling you, man, I can put my hand on her and I feel it. It's like it's like pulsating out energy. It's insane. It's like a vibration and a warmth. It's nuts. And G-Man said he felt it too, but it's like, whatever. He would deny it now, probably. He, he would, because he's an asswipe. Asshole. Oh my god. Yeah, chill out. Please. Meditate. Okay, take a bre deep breathe in, take a good breath out, and keep doing that until you are emotionally leveled and not feeling the need to unleash your wrath on a perfect stranger. Who did absolutely fucking shit to you. Meditation is wonderful. And it is great. And it will put you in a state where you feel like you don't have to lash out on others. So Namaste. Is there a new game you're excited to get when it comes out? My family wants Pikmin 4. <gasps> They're coming out with a Pikmin 4? You I want. I three still. I know, the I still. Fruits. I know. I got to get the fruits. The pitch was simple. Ernest was your friend, so he wouldn't ever sell you anything bad. Especially those ice cream cones from Brahms. Do you remember those commercials? Man, I could really go for some ice cream right now. And from McDonald's? And on a delicious dessert, ma'am. To Sprite. Yeah, the troll shouldn't write paragraphs. Takes us too long to write. 
read. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's like, Jesus, you leave me a big giant book? And it's hate. Oh, it's just judgment and hate and shit. Like, fuck that. I don't got time for your shit. When in Florida, ever do this to an alligator. Have a year, Ernest P. World began marketing just about every major brand. Although Barney's brainchild, eventually a team of 15 writers were brought in to help create copy for Ernest. Barney claimed that the inspiration for Ernest was a conglomeration of different people that he'd known throughout his life. The character became so popular that in 1988, it received its own TV series, yeah. Hey Vern, It's Ernest. And hey he began Vern, to Vern. rival Pee Wee Herman. Barney was so talented yes, at portraying multiple characters in a single episode. He rivaled Pee Wee Herman, dude. Pee Wee was the shit, but I don't know who who do you, who do you liked more, Ernest or Pee Wee? It's so hard because nah. they're both just so differently unique from each other. Well, it's like just throw Joe Bob Briggs in there too. Like I can't choose between personalities like that. I love them all. Me too. They're so unique. Yeah. Pee Wee Herman's one of the most unique characters that you could ever imagine. I mean, you know, who the fuck would come up with a character like that? It's crazy. The show is crazy, and it was exciting as a kid. The yeah. rubber ball ball. Yeah. And it just get bigger and bigger. That's great. Ernest was never creepy like Pee Wee. That's true, Autumn. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, they never had cats. And he won a daytime Ooh, Emmy for Outstanding Performer in a Children's Series. Wow, so he got an Oscar? Because or because Barney was not global, global, global. Big headed like his Ernest. In fact, he reportedly had a near genius IQ and was said to be occasionally exasperated with fans who met him and assumed that he was exactly like Ernest. Then it was time for the big screen. In total, ten Ernest movies were made. Five independently and five with Disney. The first few were contracted by Disney after Ernest upstaged other characters at the Indianapolis 500. Disney knew there was money to be made with this oddball. And soon these family friendly films were constantly being rented from video stores. The films were simple and low budget. The first one being Ernest Goes to Camp. That one's so good. They're all good, dude. I know. My son friggin' loved Pee Wee and Mr. Bean. Mr. Oh, yeah, that's me. Me too. I love Mr. Bean. Me too. That's me, pretty much. Oh my God, Rowan Atkinson. Oh, Rowan Atkinson is probably one of like the greatest comedian, silent comedians ever. Without a doubt. Like he rivals Charlie Chaplin. I hate to say that. But he's even he's even like more. He's pretty like I don't know. He can do dark comedy too. I've seen. He him can do dark. He can go dark, really. He's a great actor. He's smart, too. He is. He's a really smart guy. Ernest was, too. Blockbuster. Ugh. I want it back. The smell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Written and directed by John Cherry of The Ad Agency. It also co-starred The Crying Indian, a.k.a. Iron Eyes Cody, in his final film appearance. You'll oh, remember bless. him from the infamous littering campaign of the 70s. And we have a great throwback look at the top 10 memorable PSAs, if you haven't checked that one out yet. This was the only earnest film to be shot in widescreen, and only cost around $3.5 million. Not bad when it grossed over $20 million. Nice! And in 88, Ernest progressed from camp to I think that's my favorite of all the Ernest is the Christmas one. Yeah. That was such a good movie. I'd have to watch them all again, but... The dopey freaking cops. Yeah. That's a great one. Saving Christmas in probably the most well-known Ernest venture. Another fun part of these films was Hee Haw's Gaylord Sartain's collaboration. 99% of the time, his character named Chuck. But after the first test screening in Burbank, John Cherry was sat down by Disney execs Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg. And Cherry feared that they were going to cancel the contract. But instead, they upped the contract from a three-picture deal to a six-picture deal. 
All Before right. it was all said and done, Jim Varney appeared in over 3,000 film TV commercials. When, when fucking Disney actually made good fucking decisions. We need Michael Eisner back, I think, in Disney. Yep. Like, because he made so many good movie decisions at that time. Like, he knew movies. <coughs> they need to go back to what they focused on in the beginning. Cartoons. Which are geared towards children. Because that's yeah. what they do best. Yeah, I don't agree. Don't be making alien movies. Don't be making Star Wars movies. No. That's yeah. Just not your place. No. Go back to Donald and Mickey and Jasmine and, and Goofy. Aladdin and Goofy. And Pluto. Yeah, and Beauty and the Beast. Of that shit. And mm -hmm. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yes. And Scrooge. Yeah, right, that's... Bring back DuckTales. Bring back Tailspin. Baloo. Yeah. The bear. Bring back Baloo. I love Baloo. Yeah, Baloo is great. Bear necessities. If you want to repeat shit, repeat shit you know, not things that you want to fuck up. <laughs> and claimed in an interview that he thought it might be the record. Take that, Flo. Paper, rock, scissors. Oh, why use all this mathematical, analytical... Hi, Glass and Kissini. And Ernest inspired a lot of merchandise and gold. Cool. Hi, Expert Sounds. There was even a talking Ernest doll. I can only guess what it had to say. Know what I mean? I remember that doll. Non Ernest gigs. Yeah, me too. In 1985, Jim Varney co-wrote with John Cherry the film Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. The character yeah. Ernest even introduced the movie, but it was cut before the release. Ah. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah, we got to see that. That looks wild. Crazy shit. I want to see some crazy freaking shite, man. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing was a borderline earnest flick, which helped Jerry and Barney sharpen the idea. One of Jim's other notable roles came in 1993, taking on the challenge the Beverly of Hillbillies Clampett in the reboot of The Beverly Hillbillies, a task he took seriously, as the original was his family's favorite program in the 1960s. Oh, he wow. nearly didn't get the role, as the studio feared he was too well known for Ernest. Luckily, his screen test proved that Barney was the one to strike oil again. Oh, the other actor considered for the role? Just the man with the velvet voice Sam? and the stash of the century. Yep, Mr. Sam O'Neill, man. Sam Elliott. Man, or Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. I knew it, man. Yeah, you could tell me that's just the shape of his face. Well, Sam Elliott's got that nice, smooth voice, and he just makes the women just be like, He's got the Hi. number one voice. Hi, ladies. I can make your cooter scene if you would like to. All I have to do is just talk to you real slowly and make you feel real good. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I wonder how it is to, how he flirted back in the day. I told you, look up a fucking picture of him young. You're going to be like, holy shit. Oh, no. I, I already know that. He's such a good-looking man. He's, like, perfect-looking dude. <laughs> like, he truly is a good-looking man. Back in the 70s, bro. It don't yeah, matter. Yeah. It don't matter what age he is. No, don't. Woo! Mm -hmm. He's sexy as shit. Boy. Also in 93, Barney played Rex in the Dennis Quaid-led pyro oh fanatic film Wilder Napalm. Written by Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan, oh. Barney also wonderfully voiced Slinky the Dog in the first two Toy Story films. Yeah. I knew you'd come back, Woody. Barney would jokingly say that the role was a stretch for him. He followed that by instructing the interviewer that it was indeed a joke. Wishes come true. Jim Varney was a kind, generous... You can't see our faces? Oh, you didn't reset the thing. Uh... Oopsie. Boom! I fixed it. <laughs> he would say, I'm rich and I'm in the movies. Aw, oh, what a funny guy he is.
Yeah, he just and he was an entertainer just from like the start. Of the yeah, I, he just wanted to make people happy. That's that I I love people like that. Yeah, dude. Man who never met a stranger, and when he was offered the opportunity to work with the Make a Wish Foundation, he jumped at it. He happily put on his denim vest and khaki hat to fulfill hundreds of brave, terminally ill children's wishes. Varney was a lifetime heavy smoker, and when he was diagnosed with lung cancer in August of 1998, he reportedly threw away his cigarettes and quit smoking cold turkey. But unfortunately, it was too late. He underwent surgery to remove most of his right lung that same year, but the doctors discovered that the cancer had spread to his brain. He underwent radiation, which sent him into remission. Varney didn't let the cancer slow him down and kept working on his project, Daddy and Them. He portrayed the only sober man in a family of Southern alcoholics. This role was the wow. dramatic role that Varney had always dreamed of playing. Varney passed away at the age of 50 on February 10th, 2000. We want to say thank you, Jim for always making us laugh, whether it was on the small screen or the big one. His final earnest endeavor, Ernest the Pirate, had nearly completed shooting at the time of his death, but it was unfortunately never finished. But it sounded like a knee buckler for sure. So let's talk. Do you have a favorite Ernest adventure? I have to go with Saving Christmas. I'm a sucker for a good Save, Christmas. Save, yeah. Track. And what are some memorable commercials? Sucker for Christmas. Like the one where the window slams on his fingers? <laughs> Get in the comments and let's honor an outlandish actor that always brought the funny. Know what I mean? And if you would... Aw, that was endearing at the end. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, though, that this that's weird because I could have sworn that, that, that Ernest died recently. But it was 2000. He died. Yeah. Back. I thought he that died was... a long time ago, babe. I died. I could have sworn that. I 23 heard. years ago. That's insane. Wow. Right? Isn't that 23 years ago we lost Jewel? Or, oh my God, where am Oh my. We lost Vern. Vern. Watermelon. Jim. Guys. Watermelon is sitting on the pizza box. It's warm. Watermelon. She's floofing it, see? You see her floofing it? I, watermelons. What are you doing, girls? That was a pretty good palate cleanser, yeah. Yeah, floof, see? Yeah. What's your deal, floof? You're on the pizza box, girls. What are you doing? Are you warming your butt up? Yeah. Are you warming your butt up? <laughs> she sits back down. <laughs> what the flip? She's going to flavor it with cat farts, probably. What's your deal? She's food? keeping it warm for you. Yeah. Watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> Don't give me pretty eyes. Watermelon. You're sitting on the pizza box. Hey, Floof, what's your deal? Huh? Why are you Floof in the box, huh? Watermelon, get down. Watermelon. Watermelon, get down. She ain't listening. She's no. being defiant. Yeah, she's like, this feels good on my butt. She's like, what? Haven't you ever seen a cat on a pizza box before warming their butt up? I have to warm my butt up. My butt must be toasty. Yes. Yes. A toasty asshole. I love my toasty asshole. <laughs> We all know who boss is in the house. Yeah, she's the boss. Watermelon the ninja. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Watermelon, get off the pizza box. Down. Down. Watermelon. Get down. Uh, I can make her head move. Get down! <laughs> Watermelon! 
get down off the box. Your eyes. Man. Floof ball. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, watermelons. Huh? What's your deal? What? <laughs> Come here, baby. It's okay. You're not in trouble. She's mine. You're not in trouble. She's like, I sowies. I just wanted my butt worms. That's it. I've had the same chihuahua for 13 years. Haven't had a cat since I was a kid. Oh my god. We did, made someone get a cat. Alright. Yeah! Get it, Renee. Yeah, cats are cool. Get it, Kit Cots. <laughs> cats are cool. Oh man, are, oh yeah, we're watching the Ace Family shit, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm interested. In it. I, I want to see what that's. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the next. Oh, look at that. That's the rev stuff. That is the rev stuff. <laughs> yeah, baby. There you go. You're cute. <laughs> we don't know anything about the Ace family, and we keep hearing all these references. Yeah. The about the Ace family, okay? I don't know who they are. I don't know if any of this story is true. I don't say attack. Don't attack these people, okay? No. Um, but apparently they're controversial. Yeah. So. I want to know what it means when they say the Ace family. I'm sick of it. I want to know. Yeah, I want to know why people are so about them. So. Nasty, nice-looking people. I like figured that. I'd see a Hasanabi react because I'd like to see his take. He's a truth. He's a truth. Truth. You know, seeker. seeker. So I figured he'd be a good representation to play like the devil's advocate if he sees anything that's like not accurate. And I know, I know, you know, he has close cut ties with certain people, and he knows certain people, so he would be the most accurate to get this take from. So that's why I chose him. So, let's see this stuff. A lot, a lot, a lot of fucking uh, family content out there on YouTube. But let's take a look. Let's get started on this. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Right Opinion, the home of a twat with too much free time, and families. My god, do I love families! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Humor aside, the family is an important staple in the many societies that we do indeed live in. As a concept, it has been around for longer than I can remember, and although many of us do have various goals, there are many people who would just like to settle down with a partner who loves Thank them you and Bernie's raise a mom kids. Jeans. It's a completely fair perspective, and one that I hope people have the opportunity to fulfill. It's definitely something that I I would like to do at one point in my life, though I'm not entirely sure when. However, I- Oh, he wants to have kids. That's so sweet. Oi. Y'all, she watched the most hated family in America. I think many of us have a very idealized version of how these things really? play out. And although it often takes They're the a most few hated family in America? Right and, and a few Why? more for some, yeah. and a few more for others, maybe a few more on top of that, it's still something we like to hold on to, which is where the idea of family blogging comes into play. Blogs appeal to the audience under the notion that they can represent a life that we may idolize and feel an affinity with. Oh, That's another what family, made okay. So many of these wealthy bloggers famous from the start. However, it's important that these people can place themselves in the blogger's position and that the life they envision can be channeled through <laughs> a relatable individual. There was a time when a majority of audiences on YouTube liked oh, to envision baby. their lives as the sweet, baby. wholesome ones. Hi, Yanni Bear. Oh, don't cry! Titles, so many of those lovely bloggers have earned themselves. However, at some point in the last few years, I've noticed a shift. I noticed it in my Emma Chamberlain video that, hey, I guess people are 
feeling kind of cynical now. And I mean, who can blame them? The world is a depressing place, and I guess everyone is just kind of in that mood. And out of that rose a new lineup of stars who were slightly more controversial than the previous ones. There are positives and negatives. There's a newer video. Do I miss having a little baby? Mm. I like babies. Mm. I really do. I love babies. They're so sweet and they're so innocent and, and they're just so cuddly and... Oh, like I couldn't imagine like anything more beautiful than just a little tiny baby. I I I would hope so. <laughs> With my mental health in check, yeah, I think so. <laughs> We got our fur babies, though. Yeah. So. We got our fur babies. Are you crying? No. Oh. No, I'm God. not crying. I literally have sleep in my eyes that's been there since the morning. Oh, my baby. Baby. Oh. 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 This is the best. Oh my god, my baby. Wow. That's really nice. Should I watch this one or should I watch the Content Court H3 one? All rise for the Honorable Judge Ethan Klein. This episode oh is brought god. to you by Rich and Quip. This one's newer and apparently the other one's like... Do I have to watch Hila? I know that your friend Sasanavi, and I know you want to give them a shout out in your connections to them. I get it. But I have to be tri Team Trisha. Yeah, I agree. It's but, my code. But if he's got the best docu on these people, then I guess. Yeah, true. That's, you know, we want to know about them. The son is an ass man says America deserve 9-11. Some people do think that. That's an opinion. He's Turkish. Well, the point is it's his opinion. Yeah. So. I mean... I can't hate someone forever for that, though. It's rough to say, but we were putting our nose where it didn't belong. Mm -hmm. We liked putting our nose where it didn't belong. So, whatever. What happened, happened. America bombed their people, just saying. But anyway, let's move on from that. Yeah, that's right. I'm not saying they deserve it. America didn't deserve it. No. No. Like I said, war is horrible. But I'm just trying to relay different other people's perspectives. So, yeah. you know, don't hate people for different perspectives. I'm sure Hassan's take on it is that... Freedom of thought. Don't go meddling in other country's business, man. It's a bad idea. Westboro, uh, the, the link to this family. Oh, the Westboro Baptist Church? Oh, yeah. I could do, I could spend a whole day on the Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, yeah. Trust me on that, man. Yeah. It's good to play the devil's advocate, Shani. Yeah. No, 
because I'm a better person than to say something like that all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I am not doing that. What the fuck, dude? I forgive her. Content core is better. We could do the content core one. Anonymous user with another hundred, dude. Holy shit. Dude, crazy. that's crazy. I got we got an oil baron in the chat. Asexualizes his kids is so terrible. Wait, really? Oh no. They probably want to hear it for a clip. Probably. Um, apparently apparently a lot of stuff happened between this video and now. And then a lot of stuff happened between this it video is intrusive, and now, Ted. Even, so I, maybe it's better to watch the fucking content court is not better. H3 content court is hella poggers. Is it Miss Paying for stolen content? Maybe. Tips to this, but at least it gives us something to talk about. Now, this didn't have to be particularly negative in a way. It just meant slightly more loud, obnoxious, yes, yes. and less subtle. We're gonna make her Dude, they just they just showed Onision. Why did they show Onision? Because he's part of this crew of guys, but I don't know if you put him in there with these folks. I wouldn't know either, because I, I, I haven't been keeping up with him at all. Yeah. This was a case in every genre, and eventually the penny dropped in the family genre too. You know, you don't have to pretend that everything's perfect. How about conflict and storm? People love melodrama. You just need energy, some ideas, a bit of money, and of course a partner and a kid. I mean, hey, they can't be too hard to find, especially if you're as dashing as the man known as Austin McBroom. Uh, I enjoy catching them all. I enjoy just having a blast with teammates on the, on the field and off the field. Oh, yeah. Austin McBroom is the husband and father of the Ace family. Now, he is an individual who is obviously known primarily on YouTube. However, at one point, it seemed his career was... Nah, I'll say it for $20. $20. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, $20. Make it worth it. I'll keep up in the pay, too, if the more you keep asking me, too. was not destined there. As that clip showed, he was a very sporting-oriented individual and was highly rated in the basketball scene. And to be fair, the dude had some moves. He could shoot some hoops. Given his prominence, you could say he was kind of low-key media figure. He had a previously established audience due to his skills, and here's an old screenshot of his 2015 Twitter, long before the launch of his YouTube channel, which had his three principles listed in his biography. One God, Islam, two family, three hoop. A simple set of beliefs that had guided him to relative success in the basketball scene and a tendency to write inspirational tweets. And one of the elements that was very noticeable on his Twitter prior to the creation of his channel was the love of his fiancée, Catherine. They had a fairly standard story behind them. They saw each other a couple times and then decided that actually they had feelings which led them to initiating this relationship and the subsequent birthing of their daughter, Elle. The run-up to their child had a fair bit of coverage on Twitter and a nice bit of hype surrounding it. So I guess at that point they decided that their life was interesting enough to start a YouTube channel. Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is our first Q&A. You guys sent us a bunch of questions that we picked out. Now, when I looked at their old content and I saw that their first video was a QA, and a I thought that they were pulling my leg. That's some ballsy confidence in your character to open your channel with a Q&A video. Now, from looking at an old Social Blade screenshot, it's possible that they had some other videos up but deleted them before launch. So I guess they just used the already existing clout that they had surrounding Austin's basketball career and his relationship to launch the channel. They originally were called the incredible name of Austin and Catherine Vlogs before changing it okay, to... Okay, so why are they such bad people? exactly I'm, I mean I'm waiting for, yeah yeah I, I mean they're putting all this like I, I I see the manipulation tactic to make it seem like they're bad people well per se we're at but, the very beginning yeah but you can see the manipulation between the music it's very like mysterious and yeah. you know I don't know it's backstory I 
I grew up on Miracle. Okay, I'm just going to time out everyone who keeps mentioning this stuff because I don't care. Okay? You're just going to be timed out. They scam, they are ignorant, they exploit their children. How are they not? I don't know anything about these people. I wouldn't know. Yeah, they, we have, they haven't gotten into it yet, honey. Yeah. The Ace family, Ace representing the initials of each family member's name, Austin, Catherine, and L. They do have another child now, Alea, but I guess Acea family didn't quite have the same ring to it. But they started off on a fair wave of momentum and have since built on that, accumulating over 17 million subscribers in the space of three and a half years. So what's the big deal? Family blogs are here to stay. Well, although vloggers have always taken on their fair share of drama, there seems to be something more about the Ace family, and even more specifically, the man of the house, Austin McBroom, in that he may not be practicing what he preaches and treating those around him with the respect that may be expected. After all, this family is a family who's very grateful. Living life to the fullest, like we're keeping God first, being good people, and just trying our best to inspire others. Yeah. Really. We're doing our best as far as using our platform in order to do greater... So there's zero percent chance these people are, like, actually religious, right? Or are they? Or are they just, like, fucking... Oh, thank you, Otto. Did it for the uh, two months. Currently on a two-month streak. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. They're so phony. Ah. Why did everyone have to use God like that? I don't know. Don't you know God's going to judge you on that shit? Like, if you truly believe in God, you got to be real on that shit. Not, oh, we're doing this for God, and, and, and then behind the scenes, you're not doing it for God. Looks I hate like, that. It looks like she already got lip injections and Botox at that point. Ugh. Like, what the hell? No, I don't like people who use religion to hide their shitty behavior. I don't like it at all. It's bullshit. Like, I know I'm not fucking perfect, but I don't, I don't like be like, No, 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 no. I know if I do something wrong, God's going to slap me down real quick. That's how I feel. And, and, and that's how a true believer know, knows. Like, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, okay? If you do something wrong, you're going to get it back. God's going to spank you. I'm telling you, you're going to be disciplined. And you know, maybe eventually when you have like three or four God spankings, maybe you'll learn not to fucking do that again. Because mm -hmm. when he hits, he hits hard, so you don't do that shit again. Man. True. Don't be using God. Oh, speaking of using God... Donald J Trump Jr. Yeah. Donald Trump Jr. is selling the Bibles. That's weird. And putting the Constitution on the Bible. I'm just like, no. That's really weird. So. No, we're supposed to keep uh, uh, government and, and, and religion separate. Stop with that shit. Yeah. Correct. Oh, no, you don't want to spank it from God. They, they got to be doing it for the God clout. That's so marketable, dude. God clout. <laughs> it's so insanely marketable to just, like, have, like, a racially ambiguous couple be, like, super into fucking God. They're also photogenic. Oh, my God. Young. How big are they on YouTube? I have no idea. My brother-in-law was shouted out in one of their videos and got 20k followers on YouTube because of it. Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? 
Like you doing the opposite at the bait. Yeah. 17 million, 20 million. Things and inspire people. And that's really. All right. I got to rebrand boys. Sorry. We just get so excited to do things for people. And if you can't already tell, like that's just in our nature. And that's what we love to do. My family grateful for many things, but sometimes more than words is necessary. Did they steal that shit from us? Uh -huh. I have no idea. Cause, cause we were legitly helping people. Yeah. Fuck. These people are bullshit already. Way to convince people that you believe it, and that is what has been in question over the last couple years. Ultimately, climaxing in a situation very recently involving much more. Serious claims, although I have a lot to say about the validity of those. This is not going to be just about Austin. In fact, Catherine is probably going to be receiving a fair bit of scrutiny as well. So don't worry, everyone's going to receive their fair share of discourse. Let's have a discussion to see if the Ace family are really as ace as they proclaim to be, or if behind the candelabra, they're not quite the role models that many see them as. Well, fellas, I'm ready to get up and do my thing. I want to get into it, man, you know? And yes. That was a James Brown reference because, well, I'm a sex machine. Let's go. No, you're not, but okay. I want to start off this part with a quick disclaimer. If there's one red flag that will immediately make me question a creator's design... I'm sorry. Usually if someone says they're a sex machine, they're probably not. They're probably very lame and disappointing. Bro. It's the ones that don't brag. That's the ones you should be looking for. <laughs> he's not. That's why it's funny. <laughs> he knows he's not. <laughs> okay, I get it organic now. Content. It's the notion of pranks. Now, of course, not just any pranks. I'm sure there are some great pranks out there. But, you know, that brand of prank that I'm talking about, Roman Atwood, Fousey Tube, Joey Salads, Prank Invasion, all that jazz. The reason that I make this statement is because for many of you YouTube veterans, you will know that these pranks were all blatantly fake. The reason for making these pranks fake... No! He's lying, right? <clears throat> no shot. This can't be the case. So they faked pranks? I don't believe it. These are real. They're real okay. the ways because there was never a standard presented by an audience that we'd expect them to make the content genuine. People valued the stunt over the sentiment behind it. On top of this, the fakeness ensured the safety of the individual involved, particularly when they partook in inflammatory stunts, which may cause emotional harm to another individual. Now, honestly, the Ace family were probably far from the worst. I wish there was a better video on the Ace family. This is boring as shit. I'm just waiting to see... You like know, what controversy i'm not seeing any controversy here yeah they're just a family yeah that choose to vlog yeah i don't see the controversy oh thank you ted sloan. sloan covers them better oh okay i i like sloan yeah Oh my god, he's got a bunch of shit. Yeah, it's like separate videos, though, right? How, where do we go with this shit? It, there's too much, man. It's out of context. Alright, let's start, I guess. The Ace family must be starving for content because they're creating fake stories at their children's expense. It also looks like they're running from their problems and their failures. So let's get into it. You may be surprised, but I don't hate the Ace family. What I do hate is YouTube 
family channels. These channels exploiting their children for financial gain and putting them in vulnerable and compromising situations. I mean, these kids are going to grow up one day and realize that their entire identity has already been established online from when they were a child. There's a few stories we're going to be talking about in today's video, but I have to give a shout out to this creator named August the Duck. Yeah, it's massive manipulation of your child to like do that. Like, your child coming on a video once in a while is one thing, but, like, giving their whole lives out like that, it's like, what the fuck do you think your child is, a zoo exhibit? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's weird. It's, it's not good. No, I it's don't related. like that. Yeah. I don't like that. You'll behave. Hi, Cat likes to party. <laughs> Just sent you Trump's tax release, TikTok. Can we see? If not, I'll be right back. Huh. Okay, let me see. I can't get it from here. Do I have a TikTok on here? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I can't get it. I don't think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't even access my TikTok on my computer. Let me see. Well, I'll just type it, I guess. Oops. Huh? I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. What the hell is happening? Huh. Okay. Hmm.
Let me see. Well, we could easily look up tax, Trump's tax release. Tax return. Yeah. I'm sure there's someone who's already put this down on YouTube. Filters today. Foreign bank accounts. Oh, oh no. As I told you that's where he's storing his wealth. That's where his real money is from. I now have the list of Donald Trump's foreign bank accounts thanks to the release of his taxes. These are at least bank accounts we know he held during the years of the tax returns being released. Newsweek has published an article about this and it talks about more specifics, but let's start with the list itself. And here it is. In 2016 and 2017, Donald Trump had a bank account in China. We'll talk about that. Uh, in 2016 and 2017, Donald Trump had a bank account in Ireland, a typical place for reducing, reducing corporate tax liability utilized by many companies, including uh, Alphabet, the parent company of Google. In 2016, 17, 18, and 2020, Donald Trump had a bank account in the United Kingdom. And in 2016, Donald Trump had an account in the Caribbean nation of St. Martin, a popular but not the most popular place for offshoring money for the purposes of tax avoidance. Now, you might say, David, sir, he's a businessman. He has accounts. What's the big deal? There's a lot of, a lot of question marks around some of these things. Now, generally, when a president has bank accounts in another country, there are a number of questions that we would ask. Now, this is for a normal person. When you have someone as corrupt and poorly intentioned as Trump, there's other factors which we will get to. But in general, president with foreign bank accounts, conflicts of interest, okay? U.S. president has bank accounts in other countries. There may, may be financial interests that conflict with the interests of the United States. Just obvious. You know, all, all these anti-Semitic right-wingers want to talk about, oh, conflict, you, you might have dual citizenship with Israel, not me, but like some American Jews maybe have dual citizenship with Israel. But they don't want to talk about this conflict of interest, money in other countries. This could affect decision-making. It could lead to actions that are not necessarily in the best interests of the country. Two, we've talked about it before with Trump, vulnerability to foreign influence. U.S. president has foreign bank accounts. They could be vulnerable to influence or coercion from other countries. And it could put the president in a position where they might make a decision based on the interests of foreign entities or of Trump's interest in those other countries than what's in the best interest of the United States. Three, lack of transparency. Because remember, Trump worked for years to hide this information. US president, foreign bank accounts can be difficult for the public and for Congress to know what are their financial interests? And that can lead to suspicion and mistrust and subterfuge. Legal issues. U.S. president having bank accounts in other countries, questions as to are they complying with tax law? Are they complying with disclosure requirements, etc.? And then, of course, there's perception. However, for, for Trump, that's not a big deal because the people... He did everything legal, though. That's the problem. Like everything he did was in tax code and stuff. And mm -hmm. That's why he said from the start, if you don't like what I've done with my taxes, you got to change the laws. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> it is all legal. You know, I really don't care about the Ace family. I'm skipping this shit. It, we, I, I, the criminal psychology stuff is so much better. Yeah. It's so much better. It really is.
I like the criminal psychology better. Mm -hmm. I do got one though. That's really good. Oh, cool. Yay. Maybe you should change the stream title. Nah, it's fine. There's the Ace families in there. Nah, it's a fine. We looked into it. All right. Yep, that's right. Smart. All of us do. We should watch Eileen Warn Warnos to some time since you already like her story. Yeah! Yeah, we should do her story sometime. Yeah, we should. We should do all the legends. Yeah. Like Dahmer and Gacy and all of them. Yeah. Exactly. That's some fun shit, actually. And you learn stuff. That you do. It's great. She loves you so much. Being a girl. And being a little baby. Are you being a ghost? Yeah. Can I have a kissy? Mommy. No. Mommy kissy. No. Give me kissy. 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 Watermelon. Girl. Whoa. <laughs> You're a little baby. She's a pretty ghost. Fuzzy pops. She's a pretty ghost. Yeah. She's a pretty, pretty ghost. Mm -hmm. And we are foes. Good girl. <laughs> oh my god, Shani and Rev, true crime streamers. Yeah. I, I'm liking this a lot. Like, a lot. Get into it. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's a good. That's good advice. This is nine days ago. Wow. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Callie Anderson. All right. I saw a couple minutes of this, and this bra, this the this, this this chick is like she's nuts. Hey, Dada. We love you. Every night on some day, a someone that knows her well asked me if you can put some boxes inside my um in my storage, right? I just wanted to tell you that I love you and I you miss you face. and that I can't wait to see you in the morning. So we were going through the shop and it's not really bad. It's a baby, baby in there. Say bye, Dada. Thank you, Emma. I just see the arm and I just know it's a dead body. <laughs> Oh my god, she killed a baby. It's gonna be horrible. Oh, that fucking bitch. Look how beautiful the hat is. Yeah, it's cute. This is gonna be really horrible, isn't it? Oh my god. Uh, they're just like currency. The bits. Yeah, they're like currency, I think. On the platform. This is bullshit. And one bit is one cent. Yeah. She's evil. Not good. I'm angry. I know. It was the worst type of crime imaginable. After a lackluster attempt to hide it within a lease storage unit, the concealed body of a tiny child had been uncovered. In just a few seconds, you'll witness a dramatic scene as a terribly distraught woman slides off the couch, bends over, and appears to start praying. However, you'll soon learn that the horrendous tragedy behind this display of emotion could have easily been diverted, if not for a twisted and shocking motive. God. I don't know how people could get to this point of doing stuff like this. Like, you gotta let go of, of everything that's, like, decent, you know, <coughs> that's in you. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. You want another piece of pizza for yourself? Um, a little later. A little later? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
saw smells. Yeah. 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 Just by the face of the smell on your parents, so wait for nothing. Do we know if this guy has a kid? The, uh, the guy that has a lot. Can I have one other thing? Can you see that? Can you see that? So there in, the, in this container, there's like some key comb. Oh my god. And that smell. Oh my god, how could you do this to a baby? Later, maybe. Oh. Sir, you is it you and your wife that you live here also? The responding officer is securing the area and awaiting the arrival of the sergeant so she can bring him up to speed. Oh, thank you, Autumn. So we have the complaint is detained. When I get here, you place the blue barrel, and I get in there, it's in there, and I look in this blue barrel, and there's some deep talk in there, and so I'm like, what are you talking about? I keep trying to it's in there. I see nothing in there. So I don't know what's in that bag. There's a bag in the barrel. Like, it, there was a duffel bag. So he's like, I used that knife, and sitting on top of the box on his car, and he cut open that bag, and as soon as I saw the baby's arm, I backed away and called you guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, see I don't see how people can get to this point. I don't I don't get it. Oh my god. Really messed up. This is horrible. Like it's a baby. <coughs> Just a beautiful life. I can't get it. I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Officers continue to secure the scene, and a chilling comment is made. More kids? I can tell you that I can pull the information of this right from the new role that he wrote. Uh, the it was the stepmom, so it's not well, harsh said, part said, uh, of, yeah. That's why they came back to look tonight, because they drove all, he drove all the way here from Reno with only three boxes in. That's, that'd be phenomenal. If you could get the license plate, that would be great. Well, I'll know everything about that as soon as I can get uh, the guy's name. So we got a, a name of Tyler, but... No last name? Uh, would that guy have checked in with you when he got here? No, but uh, if I can get a roundabout... The energy in that in in that scene is so dark. Very. Like there's a spirit in that area, dude. I think you're right. You feel that I, too? I feel it and see it. Yeah, man. Like satanic. Very. This is fucked. This story's gonna be really fucked. You see the triangle up in the upper right hand corner of the footage? Yeah. Because it was bad. Mm. Jonathan Cleck would be going, what are you telling us there? And then he'll be like, look, dead sheep. Yeah, dead sheep. Uh, All right. Yeah. You know it's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but he is a really nice guy. And he's the, he, no, and his stuff, there's something to it. There definitely is. That's why they got rid of him. Yep. Where he rented in Reno, Tyler's not a very uncommon name. Well, how would you end up having that? Oh, because it's U-Haul. It's U-Haul. Hey, Joe, how long have you known Tyler? I was at, I, I, the first met him when I was in rehab with him in, um, Lodge in, in Woodland. I first met him about 18 months ago. He started working there. 18 months? Mm -hmm. Monday when he was in that big box, whatever that is, in there. Okay, with the blue thing in it, yeah. it was Monday. Okay. Yeah. And then later on, he brought the stuff that's in the other unit. Yeah, because I, I called him, I don't... Okay, I don't mean a Satanist per se as, say, in a Luciferian, someone who follows Crowleyan magic. Is that a little bit more specific? 
I'm not. I, I refuse to say as a Christian that it's positive to be a Satanist. I don't believe Satanism is positive. Well, so I certainly cannot understand why your archetype would be a person who literally wants to destroy all mankind. Kind so of weird. Yeah. Wiccan is witchcraft. Yes. And there's Crowley and Satanism and they do magic. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get how people are drawn in, into it too, Autumn. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. Lucifer is a light brainer. So is Jesus. Lucifer is false light. False. Jesus is the light. Yes. So Lucifer is the bringer of the light. Hence the the Aziel. Hence hence the goat. Well, also Lucifer is no more. Lucifer that fell too. and he became Hasatan. So yes. he Lucifer is a dead being. Yes. He's, he doesn't exist anymore. He what if? If Lucifer still existed, we could look up in the sky and see him like this. Yes. As the protector. That's what he was meant to be. Yes. Knocking back asteroids and shit, you know? That'd be sick. Could you imagine seeing him up there? Protecting Earth from asteroids and shit? That's but like anyway, I'm not going to debate Lucifer. I got. I, I want to do this shit. This is good shit. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I am so damn suspicious. Your wife keeps me on bring a bus, and I told him, you know, if you're trying to get caught, you know, because I thought it was drugs. Right. If you're trying to get me caught up or something, you know, because I just pretty good off the road, and I'm going to get in Yep. Right. And I threatened him, you know, he goes, there's something that I find in here. Right. Are you going to get me in trouble? He goes, no, no, I promise you, there's nothing in there. Okay. But he's acting weird, though. And then, right. and then the, to rent a U-Haul with three boxes, that was really weird, too. No debate pervetry in my chat. No debate pervetry in my chat. It Oi. is not allowed. Go to another channel if you want to do a debate with someone. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> oh my god, that sounded perfect. Everyone here wants to see what the fuck is happening with this crime, but yet you want to come in here. Oi! You want to come in here. You want to start a, a mess around. Well, I'll tell you, Fluffy McRuff. <laughs> you can eat assholes in hell. Uh, yeah, go away, Mullen. Yeah, she, yeah, she said it. She was like, yeah, yeah. God, that was hilarious. She has a very good accent. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Okay. And then your daughter's the one that convinced you to open up. Yeah. Okay. What uh, nationality do you think Tyler is trying to block that spotlight from your face? <laughs> yeah, I think Actually, I'll stand right over here. I think he's black or Puerto Rican, something like that. Is he darker darker than you? Yeah. Darker than you. Or, well, not really darker than me. He's kind of like different sh shades of dark. Okay. So, you need. I see that person, and all I see is Corey Feldman. Am I right? What the flip? Look it. It looks like Corey Feldman. The thing with it's the freaking question of his mark. Shape. Yeah. The shape of his skull. Am I right about the Corey <laughs> Feldman? I'm just admiring the shape of your skull. Yeah, I think so. He looks like Corey Feldman. Okay, so Corey Feldman did it. Case closed. All right. Well, let's go to another video then, I guess. But he's saying his race is black or Puerto Rican, so he's black or Rican. Cardi B? Yeah. Cardi B did it. The drawing, or the drawing. Um, give me a minute. Yeah, the drawing. Drawing. It, 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 it's, it's so fucking... Corey Feldman.
totally Corey Feldman. Blacker region. That's right. I could sort of mean it, maybe. Yeah, see? I got them eyes. I'm onto it. It's Corey fucking Feldman. I know it. Yeah. He's probably like my height anyways. So he's, he's slim and short. Okay. Do you know anything about him being married or anything like that? He's married to that good girl. He's married to somebody? Yeah, he's married to that girl. That girl came with him. Oh, there was a girl with him when he came yeah, yesterday? Oh, there was kids with him? Oh, oh okay. dang! He brought his wife and kids to the freaking murder site? What? 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 Nuts. Yeah. And is she uh, same same look as him, maybe four to She's definitely black. But you don't have any idea what her name might be? Okay. How long does your camera store? Oh, we'll go way back. Can you look up something for me? Yeah. That's George Gate. So that's, is that the yours or is that it right there? That's the yours right there. Okay, Thanks. but not the guy we're interested. How do I hit pause? Well, oh, just right there. Oh, I'm gonna be honest. Okay. Make a mental note of the white car, as this will be important shortly. Phone number to the guy we're looking for. Do you have it? Yeah. We need it. So they can look up the number and get the name right here. So he's from Reno. Yeah. Tyler. Driver's 24. Ooh. So Friday the 11th, they showed up with the van and the hatchback. Yeah. The hatchback. And then the 14th, the hatchback is with Joe. Okay. So they ran his phone through the computer system, so what they came up with. So they came because of the smell of, like, dead bodies or something. Yes. Ah, oh, man. Bro. They thought they were going to get away with this shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. They got some... Yeah, like, you can't get away with shit anymore. No. Like, it. you got you got to be clean. Don't do shit. Stay, stay within the law, and you're cool. Don't do bad shit, yeah. Yeah, man. Just don't do it. Like, they got 4K shit, and they can go in and out, zoom in and out and all around everything. Yeah, just don't do it. Yeah, it's, it's just dumb to do a crime nowadays. If you're thinking of doing something because you feel like you, your situation is going to be better after it's done and it's illegal, just don't do it. No. Don't just throw the idea out. No, you're going to get caught. There's cameras you're gonna everywhere. You're going to get caught. Yes. There's cameras everywhere. Somebody's going to see something. Yep. It's just the way it is. Yep. All right, Odo. Yeah, bro. That's how they got a lead in the Idaho 4, white Elantra on cam. See? It's always the cams. You can't get away with shit anymore. I wonder if this Odo in our chat is a fan of Odo from Deep Space Nine. Possibly. I'm really hoping that's the case. Me too. Because Odo kicks ass. Right? Yes. Ah! Yes! I love it. Odo did it. He's one of the best characters in any show ever, right? No, he was good to be put in the show because he kind of has that, like, um, grumpiness that um, Bones had. Yeah, and his voice is like that, too. Yeah. He sounds kind of pissed off a lot of the time. Yeah, Renee is an amazing actor. Isn't he in something recently that you wanted to see? I think, actually, yeah. Oh, Willow, the new Willow. Is yes, he's in Willow. Is that what he's in? He is always accusing others, so I thought, well, Odo did it. That, <laughs> he's dead now? Oh, no. What? I was wrong then. I swore we heard he was in something recently. Okay. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, Jesus oh. bless. Yeah, that sucks. I didn't know that. Now I'm depressed. A baby girl. Yeah, Renee Aberjonas. Yeah. I could have sworn there was some movie he did recently. He was we a were, genius. We were like, we well, got well, well, well. We'll figure it out. Oh, well. That's sad. 
died back in 2019. So it has to be something around that time. Maybe, that yeah. yeah. That's it. So you got his uh, driver's license I'm number. Sad, man. Um, if you look on the other backside, that's his credit card that he's been using. <laughs> man, what an idiot! He even left his credit card information, uh -huh. his his ID information at the place he was storing the body. Oh uh, no! Like, did they ever think that bodies decompose and stink? Yeah. Let's just put this in storage. Why not? That, that nobody will ever know. Not gonna smell it. Nothing. It's, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, they're not gonna tell on us. That's not smart. Why is the dad like sticking up for the fucking mom? Put that bitch in jail. Yeah. Probably didn't think it would be as bad as it does. Yeah, maybe. Decomposing bodies. Really so we'll just go with this name as a as our possible suspect. Send a message to uh, to Reno. Give them that horsepower and see if they can confirm an address for him there, or confirm that is a good address in Reno. Sure. Have the supervisor send a message over there. So what? Briefly, what is her story as to why they decided to check things out today? Wasn't she the one that was telling? She's been trying to convince her dad the whole time. That something was wrong with the boxes. No, so she was not acting right. And she, has no she, she just thinks something's weird with, about him. He's acting paranoid. She's okay. like, she really nervous, really paranoid. They leave. All three. She, yeah. She convinces dad, hey, that dude's weird. I need to go over here and look and see what those boxes are. Okay. So she convinces dad to come over here. They come down here together to look inside those boxes. Okay. Because she did not get a good vibe from him. Sacramento CS. And homicide units have just discovered that a most dreaded class of cases has landed in their laps. Based on the driver's license information provided by a manager of the storage facility, law enforcement has set their sights on a young man by the name of Tyler Anderson. The 23-year-old resides in Reno, Nevada. The Sacramento Police Department contacts their counterparts in Reno, Nevada. It happens a lot, the husband or wife. I just watched another one in EWU about a stepmom and how the dad helped get rid of his toddler daughter after they kept her in the apartment in a messy bathroom for days. Jesus. I can't understand what's wrong with people. What the hell, dude? I watched this one literally yesterday. It's so fucking sad. The stepmom is insane. Ugh. Yeah. Drop the wish list. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tear. Nevada, and it is soon established that Tyler is married to 23-year-old Avriana Anderson. Around this same time, back in Sacramento, police discover that Tyler's phone is pinging nearby. He's soon located and taken into custody. The Reno Police Department's Robbery and Homicide Unit dispatches two detectives to the apartment of Tyler and Avriana at approximately 1.30 p.m. on May 16, 2018, the day after first responders were dispatched to the horrendous scene at the storage facility. As Avriana grants the detectives entry to her Reno residence, the convoluted horror story slowly begins to unfold. Even yeah, glance, I will. The apartment is noticeably We're unkempt. slowly adding the things to it as we think the about them. Floor, and the kitchen is filthy and littered with spoiled food. Ariana agrees to travel to the main station of the Reno Police Department, where she will be interviewed by the detectives. Tyler, on the other hand, asks for an attorney shortly after a Sacramento detective informs him of his rights. It's not until July 5th, 2019, after more than a year has passed, Boy. that Tyler emerges to explain his long-awaited version of events. Shortly after his arrest, the, the... The question is, why didn't you, like, report your child missing? That's it. That's the same thing with the pig farming woman. Any, yeah. no any normal person... When something like this happens and someone is horribly hurt and going to die, maybe, you're calling 911. Yep. If you're a normal person. Yep. End of story. If you have somebody that's end up hurt and dead and nobody called about it, it's because somebody did something bad. That's, that's true. I think that's just like 
a baseline. It's common fucking sense, dude. Yeah. I think so. Any normal person left. Well, that's the thing. They are in more and more like this every day. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Which makes you really go, wow, society's in danger. Yeah. Society's in trouble. Casey Anthony partied for a month before her mom yeah. made her call. Yep. That's, that's true. That's nuts, isn't it? That's <sighs> nuts. And then the mother got crazy because she's like, holy shit, I, they're going to think I did this too. Do you have a wish list for the Kit Kats? Yeah, we do. I just think everyone bought everything for the Kit Kats. They probably did. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are very kind. You want to bless the babies. Gavin's going to have his gravy. He's going to be so excited. He'll go, wow! We should put a cat tree on there. I'll know where to put that right now, Shannon. True. We really don't. We don't want to be getting tons of stuff. In How are you, watermelon baby girls? You hey, watermelon. You have a floof. Why are you floofing, watermelon? Are you a good floof? Hey, girls. Are you a good floof? Meow. Meow. Yeah. There you go, baby girls. Yeah. Meow. She's a baby. Oh, she's purring. She's a purry girl, Shanny. No, I don't think there's a way I can pin the link. I need to put the link down somewhere. I'll figure it out. Looks like you, if you use those that the stream lab shit, like Amaranth does, you could have like your link tree in there, and then you know. Yeah. Everybody has your links. But that's stream. Yeah, you you can put it in again. Okay. Oh, he alluded to everything in a recorded prison phone call with his mother. I, you know, I hope that the truth comes out. It's gonna come out. Like I said, it's gonna come out. And it's not gonna be what everybody wants to hear. It's not. It's not gonna be pretty. You know, it's gonna be true. It, it is what it is. Until then. Detectives will enter the interrogation room to speak with Avriana and the process of untangling this tragic mystery that transformed a storage unit into a horrific crime scene. Okay, I'm just going to call it with her posture. She has the type of posture from a spoiled little brat who got everything she ever wanted in her life. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just the posture? Just by her posture. All right. Let's see if I'm right. All right. I'm really good at... at Seeing people. Yeah, you are. Dean will get underway. I emotionally Avriana is situated in a room that doesn't See, appear to be suitable for an interrogation. It should be decorated as me. She's doing that in an interrogation room. Yeah. Like you would think the woman would be up and about, up and about. You would think. Where's my child? You would think. No, no, no. I sense me spoiled little brat. Distracting role. Wait, I can pin it. There we go. Oh, cool. I pinned the message. Now that's good. There we go. Minimally as possible, but it appears that Avriana. I just pinned the link to our Amazon wish list. That's awesome. Here you go. I didn't know you could pin shit. I now know. I know. 
Hypno was brought into a soft interrogation room that's usually reserved for victims of a crime or children. It's possible that Avriana is aware that she's being recorded or that someone is watching her, so she's trying to garner some sympathy before the interview has even started. In any case, Avriana will soon reveal exactly why it is that she's not feeling well. And let's just say it's not due to some sort of stomach bug. The detectives are seated directly in front of Avriana with no barrier, such as a table between them. This will allow them to fully observe her body language. The detective wastes little time. After a bit of small talk and rapport building. Like she's trying to make herself look as small as possible, I've noticed, with her body yeah. language. Yeah. So they look at her like she's like a little girl. Yeah. You know? Vulnerable. And pity me. Yeah. We'll add more stuff. We will. We'll add more stuff as time goes by. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope she's not pregnant. Oh. That would be awful. He gets down to the reason for this meeting. Top guy earlier at your apartment is the Sacramento Police Department gave us a heads up that they're investigating what they believe is to be a homicide or some sort of suspicious death, okay? So they asked our to kind of facilitate this whole thing. Okay. The detectives then thank Avriana for coming down to speak with them and express their appreciation, which they're trained to do under the Reed technique. This makes the suspect more likely to want to continue being seen as cooperative. Of course, her level of cooperation will be subject to change as the detectives begin to press her for more information. Uh, the main thing I'm talking about, as I told you earlier, was your recent travel to Sacramento. Okay. Um, so, just in your own words, can you just kind of explain what that's about? Uh, well, we went down there, honestly, to get some... Sh get something that I'm ashamed to talk about. Okay. Well, we're on your past judgment, okay? It's not our job to do that. Avriana explains that she and Tyler went to Sacramento and purchased cocaine. She's conveniently failing to disclose the... That's just sad. That's just so sad. Depression. That's depression. Addiction, too. And addiction. <sighs> you did something horrible by an accident, didn't you? I don't uh, know. I Probably. Hi, Absence. How are you, darling? Ah, oh, jeez. Most significant reason for their travels. The detectives are aware of this, but they play along and attempt to make Avriana comfortable by behaving very casually and stating they're not judging her for her admission. When did you guys go down? Um, I don't know the exact day, but it was... They were the day before yesterday. Okay. What did you guys go down there? What? What, what? what did you guys take down there? Um, yeah, bro. Um, I think I went into the dresser. Just, just a dresser? subject of the dresser and Avriana has confirmed Absence. that their children I'm went to trying the trip to feel as well. better make a note of this as it will be important later 
Where, where do you guys have a the dresser suit? Um, he said his friends. His friends' storage or something like that. Do you know where that was? No. Uh, I don't know the city. Is she like kind of withdrawing a little bit? Or drowsy? Like, dang, girl. Is she coming down? Get she your don't... head together. You're in front of cops. Why are you like not alert? She don't have her cocaine. Like, why are you not alert? Be alert, girl. Be alert. Ooh, I'll take one too. Yeah, dude. Give you a nice big one with lots of the, on it. They said there's a reason. I bet she's pregnant. Yeah. That's possible. Sorry. God. She just killed a child and she's already bearing another? You're going to have another one. You're going to have one. No, 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 no. No, no. She doesn't deserve to have a child. She took a baby for her own selfish reasons. <sighs> Jason's a happy boy. So good. She did the same stuff that Foodie Beauty was doing. <laughs> like, why would you take that stuff? Look how it makes you all freaking weird and shit. I don't think so. Did he say what did you do yesterday, like, as an activity, and she started rolling off drugs? Yeah. I wouldn't know how it is, like, but I see people on it, and I'm like, fuck that shit. <laughs> Cocktopus. <laughs> I don't want to know. I may be trying to appear like she is being truthful and cooperative by revealing her illegal drug habits. However, her laughter before responding could be an indication that she's intentionally trying to show her indifference. She's confident that revealing her drug use won't get her in any trouble. Despite revealing this information to the two detectives sitting in front of her, can you try to guide us to the front of the house? Um, Mexicans. Okay. Yeah. Do uh, that girl high now on something. Mm -hmm. She high on something. I ain't so. She don't seem right in her mind. Mm -hmm. She's floating. She doing something, and it's fucking weird. Is there anything on the wish live forever? Or not. I no, don't know. I haven't added nothing. I haven't looked at anything. I don't know. He adds everything to the list. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't do nothing with it. <laughs> That's it. You got two nice big slices left. Okay. Big ones. I don't know what he added to tell you the truth in a lot of ways. Not much so far. It yeah. Just, just give us time. Yeah. Okay. Her. Yeah, I'd be evil. She could be my friend. We could sit and talk for hours, me and that little girl. Mm -hmm. And you took that away, that experience. You could have given her up to adoption or something. That's just some evil shit. Straightforward. That's done evil shit. Mm -hmm. Look at that beautiful face. Oh, I want to hug that baby. But you know what? I know that Jesus <laughs> is hugging that baby right now. Mm -hmm. And she has a she she's gonna grow up a hell of a lot better in heaven than she would ever on earth. Mm -hmm. So don't you worry about that little baby girl. She's in Jesus' arms, yeah. and she being spoiled. What a bitch you are, doing that to that beautiful little baby. <laughs> yeah, fucking cokehead. Taco. Ooh. And I agree. That is a good time to use that word. Is when a woman is so despicable that she goes against her own human nature. No. That's the only time you should be using the C word like that. You want one of these? Not right now, baby. No, I do. Uh. You want the strawberry sprinkle? No. Oh. I see your eyes going toward it. Well, I always go for the glazed chocolate cake. Oh. I know, I'm not doing that. Oh. <laughs> I'll take the Homer donut. Okay. You'll take the Homer the donut. Homer Simpson donut. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. 
with shit. It, it starved and abused her stepchild. That's disgusting. Like, you starve for your babies if, if they're hungry. Yeah. That's what I always did. What do you do? Parts to Leonie and how their daughter Callie came to be. It's July 5th, 2019, more than 13 months after his arrest and Avery Anna's account. I was with uh, Leonie in Sacramento, staying with Brett when she got pregnant. Just a couple months later, Avery Anna came along and Leonie had already left the picture. I met Avery in January 2012. from past substance abuse. Down to the treatment program, the foundation. So, things are mild. I wasn't there for her when she was born. Man, they got a nice 4K camera, but their fucking mic is shitty as fuck. Not very good. Nah. I'm hearing them, though. Yeah, I am. But I'm just saying. Could be better, yeah. You're right. Yeah, I'm going to see JCS, too. It's good shit. But they need a better mic for this. Yeah. Tyler says that his mother brought baby Callie to meet him for the first time. Despite this normally being a joyous occasion, Avriana was not happy about this, to say the least. You know, she wants us to spend time together. She and she and my mom were never uh they never saw eye to eye they, they were never they never had a relationship. So she was upset and you know, she saw mom and she so if she don't come back. This type of threat is a form of manipulation and is an obvious red flag for an unhealthy relationship. Tyler tells the detective about another occasion where he spent time with Callie when he was granted a furlough for Christmas of two thousand twelve. This time, Avriana was livid. Yet upon his release in March of Jesus. 2013, he moved into her apartment. Shortly thereafter, while... Well, like, ladies? Ladies. Pin cushion face, too. Ladies? Uh -huh. Please stop doing this to your face. I know you, if you make... if you, It makes you feel like you're edgy or something. But you look ridiculous. So, like, a piercing here and there, that's one thing. But to pierce everything, please stop doing this to your face. Yeah. Like. Especially septum piercings. Holy shit. Let the guys have that. God, that like, does not. Like, please stop doing this. Yeah, I agree. You're, you, it, it, it. it does not look good. No. It doesn't look good at all. Little pops of beauty, not overdoing it. Yeah. That 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 shanty fashion sense one oh one. Thank you. <clears throat> back back to the program. Yeah, man. While Tyler was visiting <laughs> Callie and his mother, Avriana attempted to take her life and landed herself in the hospital, according to Tyler. Avriana's jealousy toward Callie was a huge red flag that should have warned Tyler away early in the relationship. Yet, he stayed with her. In the fall of 2013, while Tyler was in the... Heck yeah, I have my nose piercing. It's a little pop of beauty. Mm -hmm. Not overdoing it. We don't want to look like Pinhead, ladies. We don't want to look like Pinhead. No. No. I agree. No. No. Too many piercings can be troublesome while kissing. You know what I mean? More than that. Yeah. What when is you your perspective as a man? When you st I, I'm going to say that women that have too many piercings in their face look like a pin cushion and it's sad. Because they're, pro they're, they're probably attractive otherwise. You want to split your tongue someday? Cool. That's cool. It's a pop. You see what I mean? Yeah. 
too much of anything is always a bad thing. And I'm, I'm saying that as a cigarette smoker. Mm. In, in Watermelon, she did a warrior cry. It's out of line. Hey, dude, if you want to do that to yourself, that's fine. Too much weed is never bad. True, and most likely you don't have that as much money as you think you have, and 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 you'll never go overboard on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying people can't do what they want. You can do whatever the fuck they want. It just looks bad. But with Shani's fashion advice, that's what you get, man. You can do what you want. It just looks. Shani, like, Shani's fashion advice one hundred and one. If if you disagree with me, you disagree with me. I don't care. It's your body. Do what you want. Industrial. Period. The process of seeking full custody of Callie. She went to live with her father in Adriana. Look at those little at that balls. Time, she was just thirteen months old, and they agree things were good in the beginning. In hindsight, however, this short span represented the calm before the storm that was quickly approaching. So I go to work and I mean, the day around, um, I would come home and it would be playing, you know, it would be, she would teach her how to read, she would teach her how to walk, you know, she showed her how to cook, evacuate. Her hair looks like my first best friend, Damira. Hmm. How could you do that to the baby? Yeah, man. Think of think of you get a job and they don't allow piercings like that and you got all this piercing scar in. <coughs> Love her little puff bonds. I know it's so cute. Oh, baby. How could you hurt that? I just don't like that. Mm -mm. I don't understand you. Uh-uh. How you can hurt that. You can't do that. Uh, amen, Scorpion. You gotta do what you gotta do. Can Rev have another slice of pizza? He looks hungry. I'm stuffed. I had four pieces. He's had more pizza than me. I had four pieces. I had half the pie, and I'm leaving you the other two. That are and there. I had one and a half. Yeah, exactly. Or, no, two and a half. Yeah, I ate four pieces, man. No, one and a half. The last one was a baby. Yeah. to protect that woman, dude. She was just a baby. And I just remember looking at her and I'm like, oh my god, you're yeah. so cute. Kind of monkey, yeah. And I remember when the first night we got her, I cried. I was holding her and I cried. Because I was just like, oh, she was just a baby, you know. And I just, <laughs> my sacking skills. My baby. <laughs> presented an idea to Tyler sometime in early 2014. You know, I think that we should get married so that we can solidify your chances of getting full custody. Naturally, she disguised the real motive behind her proposition. <laughs> you love polishing off a whole pizza? I can't do that no more. Not alone. No. I, can't, I can't do it. Yes, the one girl says she's never been happier, but she says she started doing it right after in a... Oh. Huh.
According to Tyler, he believed that Adriana felt as if she was a mother to Callie I think and we wanted shouldn't to have ensure she remained wow. in their lives. It would turn out that this could not be further from the truth. In addition to wanting to get married, Adriana also wanted to have a child with Tyler. His mother had warned Adriana not to go playing house with her son. However, it seemed this was precisely her plan. A baby would further bind them together in the already volatile situation. How many Pearsons you got, Absinthe? What Pearsons you got, girl? Oh. Ooh. I, I wish I could be. 17. Wow. Holy shit. What was the most painful Pearson? Everything except down there. Oh, I was pierced down there once. I want to do it again. Both boobies. Ah. The boobs are the most painful, bro. I ain't doing it. They're all gone. Yeah. They're all out now. Yeah. Yeah, I screamed out loud. Oh my lord. For the boobies. I chicken out hat nipple piercings. Yeah, me too. Like, fuck that. My titties are my titties. I love them. I wouldn't do that. Situation <laughs> would continue its trajectory toward inevitable disaster. Despite any trepidation Tyler may have felt, he went along with Adriana's plans. The medication that she was taking her bipolar depression medication was probably the reason why she wasn't able to get pregnant. So she stopped taking that in, uh, before we got married in 2014. So in January, she got pregnant with... It's unknown if Adriana gradually stopped the medication she was allegedly taking under a doctor's orders. It's important to note that it can be dangerous to suddenly stop taking medications prescribed <laughs> to treat mental health disorders, and it can cause a sharp increase in symptoms. The first son shared by Adriana and Tyler was born on Halloween of 2014. It was no coincidence that soon after... Well, you know... If she stopped taking her meds, and she fucked and freaked out and did something... Oh, that's a hard one, man. Yeah. Tyler would arrive home from work to find Callie exhibiting noticeable injuries. And I would ask Adriana how she got it, but she said, oh, she bumped her head because she was playing, you know, or she was chasing her brother and she fell. Things would drastically worsen over time. Though Adriana's story was a bit different, the ugly truth was beginning to show itself. I was raised on discipline, so if you talk back, you're going to pop your mouth and tell you don't talk back. Discipline, however, should never leave a bruise on a child. Research shows that physical punishment, such as spanking or hitting, has been linked to the child displaying increased negative behaviors, including aggression. I would have to agree with that, actually, because of how I raise the boys. I don't raise my hands to them. I don't. We talk things out. Right. And they're not very aggressive at all. Which is good. Like, there's no need to do that to your children. They can, they can understand if you speak to them. Yeah. Agitated. Her demeanor is confrontational and defensive.
defensive. She's showing clear signs of discomfort. She's rubbing her up. Dude, do you realize you're so messed up and you're a drug addict probably because your mama was all freaking crazy on you? Like, you don't have to freaking be so harsh on a child. They can reason, dude. It is. She's trying to justify her actions, Autumn. That's why I think she's talking about how she's raised. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. <sighs> she is itching her arm. She did more than cocaine, dude. I bet she did heroin, too. Maybe. That's why she's so... Uh, Maybe. Mm -hmm. This is on Explore With Us. Arms, which is a self-soothing movement used by individuals who are beginning to experience increased anxiety. No, no, no. Tyler places blame for the abuse on Avriana as the primary caregiver. However, as her parent, he is legally and morally obligated to protect his child and remove her from an abusive environment. That's true. Tyler wasn't the only one who took note of Callie's injuries. His Aunt Maylene eventually contacted CPS. She claimed to have observed firsthand the physical abuse and neglect imposed on the little girl oh who was only three years old at the time. This particular chain of events started in April of 2015, when Tyler returned home from a day of attending college classes to find something quite unnerving. It was a terrible sight. Callie's tiny hand had been badly burned. Oh. When Tyler allegedly inquired as to how the injury had occurred, Afriana claimed that the water was too hot that morning when she had washed Callie's hands. The explanation was completely implausible. It wasn't an honest mistake, but rather an intentional, cruel act. You'd burn a child's hand. That's just fucking wrong, man. Horrible. Like, these people don't know how jail is to people who hurt kids. Mm -hmm. You you want to tell the audience what happened to you after you kicked Zachary in the head? What happened to you? Because you deserve that shit. Why well, it's... What happened was, um... You know, I went in, uh... I went in to... Separated from the other situation from general population because uh, I, I had suicidal ideation. So after I was out of there, uh, they put me in the step down unit. And after I was out of there, they're like, okay, now you're going to Gen Pop and I, cause I was never there. So I, when I got to Gen Pop, everybody's like, well, what's your charge? What's your charge? And then they got my papers out and read my papers and they found out what it was, you know, that, that I had been physical with an autistic kid. And uh, the, I, luckily, the guy in the bunk next to me was a Christian and he had a bunch of Christian buddies around him. And he's like, brother, I just tell you right now, uh, with, with, with the charge that you got and I want to look out for you, okay, you should tell them you want protective custody because I couldn't protect you even. I've been here forever. Everybody knows me, but no, like I couldn't protect you. So he said, I suggest you have your, your, your breakfast in the morning and you go and talk to the, 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 the guy, what, what do they call him? The warden. You, you really need to talk to the warden to get the hell out of here. Cause, cause like basically I got in there and it was like, you're, I'm going to kill you tonight. Like there was like three or four different guys that said to me in a matter of five minutes of being in general population, we're going to kill you tonight. So, don't hurt kids ever, okay? Never, ever do it. Because when you get in there, they're, 
there was like a target on your head. You said they were pounding on your doors and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was bad, man. They got riled up when they found out what the charge was. All of them. Like the entire cell block. It's a good lesson to learn. Yeah. Not to put your hands on children. Yeah. And I kept telling him, don't get physical with the boys. Yeah. I'm telling you. It was mental, man. It was, it was because yep. I was going through the shit. But I'm glad it happened in that way, and it happened, and, and I and I paid for it in that way because now I real I did learn the lesson. Yeah, it was so traumatic to you. You realize, wow, this is how it's gonna be. If like, yeah, yeah, for that charge, even yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing sex, to, you know, uh, uh, pedophilia or anything like that. It, but they feel the same way about physical abuse, especially if it's an autistic kid. And you're right about that octopus prime. There are better reasons to not hit kids than how inmates will treat you. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Because you're hitting a child. You're hurting them. Yeah. And, you know, Zachary doesn't know any better sometimes. So, he didn't know that, though. He had to be taught that in, like, such a fucking horrible manner. I was mental, dude. I know. I know you were. But I'm glad it's in your head now. There, She's smacking Jason in the face. She's like, fuck you. 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 I love you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Floofy face. That's right. What are you doing, floof ball? <laughs> she has restless tail syndrome. I'm glad Jason knows he messed up and yeah. can repent for it. Yeah. I totally That's was. why I took him back. Is because of that. But if he ever did that shit again, holy shit. No, I should go away for a long time. No, 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 no. You're not going to get another chance after that. I'm done. Uh, yeah, of course. Mm hmm. Of course. Mm hmm. I ain't putting up with that shit. I hope you don't do it again and prevent yourself from getting to that place where you where you did did it in. Yeah, exactly. Ugh, the father denied he knew anything about the abuse. What are you talking about, drag? I hope you don't reach out to G-Man if he does it again, because that would be very awkward. What the fuck? Never mind. I don't fucking care. <laughs> you gotta switch it back to the thing. Oh my god. God, that I fucking mic. That's because she is. Bobby. 
Maylene, along with other relatives, were stunned when they observed that Callie appeared to have lost a significant amount of weight since the previous time they they'd encountered her, her in yeah. July. Yeah. According to Maylene, Callie was seen devouring food, even eating off plates that belonged to others. That was when Maylene contacted CPS. In mid-October of 2015, CPS met with Tyler and Avriana in their home. True to form, Avriana asked Tyler to accept blame for Callie's hand injury yet again. He just comes, I tell him the same thing, you know, uh, I was not good, and she put her hand in the water, and then uh, I looked up, had a heel of 30 degrees burn, I did everything I said, she was good to go, no pain. The fact that Avriana manipulated Tyler into taking responsibility for his daughter's burned hand and Tyler agreeing to lie to his family and CPS shows the dynamic of their relationship and, if true, how he potentially favored his wife. Bruh's a fucking cuck. Bruh. You're fucking weird, dude. If over the well-being of his own child. In addition to the concerns about potential abuse, Tyler's family also worried that Callie wasn't being fed. Hey, his people have said, his family has said that she wasn't eating enough, or something like that, and I, I think that's another reason why they called. But why were they shit up? Um, I guess because she was thin. But thin was an extreme understatement. What was the end result of them checking out you, checking out? Everything was fine. They closed the case. They closed, they closed the case because she clearly wasn't being abused. You guys can't judge a book by its cover, you know, because I'm sad. I mean, I'm just abusing my daughter because she did something. And that's what I told the CPS people. Okay. They talked to her, looked at her, checked her. Of course, everything was fine. You know, I'm just disciplining her. I'm just Given that girl a little pops a lot. <laughs> Dude, I'm not going to interrupt my stream for a DM. Especially to someone I've never seen before. Actually, the report described the findings to be inconclusive. It also stated that the concern was that Tyler and Avriana were using excessive or inappropriate methods of discipline. The report hit the nail on the head, yet CPS dealings with the Andersons were discontinued. Things were building towards a horrific end in the time that followed. Oh. Dude, I don't want your information. I don't need your information because something tells me that said information is cause for a fight. So, have a nice life. I don't need any information. I don't give a fuck. Oda. Still, Tyler gives more insight into the terrible things that were going on behind the closed doors of that apartment. Of course, he refused to put any blame on his own actions. There was the time that Avriana allegedly flew off the handle for no apparent reason and kicked him and Callie out of the home late one night. According to Tyler, this was a common occurrence. You know, she's screaming outside the uh, house, you know, um, get the out, don't ever come back, you know, take, the, take your dumb ass baby with you. Of course, it must be noted that Tyler was well aware of this type of...
of name calling. A record. Nah. of text messages within the lead detective's narrative confirms this. He continues with details of physical abuse Callie would encounter at the hands of Avriana. She would use belts, she would use wind spoons, she would use brushes and combs, you know, she would just, she would stop, you know, I have to stop her, you know, it's like, and then they around and say that she, you know, Enjoys hitting that baby. That's what it is. Yeah. She's just a wicked freaking witch of the West. She's a mommy dearest. Yeah. That's what she is. Mommy dearest. Starving her child. Hurting her child. Like, fuck this bitch, man. I don't like her at all. How she talks about such disdain about that beautiful little girl. And that father just fucking is so cucked that he does this. This is like my mom. All the fucking awful shit she did to me. And my fucking dad fucking just stands back and lets it fucking happen. <coughs> that was my fucking life. It's just that little fucking girl. Fuck these parents, man. This is triggering. Yeah. <laughs> this is bringing some, some feelings from me, man. She's telling me, you know, you always save her. You know, you can't always save her. As time went on, the cruel acts Avery You can't always save Kelly her? Excuse me? That's when you, as a father... Should have cut that fucking bitch to the curb. You can't always save her. That's a fucking threat. To your child. Yeah. Look what happened to your child. <coughs> she was telling you her intentions the whole time. You deserve to go to jail for that. You were neglectful of your child. It's bullshit need to increase in severity. Tyler tells of one particular evening when he arrived home from work and encountered what could only be described as a terribly distressing sight. And yet the question why is still left unanswered for now. I was in the bathroom, right? And she's in there, uh, and she saw it. And, and that was Cage. And Note that Maverick is the alleged family dog that Tyler claimed Avery on. She put the baby in that fucking cage? No way. Are you for real? What? Hmm. That woman's Sharmuta. She's wild. Bitch. Just evil, yeah. The spirit of Lilith. Spirit of Lilithu, that's what you are. Jezebel spirit. Yeah. Disgusting. It's crazy. How could you do that to a child? Donna wow. wanted, then left his care solely up to Tyler. He was kept in a kennel in the main bathroom at the Anderson apartment. Apparently, this was the alternative There's to imposing other floor, physical. Yeah. 
and food. There's food and shit on the floor and handcuffs. She would handcuff them? No way. No way. What? That's insane. Wow. There's no way the father didn't know about this. No, he had to. Yeah. This is bullshit, yo. It's on Calais. Since Tyler had allegedly told Adriana not to use her hands or objects as punishment toward Callie. You know, and the first thing I do is get her out of the cage, you know. Her. What is she doing? She's not crying. She's not crying and she's not she's not hurt, she's not bruised, right? What the hell is she doing in this cage, you know? And Ryan said that, you know, she pushed she pushed her brother. Tyler appears to be hiding his eyes, which could be an indication of Dude! Why didn't you call the police when that fucking shit happened? Yeah. <coughs> oh my god, I hate this mother so bad, this stepmom. She's rough. She is so stinking, blinking evil. Fucking handcuffs? Yeah, dude. Like, that's insane. That's messed up shit, dude. Nah, man. This bitch needs to go fucking down, dude. Yeah. This bitch needs to go fucking down. I agree. Or it may be that he doesn't want to see the detective's reaction to what he is divulging. His claims concerning Avriana's behavior suggest she is unstable and impulsive. This may indicate the presence of a personality disorder, as this extreme behavior suggests that Avriana lacks empathy and remorse and has a poor moral conscience. Ultimately, we see that the abusive behavior continues to head in a tragic direction. The detectives return to a troubling issue, which they glossed over previously. Callie's unknown whereabouts. Mm -hmm. Is that normal for her to be gone? Just wanted to know. I mean, I sort of. They did. didn't say anything, but I'm sure it's like some kind of antisocial, antisocial or narcissistic personality disorder. I don't know if there's a JCS on this. <clears throat> The system failed them too. Yeah, there's that too. So messed up, dudes. Straight up. She would stay with his mom. You know, and stuff like that. Contrary to Avriana's claim, it's known that Callie never stays with Tyler's family. Things are beginning to become problematic for Avriana. They shift to Tyler and his involvement, <laughs> or lack thereof, in the household, as he has been working two jobs. Working hours usually, 10 to 9, 10 to 8, 10 to 7. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I The fact that Tyler is away from the home for so many hours of the day casts doubt on Avriana's claims that he was the primary caretaker of his daughter. Things just aren't adding up. When did you actually last talk to Tyler? Today. Avriana called Tyler around one earlier that afternoon. She Look just at that woke baby. Up. It just so happens that she was sleeping off her most recent round of cocaine. Did you ask him where he was last night? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. This woman is so gross. Oh. No, he didn't get her or not. I mean, I, I, mean, I was half asleep, TVH, so I was like, I, I really just wanted to go back to sleep. Did I ever tell you? I know how she's casually sitting. That woman don't give two fucking fucks 
about what happened to that little girl. In fact, she's fucking happy that little girl is gone. Mm. Maybe the little girl just didn't like you because you're just evil. You decided to choose her and treat her like she was some freaking enemy or something. Evil bitch. I don't know. I feel like I, he could have been going to get her. Okay. You see where he was going to get her from? No. No. But detectives know that was definitely not the case. As they seem to have hit a wall, they light a little fire under Adriana. We just got more. We got a phone call. We got some information. More information. Um, you are talking to fire. Okay. Your, your daughter. Well, she was in somebody else's house. She was at your apartment this entire last week and, and this entire time. Since you guys have moved here. Okay. So what, what I saw, yeah. So she's living with you guys. Right. It's the fire rate. But she doesn't seem phased. Despite their questions, the detectives already know the child is deceased. What they don't yet know, however, is what caused her death and to what extent Avriana was involved. They also need to determine the disturbing motive behind the death. They quickly touch on another important element of the case they are methodically building. I agree with that, Port. It is. She went to any kind of physical or any kind of Of course, Avriana has another excuse as to why everything has deteriorated. She adds an interesting detail to her account of recent events. Having withdrawal sy symptoms, honey? Probably. <laughs> like, you didn't care about that little girl. You getting high was more important than taking care of that little girl. <clears throat> like, so fuck you. I don't feel any sympathy for this woman. Abriana now, and has his elbows on his knees. This is done to show that he is engaged and he wants to try to get her to mirror this open demeanor. Often suspects will assume this position when they confess. Avriana fails to confess, but she does explain more about Cocaine's recent role in their lives. My relationship has been You know, and that's what we used to do back in the day, you know, uh, with each other, we used to do that. And statement when she reveals the dire condition of their relationship. The drug use, which she alleges has very recently become a regular habit, just adds more fuel to the already raging fire. However... I love that they wear best dad ever. That's called fronting. Hmm. Oh, look at her with her with the blue all up in her hair like she has no kids or anything. <sighs> Trying to look all young. 
It's all about the freaking vids. It's all about the freaking vids, isn't it? Ugh. People like her, I swear to God. Anyway. Your babies are, are there to, and given to you by God. Even if you're a step-parent, they're given you by God to share each other's love. And you just take advantage of God's gift and throw it away like it's garbage. Oh, fuck off. I love my sons, and they love me, and they're not damaged in any way. So fuck off. Gotta make everything so goddamn personal all the time. Piece of shit. This is a common theme in relationships between addicts. When they aren't using, they have nothing that connects them. Tyler's version is different. There's much more to these supposed drug-induced chats than bonding. You think I look like Lana Del Rey. I don't believe it. You know what I look like? Shit. These aren't the only times Avriana confesses her deepest, darkest, most horrifying secrets. In fact, she also makes a shockingly damning statement to the police. All my kids are small. I mean, all, all my kids are small. Uh, but even her. All my she, kids. I mean, she's not fat. They see my four-year-old. He's not fat. Small kids. Kids, she is. she she's not fat. What does that have to do with anything? That's right, Jules. Check my wish list. Okay, Patrick. Here, baby. I don't know how to do that. <clears throat> She ate. After such a slip of the tongue, oh God, it's man. clear that Avriana knows much more than she's letting on. Like Just how much stuff. does she know? No. That's the million dollar question. But detectives are determined oh to get God. to the heart People of it. People are so They sweet. soon sense Airplane. that it's time to try a different Oh tactic. my God, I got an air fryer. This one is sure to throw yeah, Avery on a They got everything? Oh, they got that's why they're asking for more stuff. Oh my God, you guys are unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'm so blessed. You <laughs> really Thank are. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is good, isn't he? Oh my God, that's so sweet of you guys. Oh my God. Yeah, you guys are. <gasps> my 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 heart ring light. Yeah. <laughs> I can have proper light in. Yes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> You're excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. I don't know why I deserve this so much, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, like, sincerely. Like, wow. It was all me. Oh, jeez. Oh, thank you, Patrick. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, watermelon. The hater is going to be mad about this one. Maybe, but I don't care. That was so sweet. Very nice. That was so sweet. Thank you. 
Oh, baby. Maybe. I can't wait to have proper lighting. Yeah. <laughs> keep excited. I'm just going to keep doing true crime because I, I don't mind this so much. It's like right up my alley. That's good. But this girl, she pisses me off. But thank you for that little, like, sweet moment. Thank you. Jesus bless you. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't feel like I deserve it. Yeah, you do, because you're going to use it, and you're going to make... You're gonna yeah, I am. I'm going to use it for everything. You make good content. <laughs> yes, Absinthe. <laughs> I can't wait for them to prove it. Yeah. Yeah, it does mean cooking streams. This is going to be awesome. Very cool, dude. I'm like, I thank you. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are just being just incredible right now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, my God, baby. I know. Uh, I, this, no. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? Sometimes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> the power of love. <laughs> oh, that's what he's doing. He's the power of love. What? The power of love. Do, 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 do. That's why. Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? The power of love. That's so sweet of him. Yeah. Like people are being so sweet lately. Like what happened? What's what what is this stuff? Mm. No, we have that. We have a chair for the kitchen actually for me. A rolling chair. Yeah. We actually have one. I know, air fryer. You know how much I love the air fryer? I love the air fryer. The best thing ever. Aw, thank you. <laughs> if we're gonna go with what he's saying and just his side of the story, um, that's not fair to you. When the detective attempts to play Avriana against Tyler, so he's sweet. using the self-serving tactic intended to motivate Avriana to tell her side of the story. As Avriana and Tyler are the only living individuals who know the truth behind Callie's death, Avriana has to wonder if Tyler is really talking. Well, I'm a bad mom. We're trying to look at you and find out what's her side because there's always two sides to this one. She's like, so Tyler is saying I'm a bad mom. Mm. Mm -hmm. She can't even keep her head up. She's just like, I am a bad mom. Oh, I am a bad mom at all. I'm a very good mom. You see, I just pop them. When they come near me, I just pop. You know, like that gopher game, pop. I'm a good mom, cause I know how to play gopher. Mm hmm. <laughs> Fuck this bitch, man. Bro. <laughs> it's a season of sharing and love. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Yeah, she'll show emotion with that. He's so sweet. <laughs> what was that? I moved and she got all whatever. Did you get noisy because he moved a little? She's like, no, I don't want to move.
No, Dick, it's okay. She was afraid I was going to move her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's making noises. She thinks I'm going to move her. What girl? Calm down, little baby girl. It's okay. She's like, I'm so happy here. I don't want to leave. She doesn't want to go. She's a drama queen. She always cries every yeah. time you move her. I know. She like, does. no! <laughs> now you have to fill it again. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know. We got to think of stuff we need. We'll do that. After this stream... We'll, we'll be talking about that all night, and we'll add more stuff to it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. God bless you guys. You're going to be so blessed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Question she poses to the detective in response to his claim clearly shows her apprehension, and her reaction definitely is not lost on the detectives. The detective doesn't answer Adriana's question, but changes the subject and inquires as to how long she's been absent. They suspect there's a direct correlation between her supposed disconnection and Callie's death. You've been disconnected for the past how many, what would you say, weeks, months? Okay, hey, Lava, dude. Okay. Well, I see you counting with your fingers. Yeah, that's right. So, so there's something significant that occurred. She's okay. like, I don't know. I don't know how long she's been gone. Who knows? I wanted my Coke. Holy <laughs> shit. Damn, man. That's rough. It's criminal. Put a dress on the list? Okay. I will. Will do. This girl here, man. She ain't taking it. <laughs> I'm a good mom. There was cooking supplies on the list, actually. Yep. That woman, man. She's a good mom. And then, where's your child? I don't know. No. Mm. <laughs> that cocaine was good though. I got me some good coke. Oh my god! What the hell? Significant or something where you're you're gauging it with your fingers like okay since this time it's been this many months. So what is that? How many months? I mean, really? I after I had my my son. Adriana and Tyler's second son was born the previous October, six months earlier. It seems those last several months were quite a whirlwind. A new baby in addition to two other small children to care for. And all the while, balancing a dark secret. Detectives are starting to make some headway. Adriana's story has suddenly changed. Now she claims that over the past few months, Callie has been complaining of stomach pain and was vomiting roughly twice a month. Of course, she wasn't taken to a doctor for any type of evaluation. They know I don't really... I don't really try. I know, you know, was she poisoning the child? Maybe. Maybe. I can get food stuff from all around the world. You need to make beef wellington. Yeah, that would be fun. Beef Wellington? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, my babies. She's such a good baby girl. She, she's a good baby. <laughs> no, I think I I think she was poisoning the little girl. Yeah. She was complaining of stomach pain and, and puking twice a week. She was probably just doing it slowly. Possibly. This woman here's got Munchausen's by proxy. But she's a stepmother. Yeah, but she can still do that. Yeah.
make beef wellington on stream yes the fryer videos yeah the deep fryer is so cool it's so easy to make a good meal with a deep fryer air fryer the cat likes your scent that's why they're always around you that's probably it the baby girl they love adjacents. It's my baby. Tyler takes us to the month of April, just a few weeks before police were dispatched to Joe's storage unit, and gives his account of Callie's recent health issues. You know, she looked up a lot of stuff on the line. And she said, you know, I'm a family doctor, you know, I, I take care of my family and stay home long, you know, that's what I do. You know, I can figure it out, right? So, how are, how are you disconnecting yourself? How are you disconnecting you disconnect yourself from Can I just let everybody else deal with her? I'm just like, okay. And I just feel tired. Mm -hmm. What do you mean disconnect? Don't you think that's... Maybe it's your constant drug use, why you feel so tired all the time. I don't know. Taking coke, which is a upper, and and then it like wearing off. It it can't be good for your uh, tiredness. Can you react to the video? I want you to. Oh Lord. I will just send it in my DMs. I don't know if Munchausen or if she's trying to poison her to death with no evidence at the end, so no trace. Are you going to do cooking streams now? Probably yes. I'm pretty sure yeah. Whatever. Why not? It'll be fun. It's part of her health. Not doing so good. Because I'm telling me to be the reason for her health. I guess so. The detectives are now establishing and getting on record Avriana's knowledge that Callie had potentially developed an illness recently. And Avriana did nothing to help her. And obviously, there was no home remedy that could save Callie. The detectives apply more pressure as they confront Avriana. They've grown tired of going around in circles with her. So, an important question, too, like we've asked and we'll ask, you know, I'm going to ask you, we're going to ask you, where is your daughter? I don't know. Honestly. Here's the thing. You told us, you know, earlier, <laughs> Tyler took her. <laughs> Drag not. You guys better be doing cooking videos because <laughs> I'm going to be reviewing them and using the super chat money to, <laughs> to fund my next cruise with Mrs. Drag. All right, Drag. Understandable. No, I know that's why they brought, bought that stuff. They want to know how to cook. Where do you DM me? Um, can you put my... Yeah, thank you. Wait, He'll put it in the chat. For what? Where? What? Um, my Instagram. Oh shit! One minute, I'll do it real quick. Weird. Like I go to your page and then it's like. Wait, wait, wait! I'll page. do it real quick. I'll do it real quick. I'll do it real quick. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Yeah. I'm good with this stuff. You can contact me here. 
No joke, I got nutritional yeast because of you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. I have to react to a video. All right. I'll do that tomorrow. And carry gold. Yes. Carry gold. I gotta. Th I gotta. I need to find my notepad. Let's go. I have my pen, but I need to find my notepad. And I need to write down like recipes and stuff. Okay. Yep. Cool. Where it is, people. Okay. We know that's not the case. Is Carrie Gold Butter worth it? Completely. 100% mm -hmm. it's worth it. Everyone who has tried Carrie Gold had said thank you for telling me about this. I didn't know butter could taste this way. Mm -hmm. So, yes. That's all I use is Carrie Gold. Ever since my husband and I did the Bulletproof Coffee every mo morning at one time. Yep. Oh man, now I need to get it in the grocery shop and yeah, just try it first with like some toast. You won't regret it. Definitely. Or or even what's even best is Italian bread. You don't toast it and you just put butter on it. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you won't regret it. <laughs> it's almost like cheese. It is. It's really good. It's so creamy. I know. We love some carry gold. Yeah. Watermelon. Do you like carry gold? She loves cream. You love cream. She loves cream. You're cream girls. Yeah. You're cream girls. She's a pretty cream girl. She's like, oh, I love my cream. Mm -hmm. It's so delicious. Uh, she's a good dog. What we're saying is that we know that you and Tyler both took her over to California. So that's why I'm asking. You come back here without your daughter. Wow, they even looked up the CCTV footage. Uh, yeah. Why don't you come back with your daughter? You come back with You come back with but you don't come back with her? Why? We see the detectives utilize us. Wow, this woman's really fucking stupid. She never thought of an excuse to give. I guess not. Like, at least most people think of an excuse. She's, she's just completely silent. Mm -hmm. You didn't even think it up, did you? Stacia says, love to watermelons and gavins. Yeah. Watermelons. You're getting loves. You're getting loves, girls. Yeah. You're getting loves. Yes. Yes, I loves. Oh. Oh. We get the chins. Oh, you feel good. Yes. She's a good girl. She is. She's so pretty. I know. She loves that blanket. She does. Step of the read technique known as positive confrontation here. When they confront a Rihanna oh, with the fact that they you. know Callie didn't come back Jesus from California, bless you too. she averts her eyes and is silent. If she truly had nothing to do with Callie's disappearance, she likely would have adamantly denied it well, instead she froze of sitting up. in silence. As Avriana appears to be contemplating something, perhaps a confession, she poses the next question. Did I talk to Tyler? Yes. Yes. And my concern with Tyler would be if he is saying 
something that is putting it on, on you, that's my concern. So I don't want to get that what you're doing. I want to get your version and your side independently. The detectives finally make it known that her act isn't working. And like Avriana, they're also privy to some horrendous information. So what do you guys know? We know about the bags. We know about the barrel. We know about the storage unit. We know about the storage unit. We know about your trip. Okay. There's no going back at this point. It's out in the open now. Hi, Brad and Cowboy. Man, she's acting. Yes, make make her think he's putting it all on her, so she tells the truth or starts making up a story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Catch this woman. Like when he's when she goes to her husband, she's always like, "He said what? Huh?" And and she's like getting more viciouser every time. Yeah. See, they see the narc in her. Yeah. They see the narc in her. Mm. I don't like this woman at all. It's raining in Ontario? Not snowing? What is going on? It's 60 degrees here today. I know. It's 60. That's wild. Yep, it's building. She's not going to be able to t take much more or she just wants to sleep. That might be it. I'm crazy. I am so fucked. The idea of revealing what happened to Callie seems to bring up real emotion. But it may just be that Avriana is only okay. concerned for herself and is aware that she's likely yeah. going to jail after this interview. The latter is the more likely explanation given her demeanor up to this point. It's also likely that she's thinking of her two biological children, as she knows she's at risk of not being able to see them again. Whatever the explanation may be, we'll finally hear two accounts of the recent events surrounding the death of little Callie. Unspeakable details will be brought to light, but the lack of consensus between the stories will leave you reeling, wondering where the horrific truth actually lies. Really? Please be forewarned. The details you're about to hear are quite disturbing. That's gotta be really bad then. Oh no. Well, you got a trigger warning. What did that stupid bitch do? Oh, these parents are despicable. Oh. Oh, yeah, forgot she has a child and didn't hear she has two. Yeah! Those children are in foster care now. No, she has no empathy. I, ugh. <clears throat> Women like her. Tyler continues listing off the chores he did upon arriving home, including cleaning up after and walking the dog. Who was doing CPR? 
Why didn't you call 911? It's always the question. When they teach you to do CPR, the first thing you should be doing is have someone call 911. It's like the first thing. It's like call 911 and then issue CPR. Mm -hmm. Help someone call 911. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're right, Autumn. I don't know. They're actually ride them, cowboy. You don't have to replay it, actually. They're actually getting into what exactly she did because we don't know what she did. Actually. Yeah, get very bad. Yeah, all we've seen is her get rare, wore down. as Tyler describes it. Amongst his attempts to administer CPR, the dog's panicked barking, and the other two children crying out for their parents behind the closed door of a bedroom. I can try CPR, you know. I told her it's not working now. We are calling the ambulance. Yeah, for so long, but you know, it's already. Um, you're not going to call the ambulance, you know. I can't go to prison, you know. Oh, you're worried about going to prison? Your child is dying. They could revive her. Like, you should have called the police, the ambulance when it started. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That's the first thing you do is call 911 and then administer frickin' CPR. Like, that's proper CPR training. So sick of people reporting. People need to stop reporting to me over what other people do. I don't care. Thank you. That's why I banned a certain person, because I said this several times and I'm really tired of that person. Ugh. Tyler then claimed that he attempted to leave the apartment to seek help from a neighbor. But Avriana blocked the door and prevented him from leaving. My heart is beating out of my chest, you know. And I'm just talking, you know, please breathe, you know. Please breathe, you know. Because she's not breathing, it's not working, she's not responding. She's not talking, you know. Her eyes are open, but she's not blinking, you know. I don't know how much time has, you know. Between that and the. When I stopped, it was an hour and a half, it was three hours, I don't know. It was too late. 
the other children at this point. Point. These two are why I sometimes believe parent a parent should be governed. That that might be true. That sometimes. might be true, man. Yeah. toddler alone you know especially a toddler toddlers get into everything I would think so. and a baby can technically smother themselves I never left my babies alone I only started left them alone when I knew they were responsible enough to be left alone. Yeah. God. Yes, yes, ma'am. I've been searching for a Christmas card with $150 my toddler took and put somewhere. Probably the garbage for two days. Oh my god, Autumn, I am so sorry. Holy shit. Oh. See, that's why you never leave a toddler alone. It could be so quick, like it just a simple like turn of the back and they're into something. A toddler will keep you moving. Oh, I'm so sorry, Autumn. You'll laugh about it in a few years. <laughs> you know, you little shit, you know, when you were two years old, you took a, you took a gift card worth $150 and threw it away. Just gone. I swore I hit it well. <laughs> yeah, I hope you find it. It's so adorably tragic. I hope you find the card. I bet the baby put it somewhere silly and you'll get a laugh when you find it. Yeah, exactly. Probably. 
<laughs> That's a good point. She has a story to tell him when he gets older. Yup. <laughs> My best friend's kid once threw away her phone. <gasps> oh, babies. They like to hear the sound of the knocking. Dun, 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 dun. All you got was a gift card to Lawn House Horn Steakhouse. That's a good gift. Yeah, they that they got good food, man. Yeah, man. Lawn Horn Steakhouse is good. We know you love your steak, bro. Yeah. Yeah, firecracker shrimp they got. Especially when children learn they can flush things down the toilet. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Mighty. <laughs> Look, marbles. I remember the one time in the habitat, Zach took the, his Batman. He had a Batman figure, and he just put it in the sink, and he let the sink run, and it was it almost flooded the whole apartment. I, <laughs> uh, you can't do that again, okay? Don't do that again. Uh, that could have been real bad. I know, oh, right? Oh my god, that could have been real bad. $60,000 worth of damage. <laughs> You'll have a good story to remind them. Exactly. Exactly. Let's just say Zachary kind of has been somewhat of a financial menace for Jason in a way. <laughs> word, I just let it go. Okay, I'm not. Just let it go. It's it's okay. Just let it go. The sixteen thousand dollars. Let it go. Oh my God. Let it go. Yeah. All right. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Just kid shit. Hey, there's nothing on your Amazon. Yeah, list. Pe they people it bought got it bought all. out. Yeah. I should probably take that down, unpin it. Yeah, for now. How do I unpin this? Unpin right at the top. this message. There, there we go. go. For now. And we'll we'll get more stuff on it. Yeah. Did Zach use his debit card? Sixteen thousand yeah, dollars worth not... for an internet game. I really don't wanna think about that. Did I see your DM? No, I didn't. One minute. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, that happened. That's what you want me to do? All right. And it was non-refundable. Do you get that? I called the car company and said this was not authorized. And they said, too bad. It's, it's non-refundable because it was all in-game purchases. So I just have like 15 grand of debt. No, they didn't refund it. They refused to. So it's just out there. I ain't never paying that. Whatever. Unless I get rich, I ain't never paying that. Yeah, dude. I, I, I'll, I'll totally review it. <laughs> I'll just review it beforehand. I gotta, I gotta look at some parts, see if I have to cut out some things. Just make sure it's internet safe. You know? That was a hell of a time. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, though. I thought that was lost. Thank you. No, that isn't how it works with, with like, in-game purchases, Celeste. You could just buy and buy and buy and buy. It was crazy. So, cheering child rearing is fun. When I was potty training my daughter, she decided to poop outside. I ran to clean it up, but my daughter scooped it and ate it in a matter of seconds. Ah! Dogs are so gross. Uh, she, even watermelon was like, fuck that shit. Watermelon. She's like, that's gross. It's like, fuck dogs. I'm gone. <laughs> Did you hear her complain? <laughs> Man. 
Man. That pissed her off. Yeah, that pissed Watermelon off. <laughs> she was not into that shit. It's like, I'm going over here. <laughs> yeah, that's what she well, said. Watermelon says, dogs drool, cats rule. That's pretty much, man. She did do that. It's the catitude. <laughs> The dog tried to eat diapers? Ew. Oh, my God. That's rough. Oh, dogs are gross. They can be. They can be really gross. <sighs> I'm just always going to be cat, uh, uh, cut out to be a cat person. That's just it. Well, I was a dog person. I'm both. I just like both. And yeah. I like them both. Thank God we don't have any infants. I, I would hate to see a diaper being eaten by a dog. Oh I would vom. That's gross. I would vom, and I could never look at the dog the same. Oh. Uh, I love both cats and dogs. I'm not too picky. <laughs> yeah, I like both. <clears throat> and yes, even the attempt, blah. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> of tampering with evidence by disposing of the items in a dumpster. The horror continued in the days following Callie's death. Tyler asserts that the day after Callie died, Avriana had devised a plan to cover it all up. And as you're about to hear, it's absolutely diabolical. And she wants to move to California, and she wants to... She wants to... She wants to buy... buy. Under your bridge, near... Uh, Why didn't you call the police? Oh my god, you were so worried about your own self. I don't know, Autumn. Especially it was his own child. Who wouldn't call 911 for them? Yeah, exactly. Man. It's in his behavior, but his claim about how he didn't feel that he or his sons were safe doesn't fit with going along with Avriana's plan to get rid of the child's remains. If you found that plan disturbing, you'll be appalled at Avriana's ideas that came next. And then she said, matter of fact, I'm just, I should just put the bag in the, in the Sacramento River, you know, leave it on the train track, you know, and then she said, no, because. Oh, my God. How is this man even, like, I don't, I don't believe what he's saying. Like, how could he even, like, listen to this woman talk about his daughter like this? Yeah, he even helped her put her in the bag. This is crazy. Even if she gets run over by trains, they can still identify her. You know, you know she said, no, oh, I'm just going to burn her body, you know. The thought that Avriana allegedly concocted such barbaric ways to dispose of Callie's body is beyond.
beyond comprehension. She even devised a morbid plan to ensure Tyler wouldn't abandon her or turn her in during the interim between Callie's death and her body being left at the storage unit. Oh my god, that's how she's talking about his daughter. Call the police, dude! This is fucking insane. They wanted the, the, her body to get hit by a train and just liquefy or something? Like, what the fuck? Pulverize the corpse? This was your child. Holy sh Jesus. Crushed. I, yeah, I guess so. What the fuck, man? Wow. That's messed up shit. I will, Patrick. We're going to do that tonight after I get off this. <laughs> you know, so that if you try anything, I'm going to be able to call the police and tell them that you have a body in your trunk. Go back in the trunk and the trunk back. And then you keep a body and you go to work. You tell them you got it. That's her. I'm guessing that's her. We're going to have leverage on you. But not call the police. You're going to have to get a complete an ample opportunity to do so, is that correct? That's correct? Okay. Well, she stays at home and is keeping her kids hostage. Is that how you're looking at it? Right? Callie's body remained in Tyler's vehicle for more than two weeks. Apparently, Avriana had poured carpet deodorizer over the receptacles that held her tiny body. She told you why she did not. So that it wouldn't smell. Okay. Did that work? The sickening situation was taking its toll on Tyler. At least, that's his claim. She told everybody really liked him. Yeah, and she said, no, you're not. You're going to get a beer. So that I can get, so that you can get access. Right, Stacy. The fact that they talk about this innocent soul like it's just an object is gross. Putting the child in the trunk like used luggage. Yeah, I, I can't. Insane. Like how <laughs> how how can you say you love your child and do that? No way, no. Like fuck this dude. He let all this stuff happen. You can get acid. That's the next thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tyler followed through and got the bin. He explains what came next. in a storage facility, Autumn, because people were smelling something. They put her in a blue barrel in a storage facility and left her there. I, I just had a strong belief that he would. Tyler's story continues along the same illogical path it's been traveling down. The detective asks why Tyler went back to Sacramento on the day after Callie's remains were located in Joe's unit. Okay, but what's your, what's your reasoning for going down there on the day you got in custody? Okay, wait. Okay, now, I had a strong feeling that he would look that night 
right for the next day because of the great problems that I'm leaving, right? The suspicions I'm raising, his daughter's worried, right? She's in there, so she's wondering what the hell's going on. So I knew that he would look. I just knew he would look. So you were counting on being caught that day? Yeah. Tyler portrays himself to be a victim of the situation, but it's clear that he was deeply involved. After all, starvation doesn't occur overnight. In fact, the CPS investigation confirms that there were concerns about Callie having been malnourished years before she died. Evidence is clearly suggesting that this was no accident or illness, but rather a calculated plan. In addition to information detectives obtained from the CPS report and the interrogations, two compelling accounts from witnesses emerged. Both revealed the horrifying true story about what actually happened to It's awful seeing your babies hungry. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so happy the boys are safe now. Mm -hmm. Where they are, they can eat and have full bellies. No, I don't care if I have to work till the day I die. I will make sure those boys eat for the rest of their life. How would I get rid of a body? I wouldn't. Period. I'm not like that. Oh, they're so good and so happy. I love them so much. I'm just happy they're living their life the way they want to right now. Instead of being like so... Callie. <sighs> worried about shit. Yeah, worried about shit. Yeah. yeah. Worried about shit. Yeah. Behind the closed doors of Avriana and Tyler's apartment. It all began... Dan when Jayla, an old friend of Avriana's, traveled to Reno for a visit in early December of 2017. So every now and then we get with Jayla and start to drink and they call me in the middle of the night, not in the middle of the night, like 11 p.m., 12 maybe, to come pick them up, take them back home. Jayla sleeps in the living room and then get around and be her in the bedroom. Hey babe, can you give me the uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'll just go Except Tyler yeah. left a few important elements out of his story. Some sponges. Jayla Donny asked um investigators that she saw your boys in the apartment, but she never saw okay. her was yeah. in her room. Her. You can you just search for items and then you scroll down and you see everything. Tyler is likely okay, rubbing his good. foot in an attempt to release nervous energy. He's feeling uncomfortable about discussing where Callie supposedly was during this visit. Where was the dog at? The dog was in the cage in the bathroom. Did you ever see the dog? Because uh, we just got it and he was not very friendly at that time. However, it just so happens that Avriana had described the family dog quite differently. Do you have a guess? Tyler's claims that they kept their dog caged within the bathroom and that it was never seen or heard by a house guest is implausible. The detective digs deeper into the issue of Callie's whereabouts <laughs> during Jayla's visit. For the time that you were at the apartment, Tyler, did you ever like ever room? It was roughly one month after Callie's body was found that Jayla spoke with the detective. Her story was chilling. Jayla stayed at the apartment for only one night, but it was more than ample time to observe that things were terribly wrong. Of the apartment's two bathrooms, she was only permitted to enter the one located in the master bedroom. 
The other bathroom was strictly off limits, as Tyler and Avriana were housing their vicious dog Maverick within the confines of its walls. At least, that's the excuse Tyler and Avriana had concocted, according to Jayla. It's interesting to know that this completely conflicts with Avriana's previous statement, that Maverick is the sweetest little boy and great with children. Jayla never saw the dog, nor heard noises from him while there. There you go. She also never saw Callie, but did see Tyler and Avriana's little boys, whom Avriana doted on. Jayla attested to the fact that Avriana harbored hatred toward Leoni due to the pure and simple fact that she had given birth to Callie. Tyler, having gained custody of Callie, wasn't enough. In her efforts to deprive Leoni of merely watching her little girl grow up from a distance, Avriana forbade any posting of pictures and videos of Callie on social media. This behavior Jayla describes is definitely consistent with the idea that perpetrators of domestic violence often show very jealous and possessive behaviors, evidenced by her feelings toward Leoni. During Jayla's short visit, the two also met up with Tyrese, an acquaintance who had attended high school with both women. The detective caught up with them several months later in January of 2019. And boy, did he have a scandalous story to tell. He told officers that he and Avriana allegedly engaged in an affair from December of 2017 through February of 2018. Tyrese estimated that they had secretly met more than 20 times at Avriana and Tyler's apartment. Wow. Part of his story mirrored Jayla's. He, too, was forbidden from entering the main bathroom. Avriana's excuse at this time was that it was dirty and messy. Unlike many of her other statements, this particular one held some truth. Based on the condition of the apartment when the detectives arrived to speak with Avriana, Tyree stated that he witnessed the two little boys in the apartment during his visits. However, he never saw so much as a trace of Callie. According to Avriana, she was at Grandma's house. Of course, we know this to be a lie. Evidently, Tyrese had been following the... What? ...media's reporting on the case. At one point during his interview, Tyrese broke down, stating, She did that. That is so f wrong. The did that for so f long. She would not let me in that f room. With these two witness accounts in mind, there is a strong possibility that Avriana and Tyler kept Callie imprisoned within the main bathroom. Maybe oh they sedated her with medication so she wouldn't cry and couldn't be heard by Jayla or Tyrese. It's also a possibility that Callie was so sick due to being chronically malnourished that she wasn't physically able to yell or cry. And Avriana and Tyler didn't want anyone to bear witness to her alarming physical condition. In addition to neglect, Callie's subjection to cruel, relentless abuse was, sadly, the only life she ever knew. Shortly after Callie's death, Tyler reveals that he and Avriana used cocaine, during which he alleged Avriana revealed her deepest, darkest secrets, and the truth about Callie's death. Why would you do that? Extremely damaging to a child. Callie, like
likely felt very isolated, as if she was an outsider. Mm-hmm. I see that, definitely. responsible for what happened yet the detective mm -hmm. shows Tyler a sequence of photos that will make it even more difficult for Tyler to plead ignorance to the horrors that were occurring inside the home Depression, dude. And that's drugs, too. That's so sad, dude. That, like, really seriously, like, gets you depressed just looking at that stuff. It really does. Like, I feel so bad over that. <sighs> what are you going to do? Yeah, they both knew she was dying in that room, and they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing, and it's infuriating. Like, how could you do that to a baby? Like, how could you severely do that to a baby? Babies are everything. You know what? I don't think I'll ever get people. I don't think I'll ever get people. How come someone allows their children to live in filth like that? Depression? Drugs? Yeah. Mental illness? They needed help. If you were a criminal investigator, psychologist person, how would you approach this guy about it? Trying to help them. That's how. There are photos 
photos of Callie's clothing and few belongings that have been left in the bathtub. Can you tell me about this little girl? She put him in there to leave her story. I don't know. Why was her clothes in the bathroom? Did they leave her in the bathroom? No, my kids didn't starve. It was just more like they weren't eating as much as they should be for their age. You know what I mean? Because of the money. Yeah, money was hard back in that time. I don't ever want them to go through that again. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm just going to continue to work, 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 work for everything I do. She was caged like a dog. Oh my God. I can get, I, I get that. Teen, teenagers can eat a lot while growing. Yeah, and I want them to eat as much as they can. <laughs> you over here working like... Rihanna, that's right. If, if pimping myself out makes me money, then I'll pimp myself out for money. That easy. I want my kids. Mama is coming home. It's very possible that the crate and food in the bathroom were for Callie and not the dog, who seems to be the scapegoat for some of the compelling evidence. Even the existence of a dog still isn't entirely clear. The detective asked... I don't know. That may be human poop from the little girl trying to get attention. <sighs> my God, my baby. I know. The baby... No one's buying? You, you sure? Anyway. Just seems like it hit a hard point. You related, my bad, if not true. Nah. 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 Tyler, the direct question he's been building up I bet up they to. were eating, though. is finally confirmed and it's consistent with information Jayla also provided Avriana harbored a pure hatred for little Callie it had manifested from the unwarranted contempt she'd always harbored toward Leoni and it was revealed in the abuse she inflicted on her daughter as the interview was nearing a close the detective confronts Ty so you didn't like the ex so you took it out on the little girl Fuck that bitch, man. Give her the death penalty. She don't deserve to live. No. And she don't deserve to... She don't... She doesn't deserve to even grieve that child. That baby, I think you sympathize. Yeah. I do. Exactly, Stacia. I were on what was arguably the most disturbing aspect of Callie's condition when her body was discovered. As you can recall, the responding officers at the scene of the storage facility referred to Callie as an infant at times. Yo, buddy. 
Okay. That's how small she was. They thought she was an infant. Bullshit. Very young, like, like, months. We're talking, so, we're talking six months ish. Oh less. my god, they don't even know. Oh yeah, wearing a, like, looks like jammies or something like that. Horrifying. Oh, so she wasn't a skeleton. Was a mere 16 pounds. You remember when I told you that William was almost a 10 pound baby? That's six pounds more. That was a toddler, dudes. That was a toddler. These people are disgusting. According to the medical examiner, clearly she was the size of an infant and just a few months shy of her sixth birthday. She died an excruciating death of starvation that was a long, drawn-out process. It's likely the misery spanned three agonizing years. With this revelation, Avriana's interview isn't ending in the way she'd hoped, as you'll see. This is the deal. There's still an ongoing investigation, all right? We as detectives have to do our due diligence for the sake of this entire case. For the sake of, okay? There's still some things that we need to wait on for the autopsy and things of that nature. But at this moment in time, right now, we're going to go ahead and book you out of county jail, okay? For child neglect. For child neglect. Okay? That's going to be your charge. Alright? Good. cage and starved her to death. Yeah. Oh. It's scary to think she's only crying for her punishment. No remorse on a crime. No. I don't deserve this. Ugh. Avriana is just now realizing that she will face punishment for what she has done. Oh, but what did I do to deserve it? What did I do, but everything that you asked me to? You're Not a bitch. once in all the hours of interrogation did Avriana show this kind of remorse for Callie. This emotion is only for herself. 
In the end, there was a small semblance of justice for the little girl whose life had only consisted of suffering. Yeah. Tyler eventually gave up on his claims of ignorance and reverted back to his original story. He pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 10 years. Avriana Enoch, formerly Anderson, prior to the couple's divorce in August of 2019, had a different outcome. She stood trial in late July of 2021, after a judge rejected her proposed plea agreement. On August 5th, she was convicted of first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole. Ah, uh, I hope she doesn't years. get it. Yeah. That woman should suffer for eternity what she did to that baby. Yeah, horrible. <sighs> Those babies. Those babies. I gotta go to the bathroom. Can you can you yeah. hold the chat? Yeah. I'm sorry guys. I don't think I peed through this whole street. Yeah, I don't think you did either. <clears throat> That's impressive. Yeah, I know. He had a Red Bull on top of him. <sighs> yeah, so that was a horrific story. What's up? We might be going after this. I'm not sure. It is a very sad story. And, and you know, I made my mistake, you know, but I have definitely learned. I learned from my mistake that you don't do violence to children ever, you know. <laughs> You're hilarious, Drag. No, I try to be a good boy, Drag. You know, stay away from that shit. <coughs> this was a really, it was a, this was a rough one to watch. Very, very low, it like low vibrations shit. <laughs> Yeah, it, absolutely. That's that's right, Stacy. Yeah. I don't know. That's up to the girl. I don't know. Are we are we still are we keeping going? I don't know. Do you want to? I don't care. It's up to you. It's your stream. If you want to, I can. I, it's, I guess it's up to the audience at that point. Oh, should I keep going? Bro. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. <sighs> 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 yeah, go for the gold. Dun 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 because I figured this would be a good palate cleanser. Kind of calm down those emotions. And that's can oatmeal be used as a glue? Frankly, I don't know. I've never seen this. And I'm pretty sure it works to have these in the way I remember. Like, you would think oatmeal would be good as a glue. I mean, it sticks to your bowl pretty good. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's another glue video. So I've used a lot of different things as glue. I've used co Come on. 
Oh my god. I've glue. I've used different candies as glue. Can you stop messing up for a minute? I've used Jolly Ranchers as glue. And I feel like there's something else I'm missing. I feel like I'm trying to use something else as glue. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to try to use oatmeal as glue. Anyone that eats oatmeal knows that whenever, while you're eating oatmeal, say if you don't finish all of it and you just leave it in the bowl and then it sits there for a few hours, mm -hmm. it dries super hard like concrete. And then you have to get like a knife and try to like basically chip it out of the bowl so that you can wash the bowl. So I feel like oatmeal could make a very good glue. So we're going to put it through all of the standard tests. We got the wood blocks, we got the bricks, and then we have the two by fours. Just like all the other videos, the bricks and the two by fours, I'll glue them together, or I'll put oatmeal between them and push them together end to end, and then I'll put them on some cinder blocks and put weights in the middle until okay. they break. And then for the blocks, I'll put the oatmeal in the middle, push these together, and then we'll hook the crane scale up and we'll pull them apart and see how much they hold. So let's make some oatmeal. Yay. These packets out. We need a bowl. And if you didn't see, this is the apples and cinnamon oatmeal, just because that's what I had. To my audience, to the chat, what's your favorite oatmeal flavor? Mm. I think mine is the old-fashioned strawberries and cream. Mm. What's your favorite oatmeal mm. flavor? I'd like to know. Mm. Do 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 Maple brown sugar. Yeah, someone said brown sugar or maple, yeah. That's my favorite. Maple brown sugar, peaches and cream. We got another maple brown sugar. Two people hate oatmeal, I see. <laughs> I love the oatmeals. And I know that this stuff dries like concrete. So we'll put one packet in here. And then we need two thirds cup of water. I feel like this is kind of turning into a cooking show. Well, I think right. most people know how to make fucking oatmeal. Which got put in the And just like that, two minutes later, we have a piping hot oatmeal. I don't know if this is going to be enough. I might have to do another batch. Cool. I'll start putting this on our blocks. All right. I wonder if it's going to work. Yeah. Man, I can taste that right now. Oh, I love oatmeal. Yes, his name is Tyler Tube. Yes, he is the same guy who had the the freeze dried candy. I love how we're watching oatmeal being put on a wooden block with you. It's better than the drama. Mm. <laughs> he puts it on bricks too. Ah! Oh, ew. Now you're wondering what else could be glue? So that should be all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... It looks like a science experiment a kid could would do at home. That would be a good science experiment you could do with your kid at home, actually. Be, because it'd be like, can you make oatmeal? Can you make glue out of oatmeal? Let's go see. You know? But you know the secret and he doesn't. So it'd be like, a, wow! Thank you, Autumn, for the hundred bits. These dry for a full seven days, and we'll come back and we'll put them through all the tests. All right, guys, while we're waiting for that oatmeal to dry, I'm going to give you a short product review. 
I'm going to be reviewing this pillow. As you can see, this is a wedge pillow. Yeah. This pillow is advertised on Amazon as a soft memory foam pillow. So, I needed a pillow. I wanted a memory foam pillow. This came up. This is what I bought. This pillow is not a soft memory foam pillow. As you can tell, it's hard. This pillow is hard. This is not something you want to sleep on. You would be better off sleeping on a stack of two by fours than you would be sleeping on this pillow. If someone broke into your house in the middle of the night, you can probably. You know, I'm getting awfully suspicious what he's going to do with that pillow and that mannequin. He did make the mannequin stare at him. It's like, dude, I know what you're about to do. You even got me here naked. You couldn't even put some clothes on me, you son of a bitch. He's about to do something incredibly awful to this mannequin. I can tell. We're going to find out. We killed him with this pillow. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. <laughs> you want to sleep on. I give this pillow 0 out of 10. <laughs> Alright, so it's been 7 days since we put the oatmeal in our, our wood blocks. So now the only thing left to do is to test them. So the first thing we're going to be testing is these wood blocks, <laughs> these one by one squares. Let's get the crane scale and the weight set up and start testing them. But before that, I want you to leave a comment down below. How much weight do you think these blocks are going to hold? 30 pounds. Now let's get started. Alright, we have our blocks right here. Let's see how much they can hold. It's 30 pounds. I say 30 pounds. Wait, wait, wait. What do you, how much do you think oatmeal, how many pounds that oatmeal will have? I say 30 pounds. 10. 10? Yeah. You say 10 pounds. Yeah. We got anything higher? Anyone willing to do higher than 30 pounds? Which one? 45, Celeste? 50? 5. Ah, 617 said 5 pounds. Yeah. 12 pounds. Dragnaut says 12. Is it attached to a brick? No, it's attached to wood pieces. We'll, we'll find out. Alright, now let's see how much they can hold. Well, that was little. Seventy pounds? That's no! That's nuts. For oatmeal? Oatmeal. That's insane. Can stick to something. Has a seventy. Wow! That's crazy. Wow! Seventy pounds. That's impressive. You, yeah, oatmeal can be glue. Yeah. Can be a pretty decent glue. We were all off. Yeah. All right, let's see the other pieces. All right, now we're moving on to testing our two by fours. And if you've been around here, you know how this works. In case you don't frequent the channel, how this test works is I just take these two by fours, put them right here between these two center blocks. I'll put another two by four in the middle just to keep all of the force on the center. And then we're just gonna add weights on top of it. So, first we'll do five pounds. Okay. All right. It's right on the center. 20 pounds? No! Alright, 
So we'll take some of these off. We'll get 225s. 225. 225s on here. Okay. Oh, I think I heard a crack. Oh, you heard a crack? Oh, shit. Oh, it's gone. Yep. 50, 55. That's when it broke. 55. Well, sadly, there's not going to be the third experiment with the bricks because, as you can see, the bricks have fallen apart. So, they weren't going to hold much well, weight. Well, I would think so anyway because bricks are, like, more porous. Yeah. So, it has more, like, weak points to it. But that's insane that it can take that much weight, though. Yeah. It's just fucking oatmeal. Anyway, because they were just sitting like this on the table, and I just picked them up just to try to move them to another table, and they just completely fell apart. So even if I did get to test them, they probably would have only held, like, two, three, four pounds probably. So kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So, as far as our original question, can oatmeal be used as a glue? Kinda. It, it definitely did more than I expected. Lifting uh, 70 pounds with the little wood blocks and 50 to 55 pounds on the 2x4s, that was definitely a lot more than I expected. <laughs> Somewhere, I had higher hopes for it just because I know that whenever you eat it and you leave it in a bowl and it dries, it's, it dries so hard. Yeah. So, I figured that it would, it would hold a little bit more. But I'm also not too surprised because it's oatmeal. It's, it's, it's not a glue. I had fun making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Go ahead and leave a comment down below with what you want to see me test. Well, it. now we know that oatmeal can be used as a glue. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now I got to find something. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Maybe R look at some RCS. See what they've done. Yeah, man. Death Door, the soup man who dissolved 500 victims from cartels. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a month. Throughout his decade with two cartels, El Pozolero, or the soup man, dissolved up to a thousand bodies in vats of acid. Breaking bad is nothing compared to real life. When he was finally arrested, a horrible stench filled his room. He told the police officers he was making seafood soup. Yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus. That was seafood soup. Really? So abstain from eating any that kind of soup cool. as you watch this outrageous video filled into the story it. of Santiago Meza, a.k.a. Mm. El Pozolero. Movies often show the glamorous side of cartels, the money, power, and status that only the top of the pyramid gets to live in. But behind the scenes, few things are as dark, brutal, and downright gruesome as cartels disposing of their enemies' bodies. Santiago Meza Lopez had a modest background. He was a poor farmer's boy and liked animals. In fact, it was his love of animals that brought him to the cartels. What? Bad, and a desperate need for cash. Santiago started working with the Ariane Felix cartel in 1996. He tended to their horses and did their masonry work. It was honest work that simply paid better compared to anything he could do on his farm. But you know how cartels promise you endless riches for just a little bit of dirty work? That's always the hook. They can threaten or carry out a sketchy drug deal within months. You'll be rich. Sadly, Santiago fell into this trap. And before long, he was conducting narcotics deals for Ariana Felix. Ah, First, dude. he was their dealer. Then he was their drug office keeper. He was disciplined and dedicated, and Felix encouraged this by promoting him. As he surveilled the depots around Tijuana toward the end of the century, the Arellano cartel started a bloody war with the notorious Sinaloa cartel. Both cartels want to control over the same trafficking routes into the U.S., but there's nothing simple about cartel fights. Constant attacks, kidnappings, and assassinations were terrorizing Mexico. Dissolving them that way is much quicker than, than using something like lie in the ground. I guess so. So messed up. This is actually really good, like, uh, graphics and shit. <laughs> Watermelon. <laughs> 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 so 
such a drama queen. She's funny. No. Tell Rev that someone is praying for him. I see darkness that some can't see. I see the pain. It bubbles and he likes me. He holds it in. Love you guys. Love you too, Poppy. Thank you. We can take all the prayers. It's insane how many lives get taken away with stupid drug wars. I know. That's why we need to just make it like fully legal. So this stuff doesn't happen anymore. It's all, it's all above underground now. It's out of the closet. Thank you, Poppy. Yeah, it's also human trafficking, exactly. Oh, nice one. Four thousand people lost their lives during just a few short years. But what do you do with all the bodies if you're a cartel boss and you don't want the police on your tail? In a really creepy twist, the thousands of victims opened up a job opportunity for Santiago. In the late 1990s, the Ariano Felix brothers, Ramon and Benjamin, invited Santiago to a secluded spot. They asked him to do a little experiment with them. They handed him a leg of beef and asked him to toss the leg into a container. The vat was filled with caustic soda, also known as lye, mixed with water and some other chemicals. And they left ah. Santiago with the container and told him to watch over the beef while they took care of other business. A few hours later, Santiago would confirm their experiment worked out the way they had intended it to. The leg of beef was completely dissolved, only coloring the liquid inside to the container, a crimson red. It was gross, but it was nothing compared to what was about to happen. Six months later, the Ariano Felix brothers revealed to Santiago what the experiment was about. He was going to carry out their dirtiest work, dissolve their enemies into bats of lie. The brothers had asked for advice from foreign cartel members about disposing of corpses. They were in over their heads quite literally in war victims and simply dumping them in shady spots wasn't oh working. my god at least run the lookout for any cartel mistake so they could arrest the Tijuana cartel bosses at the end of the war now Ramon and Benjamin had Santiago dissolve his first human body several henchmen were watching if this worked this would be their future method for all their enemies Santiago undressed the body and stuffed it into a large drum filled with the same mixture as before except this time there were 200 liters of it the drums burner was lit up and the mixture started to froth santiago left it overnight to cook when he returned to the vat in the morning there was nobody inside just a red sludge and some tiny bone fragments Decor oh my god wow oh my god You know how cartels get rid of a lot of bodies. They just disappear. There you go. That's why. They have a method of dissolving bodies. Yeah, right? That's insane. That is insane. Just little bone fra fragments left. Ugh. Man, this world is scary. Yeah, it's man. like, it's like, no wonder I'm agoraphobic. Yeah, I can't handle it. I don't want to be here, dude. I can't handle it. Great in the bottom of the container. El Pozalero was born. Before you ask, no, Pozalero doesn't literally mean soup man. It comes from Pozole, a traditional Mexican soup made with corn and meat. I know. El Pozolero ruined the dish forever. After El Pozolero notified the Ariano Felix brothers of their successful experiment, they called in their truck driver. He took the container and drove it to a nearby canyon in the dead of night. He tossed the remains in there and carried the container back to the cartel headquarters. This would be the Tijuana cartel's preferred method of dealing with their bodies. And Santiago became their chief cleaner. El Pozolero was in charge of everything, buying oil containers, caustic soda, latex gloves, and gas masks. Everything about this job was simply horrifying, and El Pozolero seemed to be completely desensitized to it. Maybe he was even getting a kick out of it. Now he was working directly under drug lord Feodoro Garcia Cimental, a.k.a. El Teo. He would send El Pozolero 
He looks like a, a gem. <laughs> he looks like a nice gem. Of course. What? If Rev died, really? Okay. I don't care. He's fucking crazy. A text message with a location every time he had a new body that he needed to get rid of. El Pozolero would arrive at the specific location, but it wouldn't be a simple exchange. A cohort of cars would pull up, and he would be called to find out which car the body was in. Then, two henchmen would help Pozolero carry the body into his vehicle, and he would drive off to his lab. There, he would take care of the body. Sometimes, it would be several bodies. I don't think anyone's like gonna die. Dead, he would take the I think Rev's fine. To huge underground pits. By now, El Pozolero had his own great graveyard, and business was booming in the worst sense of the word. But as always, nothing lasts forever. El Teo was a ruthless, violent, and headstrong man. This caused several hiccups between him and the Ariano Felix brothers. In 2008, it all came to a boiling point. El Teo decided to switch sides and join the biggest rival cartel around, El Chapo and El Mayos, Sinaloa. And since El Pozolero was his man, he took him with him. This is how El Pozolero became the Sinaloa cartel's chief body disposer too. This is creepy on so many levels. He was dissolving the bodies of his former colleagues. But he didn't seem to care. El Pozolero made $600 what a week fuck? in his time and place. This was excellent money. He could afford almost anything he wanted. And he had achieved a disturbing kind of stardom in the cartel world. But his gruesome work stint... You feel less scared watching these with other in. people? Haha. Uh -huh. That's good, though. I'm glad you can watch this with other people and feel good about it. <laughs> Just for fun? Why would you ask anyone that question? That is insane. Like, I'm giving you a time out for that. Don't ask me stupid fucking weird questions like that. In less than a year. In January 2009, Mexican authorities tracked him down after an anonymous tip pointed them in his direction. When the officers barged in, he was stirring something, smelling horrible. He was you dead can drunk take it more better, Autumn. When the officers asked him about his concoction. He claimed it was seafood soup. You can only imagine what it really was. Oh. After his arrest, however, El Pozolero decided to confess. He told the detectives he had dissolved around 300 bodies, but it's believed the actual number is over a thousand. So the case made the headlines throughout Over Mexico. a thousand? El Pozolero was pictured as a macabre soup master who had done the cartoon. Trevor. Yeah. Trevor on GTA 5. With, with the cannibals in the mountain. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. Holy crap. That's nuts. That was a morbid question, but I don't think that meant any harm. But what a scary thought to entertain. Like, what the hell? Who fucking, like... Things like that. I didn't see it, so I don't Yeah, don't worry about it, baby. Okay. I love you. I love you, too. Jeez, man. I'm straight at you all tonight, man. I'm not feeling like Bill's bidding for I over a it. decade. No questions asked. El Pozoletto's wife commented to the media. He would say, I prefer my job that for my family to die of hunger. Was there really no alternative to the soup man job? With Santiago in prison, the police went on to discover his gruesome burial site called the chicken coop. 250 kilos or 500 pounds of bones and bone remains were extracted by 2017. The creepy catch was that the chicken coop really was used to raise chickens too. It was a little farm along the... Oh my God, the chickens would eat the human bones. Uh. Oh. Do I have a YouTube? No, I don't. I'm staying away from that place. Free highway to Tecate, 
and it worked as a perfect mask for the El Pozolero's horrible affairs. But only 70 of El Pozolero's many, many bodies were dissolved at the chicken coop. 16,500 liters of human matter have been extracted from all over Tijuana. Holy human shit. Human poured out from the containers in every empty lot and wooded area. Imagine all the remains that still haven't been found. All the victims that will forever remain nameless. Thanks to the cartel's gruesome disposal method. What's worse, El Pozolero taught others how to dissolve bodies. He even installed a drainage system during his last years on the job, making the process... What? Yeah, I'm not the gal. He is like Jeffrey Dahmer on steroids. Holy crap. Thousand bodies. Yeah, it does sound like the guy from American Horror Story Hotel. Is cleaner and easier for his disciples. He spoke about this with the investigators. It was the devil to move them. They weighed a lot. After everything was cleaned up, we stored the barrels. We also washed the drain with hot water because the remains stuck to the pipes. He spoke about it uh. like it was just another job, complaining about all the physical work. And when the officers asked him if he had any remorse, for what he did. He said, of course, he even told the cartel he didn't want to do the job anymore, but you can't really say no to cartel bosses. El Pozoleno also insisted that he never killed any of his victims and that he never dissolved the bodies of women and children. In 2012, he was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. During his trial, he said that he was not a dealer, a killer, or a monster. He was just a man. Only 10 years? That's it? Jesus. Wow. <sighs> okay. <coughs> what do you get for murdering one person? Like five days? I know, ten years! And doing his job for a cartel that wouldn't take no for an answer. In his last statement, he asked God for forgiveness and apologized to all his victims. Oh, families. fuck off. You're just doing that to get off. Of all the other remains. So the victims' families were not pleased with his apology. <laughs> they said it can't be genuine. He was not willing to help the police. Furthermore, Many of these families were outraged when El Pozolero was released from prison in April 2022. In their opinion, it doesn't matter that he did not kill his victims. He dissolved 1,000 bodies. His sentence should be much harsher than 10 years. Yeah? If we consider that El Pozolero worked for the cartel, he would probably die if he told the police about the burial sites. However, this is not an excuse for all the atrocities he committed under their instruction. He took the job in the first place. To this day, the Mexican police are still retrieving bone remains in the Tijuana area. It's hard to even imagine the scam. Of the cartel's wars, the victims, and El Pozoleto's body disposal industry. And who knows how many people are still doing what he did in 2009. Was El Pozoleto an evil criminal, insensitive yes. to pain and suffering? Or was he a simple person caught at the wrong place at the wrong time in a web of cartel manipulation and intimidation? And if so, could he have ever gotten out were it not for his arrest? Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment. Yeah, he's free to, like, come to America, pretty much. We need your uh, body-dissolving uh, expertise here. Right? I want to see this. What? I've been seeing this. It's laughing. When a killer doesn't realize he's being recorded. Okay. That seems really exciting. <laughs> I know it's another explorer with us, but and I want to do the other channels, too, but... I really want to see that video. No, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Okay. My biggest problem was the dog, and her dog laid there and watched as I killed her. I needed to make it seem like we were better friends than we actually were, so that they wouldn't question my behavior with her. I go up 
open the door, unhook her, pull her out, start dragging her to throw her over, and then cars start coming up. I see, like, headlights kind of. I try to get her over, and I can't put my leg up. Like, the weight from her body, like, made me fall, and my leg, like, went up. So now I'm limping, my leg's up, and there's three cars coming up. So I grab her body. Dude, I have superhuman strength, and I threw it in the car, and I can pick He's fucking bragging about this. Yeah. Well, I think that's the point of the video. He's bragging about this. Like, it's like, 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 in a funny event that happened to him. Fuck you, dude. You're not. Insane. Gavin, is this insane? Yeah, he thinks it is. It's not right. Is it, baby boy? No. It's not right. You shouldn't have. You're gonna get your Kit Kat food soon. Yeah. You're gonna get your Kit Kat food soon. Your gravy. You're gonna be so happy with your gravy. Uh -huh. And I go be so happy for the Gavin that he gets his gravy. Yeah. Because that's the most important thing ever is Gavin Kikat foods. His gravy. Yes. He's a good boy. Ah. Uh. You know, and her feet were up here and her foot was, her, her head was down there. And three cars go by. And I'm losing my shit. Because that easily could have been a cop. Yeah. And then, I mean, the police station is like right there. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel any different. I don't think about it. When a young man grew suspicious that his friend may be involved in a disturbing crime, he secretly recorded him, but he had no idea just how chilling the tapes he captured would turn out to be. So your life, you might as well make it one. <laughs> what, are you going to listen to a ass life? 19-year-old Sarah Stern, a budding artist from Neptune City, New Jersey, when she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Are you telling me you're going to do that to that beautiful young lady? She deserved better than this. <clears throat> God, people. Missing in December 2016. Sarah was well known in the tight knit community where she grew up. Her loved ones had been especially concerned about her after her mother, Carla Stern, died from cancer in 2013. Despite this tragedy, Sarah still had a love for art and graphic design. Oh Referring my God, to herself that's as an beautiful. artist and a reckless optimist in her Twitter bio. <laughs> she did One of her sketches shows Sigourney Weaver from the movie Alien. Bro. Sarah's real passion, though, was for YouTube. She didn't have a yeah. channel herself, but was an avid fan of Grace Helbig, Hannah Hart, and Memory Hart, known as the Holy Trinity, as well as Julian Solomita and Jenna Marbles. She would even travel long distances just to attend conferences with people who shared her interests and meet some of the YouTubers she liked. It's watercolor. It's so good. Oh, it's so fun. Yes. Yeah, sweet. Oh, Jenna Marbles. Look at that. Jenna Marbles is such a sweet lady. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> this is sad. I mean, look how genuine these hugs are. I love YouTubers. When you meet a YouTuber, they're so genuine. They really are. And I mean the bigger ones. In December ones. 2016, Sarah's father, Michael Stern, who she lived with, was away in Florida on vacation. The two exchanged a few text messages back and forth, 
and everything <laughs> seemed normal. On Thursday, December 1st, Sarah texted her father about when he was heading back home from his vacation, and he told her he would be heading back by Saturday morning, just a few days away. Take a moment to note the way that Sarah and her father talk to each other in these messages. There will be some accusations made in the following interrogations about the nature of their relationship, especially of late. Everything changed on the evening of... I mean, that's so sweet, all these texts. Oh, no. Why would you do that to someone's child? Oh. Lord Jesus, you need to come. Mm-hmm. December 2nd, when Sarah suddenly stopped responding to messages. Her last message was an upbeat response to some Disney. photos of Disneyland her father sent, saying, hey, Wow, the castle looks so pretty with the lights. But after that, she stopped replying. Have a good her night, Her father Poppy. continued texting her, each message growing increasingly worried and frantic. Over the next few days, Sarah's father continued trying to contact her to no avail. The last message he sent her just said hello on December 6th. By then, she'd been missing for four days. Her loved ones had become instantly worried, and on Friday, December 2nd, reported the fact that no one could get a hold of her to the police. Immediately, officers were out looking for her, and what they found was chilling. So Sarah's grandmother's car, which she drove on a regular basis, was found abandoned on a bridge on Route 35 between Neptune and Belmar in the early morning of the 3rd, with no sign of Sarah anywhere. The dash cam footage shows the moment an officer finds her empty car on the bridge. Ah, oh, the energy at that place. It's the same energy where the baby was. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. That same dark energy. Do, do people know what I'm talking about? Like, he knows what I'm talking about. I definitely feel it and see it, what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It's something you just gotta feel. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree. So you see it too. Eerie. Yeah. It's like there's spiritual markers left at like murder scenes and stuff. Yeah. It's true. Darkness, yeah. Oh, God, that poor girl. Because it still wasn't clear what had happened to Sarah, the police continued their investigation, heading to the home Sarah shared with her father. This body cam footage shows the officers searching for any clue as to where Sarah may be. The following police footage, interrogations, and crime scene photos have never been seen before. I'm, I'm hoping we don't have a jumper here. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll, you know, I'll give, we're going to go in now. Give me, give me a couple minutes. I'll give you a call back. We're going to go in there. Okay. We're going to make ourselves very well known yep. by yelling and screaming. We're back on walls. I believe we might be feeling possible carbon footprints. You can almost sense the heightened energy. It's also hard to, hard not to empathize with this when you know it's a tragic area. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Watch out for There's just a the heaviness. Like, it's just be weak. I don't know how to explain it. You okay, dog? Yes. I have no idea. Check it's there. Be prepared for if if Mike is home, yeah, for him to be pissed. Well, I don't think he's home. There's a couple cars. You know, there's a there's a, a missing car. At least there's two missing cars. He may be out of state, but who knows? Well, we should bang up the windows all around the house. I didn't realize it was such a toll. Yeah, is there a gate? Oh, it's like a scary freaking <laughs> movie or something. Kind of. Uh, nothing good came from this. You got somebody in there? Nah, I think I was 
The dog's probably hungry. Yeah, he'll do that. Yeah, if you don't answer your door, they will tap every fucking window and everywhere. Yeah, and flash the lights in every window, yeah. They will do yeah, that. And they gotta, because if they're there to check and see if, if something's wrong, and there's no answer, yeah, they gotta do every effort to try and get somebody to come, because what if somebody ends up dead that night? I and know. That's it. But these yeah. goddamn people on the internet yeah, are trying to make it seem like I'm hurting you. Yeah, anyway. I know. It's stupid. But but the, in cases where it's there could be a real danger, they have to do that. Yeah, I know. I see why they do it, but at the same time... <laughs> it's bad when it happens to people that are innocent. Yeah. And high energy spikes that happen before someone's murder have some mark on the universe more so than natural death. Yeah, that's possible. God, you guys are so cool. Knock yourself real well. Neptune City Police! Hello? Hello? Neptune City Police! Hello? Neptune. Yeah. Neptune City Police! Hello? There's no one home, bro. Let's check down here first. Hello? Dogs, are, dogs in a cage right back there. Oh, feed the dog first. Hello? It's the police department. Hello? Anybody home? Announce yourself, please. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Police department! Anybody here? Nothing so far. Hello? Police department! That door's oh. locked. That's not good. Isn't this triggering to you? It's, yeah, it's pretty... That door's locked. Got one locked door. I'm trying. I'm just doing it. Police yeah. department! Uh, this place is haunted. Yeah, I think it is. This place is freaking haunted. Ooh, I don't like this place. I don't like the feeling. Bad energy. There's bad energy in this place, man. There is some bad energy in this place. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. You think something happened very similar to, like, um... Like in um, 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 Aunt Amityville, like houses can cause people to do fucked up shit. Definitely. You think so? Yeah. The Shining. Yeah. Yeah. Demonic presence can definitely impact people. They, I, without a doubt. Ugh. I'd say. I look at the doggy. Cheap for the doggy. Cheek for the good doggy. Look at the good doggy. Watch me. I'll stick it to the Aww. Oh, no. Thank you for strangers. feeding the dog. Yeah. No problem eating it. He's probably hungry, the baby. Well, the baby's like, thank you. Uh, I think he was working on all that. Mom's not here. Her grandma's not here, and Dad's not here. Where the police are find they? no sign of Sarah, and notably, they also don't find any clear evidence of a crime. They end up down the street looking to speak to one of Sarah's good friends and former high school classmate, Liam McCatasney. They head to Liam's mother's house, who also know. Shanny, can you feel those type of things, weird shit, during the night? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. That's why I tend to avoid certain places, because it's like, no. <laughs> not doing the energy thing. Not digging the energy here, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the beginning part, the kid was making fun of the fact that the dog just sat there watching him hurt the girl. <sighs> what is the dog going to do? It's in a cage. <clears throat> Sarah, well. We don't have to worry about 
about these dogs coming out, do we? Sorry. Is Liam home? Liam's <laughs> Is that dogs mad? No, we're looking for a friend of his that, that's possibly a missing person and she supposedly hangs out with him. Is he Sarah Stern? Does he hang out with her? Yes. He's at 12 Holly? 11 Holly Street. 11 Holly? He might be over there. Yeah, 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 of course. Can you call Liam? Of course. If you don't mind? The officer comes across another neighbor who also knew Sarah. Yeah, we're trying to find Sarah. Well, she's, she's supposedly calling Liam to see if Sarah's over there. So. We never leave Friday for door. The dog is in the cage at the house. Okay. It is. Um, Stacia, it really is. Today. I've been. Can I bring my mother's stuff to your house? The car, you know, car with dogs. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, so she brought a bin of stuff of her mother's to your house? Taped over, and it's in my kitchen. I was out. I said, yes, I'll put it in a cubby. And, um,. I tried texting her and nothing. I have brought her to the hospital. That's twice. my next question. Is she depressed? Is she. You, I, think, is, I think she's depressed. Is she. Mm -hmm. Funny way, do you think? I don't know. The stuff that she dropped off, is it like personal stuff of her mother's? Like, it would be her personal belongings and all, all her memorabilia? It's thin and, and taped. It's all taped I, off? Yeah, she's all right, we're going to uh, continue this search then. At Liam's house, he answers the door, looking as though he just woke up. Liam, you Liam? You got a second? Can I come in and talk to you real quick? Yeah, no problem, officer. Is uh, Sarah here by chance? No. When was the last time you talked to her? I was with her today. What time? Uh, before I went to work. So it was earlier today? Huh. Yeah. So he's seen her. Hmm. Is that the killer? Uh, I think so. Or it is suspected. It was a ma neighbor. So it's like Silence of the Lamb. How do you covet? You, 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 you see things. You want things. No. You covet what you see every day. You covet what you see every day. Your neighbors. Oh, okay. Yep. <clears throat> Hannibal Lecter taught that to Clarice. When was the last time you had any kind of contact at all with her? Um, uh, turn some light on if you don't want to. I mean, we went to get food today. And you went to work at what time? Uh, 4.30. Okay, so you haven't talked to her since 4.30? Do you no. have a cell phone you can reach out to it, to her on? I actually haven't been able to find my cell phone. Any idea what that? I've been all day. You haven't found your What's cell phone? Last time you talked to her? Oh, 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 convenient. Convenient, you can't find your cell phone, dude. Oh, yeah, that's true. Actually, can't find it, officer. Mm hmm. You mm -hmm. sure about that? Yeah, you sure? Like, I would have no problem be like, here you go, officer. Like, I'm innocent about everything. I just know she's been trying to get away. You can tell me she's going to Canada. Trying to get away, okay. Canada, she's been real depressed lately. Her dad is crazy. Okay, and then she's dealing with the loss of her mother. Her dad's in yeah, Florida, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Her dad, yeah. He's coming back today. Yeah. Glad you love Silence yeah, of the Lambs? Yeah. yeah. The lotion needs to be in the basket. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they stole an iPad, MG Diamond here, and then we're take the gun, left it in the dining room, and threw my. Oh my God! I'm so sorry, Autumn. She got robbed, man. I'm so sorry, dude. That's horrible. You okay? Where's her grandma? Ah. Grandma's actually sick. Where's your grandma at right now? She's not at the house. She's staying with him 
Oh, okay. Another convenient excuse. Are they going to be able to get into the house? Because I know that they're uh, We can get into the house. There isn't a key. We can get into the house. Okay. The house was open earlier. We were already in the house. And I have a key to the house. So. Okay. All right. Keep looking for your phone to see if there's any messages or anything. All right? Thank you. And all th these things, yeah, these things maybe, sitting around here. Let us know. Our call us yeah, let us sorry, know. Yeah, that's, that's a questionable behavior, man. If yeah. you can, uh, if you maybe reach out to some friends, maybe give her a message on yeah, social media. I definitely will. Or reach out to somebody, see if anybody's talked to her, or yeah. if they, when they talked to her, what her mindset was and all that, right? I'm planning on getting a phone as soon as I wake up. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we, sp we spoke to your mother before. You hear anything? Call the Neptune yeah. City or Neptune Township Police Department. Let us know. Thank you. After speaking with Liam, the other neighbor who followed them across the street continues talking to the officer and reveals that she was incredibly close to Sarah. She gives some background to their relationship as well as an idea of some of the things Sarah had been dealing with. Here's, 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 I'll bring you up to speed on what we have so far. She was going to Chantel land? Yeah. Oh, no, you never go to Chantel Land. That's when you get in fucking trouble when you go to Chantel Land. Condemn all of Canada because of Chantel. Yeah. <laughs> Canada should be condemned permanently because of Chantel. Mm, yeah. Too much trouble. Uh, too much trouble. He's a menace. <laughs> was found with nobody in it we're trying to find out why her car was where it was and make sure she's all right the car's registered to grandma who's 96 yeah I know. initially we tried to make sure grandma was all right we know grandma's staying with a neighbor now and now we're trying to find out make sure sarah's all right oh, i don't know when mike's was... coming home but it's a tough relationship between him and Listen, her right i have taken the kids to the emergency room um has she ever done anything crisis wise or anything like did she take any kind of meds no does it no. take any kind of, any, uh, Prozac, anything like that? No, no. I've taken her to a dentist, her a wisdom teeth, I've gotten her contacts. Such good neighbors. Um, yeah. gynecologist I've taken to twice. Um, when she was in the emergency room, I thought it was her appendix, so the doctor, and he was in AC, Michael, and I stayed with her. Do I have a girlfriend now or not? Yes. He doesn't come. It doesn't really matter, but is that why you spend a lot of time with the girlfriend? Is that why he's over in Okay. Uh, over, our main thing is trying to find Sarah. If you hear anything, Neptune City or Neptune Township. Yeah, she to really did care about her. In the days her. after her disappearance, the police yeah. returned to speak with Liam. Well, like, just kindness in that girl's eyes. Yeah, she, she has kind eyes. But you can see pain, too. But she was trying to hold everything together. God bless this girl. I hate evil people. They're such assholes. Yeah. At his mom's house. Liam, I'm gonna, I gotta throw something in here, okay? Yeah. You know what's going on here? You know why we're standing here talking to you. I, yeah, I have a pretty good idea. No, no, no. Do you know why we're standing here talking to you? Do you have any idea where Sarah is? I have Listen, this is, this is, I'm gonna throw this out to you. Bear with me, John, because uh, Sergeant Isaacs, I want me to make sure we made something very clear here. Yeah. The resources that are out there right now looking for her, the amount of manpower. We have people swimming in the Shark River in this cold weather, cold water, everything else. We have boats. We have helicopters. Dude, if you know anything about where this girl is or have had any contact with her, you need to let us know. Believe me. I'll and exactly what it was you that know. you had spoken to her about yesterday afternoon before you went your way and she went her way. We need, you need to open up You're a suspect, dude. Yeah. Because be there are people all over the place looking for this young lady. Yeah, we're not, we're not looking to bring it back. Here. Is we're that the murderer? So I think maybe, dude. He he has some weird behavior already. I don't know. Very chill and relaxed. You would think if that was like someone he cared about, he'd be like worried, and he's just like whatever. <laughs> Yeah, we, like you said, we have a ton of resources out there, and, and people, you know, guys are in that, that 
turn of that water is I'm a lifeguard. I, I mean, it was warm during the summer, but we, we had a similar situation to this with the scuba diver or yeah. something so you know. over the summer. Yeah. And I remember the manpower that was out searching yeah. for him. So, um, so what are you saying, essentially? It's like, like, Superman, we're not going to get you in trouble. We're not even looking to get her. We want to find her and make sure she's safe and okay. The following footage has been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed attorney and former criminal prosecutor and a licensed clinical psychologist. Liam is seemingly being cooperative and forthcoming. He's wearing sunglasses, which the officer should have asked him to remove. It's much harder to read emotion and expressions with sunglasses on. He's gesture. Can I link it? Yeah. Like, this isn't making any sense, his behavior, man. He should be freaking the fuck out. Like, where's my girl, man? Do you, did you hear anything? Like, some kind of concern. During a lot while speaking, and it looks almost deliberate or too excessive for the context. I went to work, got home from work, got drunk with my buddy. Right. And then I had a knock on the door at four o'clock. This is so. So this yeah, day, we leave like two o'clock. Yeah, between one and two, we went to Taco Bell. Let me see. Did you have your phone around there? Liam sounds winded and nervous. He's nodding excessively, which is either a self-soothing technique or an attempt to try to appear more truthful or convincing in what he's saying. Mm -hmm. In the past, she has had a tendency to have self-destructive behavior i actually know that how long ago years ago I mean, nothing you when you say was gonna get you in trouble but yeah you know do you know if she does she use alcohol does she use any kind of drugs and listen like um, I said, it's not gonna get her in trouble it's not gonna get you in trouble we just kind of need to know what her maybe her mindset was like. well i've i've drank i've smoked with her in the past like marijuana so yeah i worked until 10 o'clock. Okay. I was supposed to work until midnight, but I got off at 10 o'clock. Um, and you just came back here? Yeah, I went back there. Yeah, you need a couple of beers or whatever. Yeah. You guys don't care. Good for you. Why wow. he's breathing so heavy, he heavily out of, all of a sudden? Because yeah, he's feeling, yeah, they're, they're, they confronted him. Like, yeah. You, like you had something to do with it. Yeah, he's breathing heavily. <clears throat> That says something. Nodding a lot and shit. Yeah. They should ask him to take his glasses off. Yeah. I think that's his girlfriend back there. You see her? Oh, okay. By the big tall bush? Yeah. I was that was old beers, but I The officer says, you had some beers. Good for you. I wish I was having beers. While this exchange could build rapport... That doesn't seem to be necessary, as Liam is freely chatting with them. Instead, this comes off as unprofessional and inappropriate. Uh -huh. They may be trying to be relatable and non-threatening, or they may view him as a kid whose good friend is missing and feel sorry for him. However, he's not been cleared as a potential suspect, as they seem to still be at the beginning stages of this investigation. I don't trust The him. entire tone of this interaction is not ideal. She say anything to you about where she might, where she was gonna head off to? If she, if, I mean, yesterday, when you guys left each other yesterday, how did, how did that conversation end? Is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, all right, Sarah, talk to you later. I gotta go to work, or I mean, uh, really much it. Okay, I'm heading to Canada. I mean, <laughs> did she give you any of that? I know Nightmare before Allen Street was on, and we were hanging out. I said, uh, I gotta go to work. I'll see you later. I'm gonna be late. I left. Yeah, that's interesting. He's the last person to see her and he's like uh, I said uh, I gotta go to work and I left we were watching Nightmare on M Street you know I just I didn't you know why not be like fucking Freddy you know mm -hmm. hi Gabby you're a cute boy you good boy you're a very cute boy I love him he makes me calm he makes me so much calmer you're going to Whitey? What? He's okay. Rev's okay. Yeah, I'm just chilling out with Gavin. Oh my god, Gavin. You look so cute like that, boy. He's being a good boy. He's a cute boy. Yeah. 
He is my cute boy. I swear, he purposely goes cute on purpose. Yeah. He does. He purposely goes extra cute. I think so. He goes extra Gavin cute. Uh, the officer is leading Liam and feeding him answers. He's also asking multiple questions before letting Liam respond. This makes the interview a little confusing and chaotic. He's speaking over him and not really listening. He seems rather inexperienced by the way he's conducting himself and the interview. And you were in her car? Yeah. My car was at her house, so I drove to her house. Uh, Helped her move that stuff? Uh, yeah. You guys yeah, jumped in her car, went to Taco Bell? Well, Gavin has all the cute. Drove he there, does. Went to Taco Bell, <laughs> came back, and then the moved stuff. And then that oh, okay, I got you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she kind of just said, all right, I'll talk to you, or just, I'll give you a call tomorrow, or something. Yeah. This is a perfect example of why officers should not ask leading questions. Liam is able to just respond with yeah, instead of having to state what was said when he and Sarah are parted ways. This is critical information that Liam essentially got an out in answering, as they did it for him. Liam sits on the porch with his roommate, Preston Taylor, who is also friends with Sarah, an unnamed friend, and Liam's mother. The police have been looking into Sarah's background and interests, and one of the officers asks about the YouTube channel she's been watching. I just pulled it up. I'm going to be honest with you. I just pulled it up in the golf car, yeah. and I'm watching this, and I'm going, okay, there's one of two things going on with this woman. First of all, she's high, yeah. which is a really good possibility. Yeah. And she's talking about making ugly Christmas sweaters with, with bells on it and like that. Does that sound familiar? Is that, the, what, is that basically what Sarah's following around? Uh, Hell big. H-E-L-B-I-G, yeah. you're saying, right? Yeah. They sit in front of a camera doing a little podcast type of yeah, thing of her right? talking about stupid... That's exactly what they do. Okay, so that wasn't the right page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way the officer discusses the YouTuber Sarah follows is very unprofessional, saying she looks possibly high and is doing stupid. The lack of professionalism is glaring, and he comes across as almost a friend not an officer interacting with potential suspects. We've said it a couple times. I'm going to throw it at you one more time, dude. Yeah. We just want to make sure she's okay. Nobody's going to get in any trouble here. We, trust me, it doesn't matter to us what you're doing behind the closed doors. We just got to make sure Sarah's all right. And yeah. if you've got any other information, you got to throw it out at us so we can go a little further, you know? We're kind of throwing darts at the wall right now, quite honestly. Wow, fuck that guy. She was having a good time and doing nothing wrong. Yeah, exactly, man. These bulldozers are putting their heads together, throwing darts at the wall, trying to figure out. This statement makes him once again sound incompetent. An officer should never show their hand to potential suspects unless they can use it to their advantage. A statement like this doesn't seem to do anything but make them look like they're desperate and have little to go on. Whether true or not, that should never be openly stated to anyone potentially involved. If you come up with anything else, yeah, yeah. mom's got a detective's number. You got to call us. Yeah, if there's any way that she contacts you in any way that you two may make contact. Yeah. If you think about something that you guys talked about that might be important that you're not thinking about and you're telling us now, you got to call us and let us know. Like I told you again, there's resources and people out here right now risking themselves yeah. to find her yeah so i mean i'm just you want to do this job now you put yourself in our shoes and what us and all the everybody else is going through yeah. all right liam was then brought in to speak with police at the station to see if he could shed any light on what may have happened to sarah and believe me what he had to say was eye-opening all right i don't trust him mm -mm. you don't trust me either he no. knows something no, I... he at least knows something or he did something yeah Definitely. Like, I don't know why he didn't say anything from the beginning to the cops, man. Sarah and Liam's friend, Preston Taylor, was brought in the next day for questioning as well. Liam and Preston lived together in a cottage in Neptune City. Preston took Sarah to junior prom the year before they graduated ah. from high school, so he knows her well something that he doesn't let on to for quite some time. Please know that the people involved in this case have not been formally diagnosed with any mental illness, and the psychological analysis is not based upon a formal assessment. 
So what is this? Just bring the same thing we bring to and you know, the, the detective from the county is going to come in and uh, talk to you. You know, you, you haven't met him yet, so uh, you know, Jim's step in and uh, he's going to talk to you and uh, we'll go from there, right? Okay. Let's just go. Although some dismiss body language analysis as pseudoscience, it's used by the FBI and CIA during interrogations. When the CIA is interrogating an individual, they look for clusters of three or more indicators that occur in either quick succession or all at once. These indicators can be signs of discomfort or uncertainty in what the individual is stating, rather than indicators of deception. It's extremely important to note that you cannot detect deception through body language analysis alone. As soon as he enters the room, Liam appears tense. He's sitting with his arms crossed and his posture is slouched slightly forward, which could mean he's eager to get started with the interrogation. However, his arms being crossed and the frequent nodding of his head when responding makes him appear tense and uncomfortable with the situation. Hey, Liam, thank you for coming in, man. Yeah, but we're off. I'm lost. That's interesting. Before he was acting like he doesn't care, and now he's like, I I'm, I'm having a hard time. Like, he's gainer in sympathy that way, man. Maybe. Use an excuse not to go to work. Mm -hmm. Narcissists, I swear to God. Liam continues nodding his head excessively while the interrogator is speaking. This may be because he's trying to appear truthful, convincing, and engaged. It may also just be a self-soothing behavior instead of a desperate attempt to be believed. Another indication of his desire to appear this way is that he shakes the hand of the investigator. Although a handshake is a typical appropriate greeting, Liam leaning forward... Uh Jason, you see something? No, <laughs> we both did it. The yeah. Thumbs. The thumbs. Someone's trying to tell the cop, hi, I'm a mason. <laughs> you have to get me out of this. Help I'm me. a mason. Look at me. I'm white. I look like a mason, right? Yes, I'm a mason. Please help me. Yes. I actually did that once in court. Did you? Yeah, I did. I, I, did, I did the right angle with my feet in court. <laughs> and the judge, when he started, he said, okay, Mr. Egruff, and he put, he put his glasses on, and he went like that. He looked right at my feet. And I did get less than I was going to get. Isn't that funny that we both noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> the thumb. <laughs> Fucking thumb, you Mason, asshole. He's trying to get Hey, hey. If you're in a tough spot, remember that thumb oh. placement. I ran back to my phone to see. Yeah, that's that's a Masonic handshake right there. There. He's letting that cop know I'm a Mason. Get me out of this. Boy. Surely you can pull in some Masonic resources, or is it not all it's cracked up to be? What, the Masonic handshake? There's several. There's several freaking <laughs> Masonic handshake. And Yeah, go images. Yeah. You see what I mean? The you, thumb placement. You deliberately put the thumb. And this is actually from M M Mason. Let me show you. 
I gotta I gotta change the screen. But this is actually from the Masonic book, okay? Let me window capture. Right there. Is that what we just seen on screen? I think it is. I think it is. This is a boy. Always thought they looked out for each other in times of need. That's what he's trying to attempt to do. Yeah, I think so. It's signaling, hey, I need help. Uh -huh. Hi. Uh -huh. Looks very sim similar. Yep. Me and Jason saw it right away. Yeah, it's, it's deliberate. Uh, very deliberate. The the guy the the young kid is really doing it, like laying it on. Yeah, he is, man. Hard, like help me, okay? Yeah. All like, right, I'm a brother. Look at me. Like, look at this shit, man. Yeah. It's obvious that's the handshake. Yes, yeah, yeah, I approach I approach court like this. <laughs> like that. That's awesome. I made sure it was at the angle. You just know these things. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, oh, hi, I know you. Hello, fellow traveler, you know. I was offered to join in by a friend and turned it down, got an official letter and everything. Very interesting observation from you and Jason. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do that all the time, dude, back in the day. Yeah, that, Together. Was, that was our shit. That was that was our great pastime back in the day, is is looking at symbology and stuff. Yeah. Is it symbolic for help, like help from a friend? Yeah, that's pretty much what he's doing. At, well, you can see the way he's looking at him as well at the same time as the handshake. Like, hi, brother. I'm a mason. Will you yeah. have a brother out? Yeah. Do you you need to help me? He ain't he ain't doing the. The high call of distress, which is basically like you're uneasy on your feet and you're going like this. That's 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 Mason in distress, and they go like this too. That's Mason in distress. Yep. But he he's not going to start doing that. They'll think he's schizophrenic or something. Yeah, that's true. So he's giving him a firm grip, Mason handshake. You need to help me. Yep. Please. And shaking the hand of the interrogators is another indication he's trying to come across as agreeable. I'm a mason. We just want to talk to you some greater detail about what information. He's a Navy SEAL now? Where she is. Really? Who do you live with, Liam? So Liam is a Navy SEAL. Apparently. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, your son's name, your stepbrother. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about this case. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Navy, <laughs> Navy SEALs are just incredible, insanely amazing people. They really are. Correct. Uh, Preston. Preston Tim. questions as the detectives are trying to get a background history on him and also a baseline to judge Liam's demeanor, tone, patterns of speech, and body language to have a point of reference when they get into topics he may be more apt to lie about. The detectives also do this to develop a rapport with the suspect, using casual conversation to create a non-threatening atmosphere. Additionally, it becomes harder for people to suddenly stop talking once they've already started. 
The detective is friendly and does a good job setting up a non-threatening atmosphere. However, the detective is taking notes during the interview, which can create a sense of distance and less informal. Do I believe in it? What, the Scottish right? I'll get back to that. Get back to that with you. Which is not ideal for an interrogation. The conversation is being recorded, so it isn't necessary. The detective will also potentially miss a lot of nonverbal communication by writing instead of looking of as the I suspect answers them. A person who knows their answers are being written down may also be more careful with their responses, which is also less than ideal when trying to extract information. What are you talking about, Sven? That's a really weird thing to say, dude. That's a very weird fucking thing to say. Like, why are you saying that, Sven? Yeah, that's really weird to say, dude. That's creepy as fuck. If that's supposed to be a joke, it's not funny. No, God in general, Earl, and who and what it is. What do you think God is? Yeah, it is creepy and threatening. Like, like Sven, he's really fucking weird. It's really weird to say, though. Yeah. Anyway. Right, Autumn? And then for a company here, well, he owns his own so, uh, about, um, I don't know what's weird name, S T O T C O. S T O T C O. Yeah. Stock. Mm -hmm. I still do. General, handyman, uh, remodels. The detectives use the same technique as with Liam to get a read on Preston's baseline behavior. Preston appears rather reserved and unemotional. He's visibly un- All right, let's see odd. I think God is life evolved to a point near the end of the universe to recreate it again. A paradox, if you will. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Comfortable being there. And I would say... Yeah, it was about me disappearing for some reason. Like, what? It's really weird, fucking gross to say. Yeah. Come get me, motherfucker. No, he's saying, I'm going to disappear you. I love you. What the yeah, fuck? I know. It's so fucking weird. Dude, um, all right, who lives with you at 11 Hour Street? Just clear. Just killing us, yeah. Preston has a notably monotone effect to his speech. He seems rather unemotional, and his tone rarely changes. You will also notice Preston repeatedly does what is called a mouth shrug after answering many of the detective's questions. This often conveys the message of, I don't really know, or this has nothing to do with me. It could also signify a feeling of disappointment with himself. Preston overall seems very flat and often mumbles when speaking. Uh, so, how long have you known him for? His family was currently out to meet him, and he was in my eligible class freshman year, so I've known him since then. I see him through pretty good friends. Now you have ever since the beginning of high school. Yeah. Um, you guys didn't know each other in middle school or elementary school. No. Did you grow up in, in, uh, in uh, my whole life? Did you he seems genuine, life? this dude. Sarah as well. Yeah, they were all in the same friend group. That was essentially what I started hanging out with when I was in high school. Now, is she in here or is she older or younger than you? It's just the same age. Same age. You guys graduated together. Uh, how did you meet Sarah? Did you 
socialize with Sarah? Do you talk to her on a regular basis? Or? Not on a regular basis. When we hung out, like, when everyone all got together and talked to her, that was really it. Okay. Did you talk to her on the phone? Do you have a phone number? Like, do you have that type of relationship with her where, like, call her on? Because we didn't really speak too much. It's more interesting yeah, exactly, to start yeah. out. You guys are like mutual friends and everything else. What's the extent of your relationship? Um, I would say we're pretty close friends. More, more over the summer than during the winter, but we've still been pretty close. She actually, uh, I'm a lifeguard in Bronte Beach. She was a bad checker, so I saw her pretty much every day over the summer. Um, was she ever your girlfriend? No. We, uh, we actually have reason to believe that she could be a lesbian. That's, that's what I've always thought. Never, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never hooked up with her or anything like that. No, nothing like that. Do you know Are her? you mad that she never hooked up with you, dude? <laughs> we had thoughts that she was a lesbian. Okay. That was kind of... Yeah, like, what the fuck? Random. Yeah, I totally said you, so you want to fuck, and she said no, so she's, she's probably a lesbian, dude. Like, who wouldn't want to fuck me? Like, I'm a lifeguard. Like, of course you're going to say yes to this. She said no to me, so. We thought she was a lesbian, bro. You know? Why would I know anything about a lesbian, bro? I fuck any woman I want to. I don't know about no lesbians. So this Sarah chick, she was nice and everything, but she's a lesbian, bro. <laughs> what is wrong with him? I don't know. Rejection equals gay, gay to yeah. him, because he's like, I'm a god. Like, who wouldn't want this? Like, come on. Well, <laughs> you know, that's that's what came off to me, anyway. And you too, I think. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I don't know, Odo. This happens. It happens. Were ever to date anybody before? No. Actually. Um, it's actually, it's weird. It seems, it just seems really, like, uh, immature. You know, like she's not interested in that kind of stuff. She's more interested in playing video games or something like that. I don't know. Does she talk about guys? Like, I was so fucking sick that, you know, she didn't even come on to me, like, no, once, man. She was more interested in video games and keeping to herself. Like, fuck. So? Maybe she wasn't that into you, dude. Well, obviously. No, nah, maybe that was her excuse. Like, no, I can't come over today. I, I have to, uh, you know... Play video games. Because oh, no. he said he was more close to her in the summer as a friend, but that's because they work together. Yeah. Dude. This dude was seriously obsessed with this chick. I'm calling it. No. She actually gets grossed out. These are odd things to say about his missing friend. Because he doesn't sound like he's talking about his close friend. If we look at the context of the situation... Liam is sitting in the police station getting interrogated after the disappearance of his friend. I have to wash my hair. Sorry, Sarah's not sorry. Sarah's missing. And right? anyone close to her or anyone who even casually knows her should be very concerned about her well-being. Particularly if it's believed that she may have taken her own life, given where her car was found. Um, do you know, um, did Sarah have a boyfriend? Probably she's ever her boyfriend. Okay. Why would she say that? I've never called her ever. Have you ever had any conversations with her about like um, her dating anybody or being with anybody? Mm -hmm. Um, did you? Uh, I know Liam is huh. not friends with uh, with Sarah. Then I don't know, Odo. I apologize. You can't even see that. Can you? Oh, yeah. No, I can't even see it. Um, how often? That's you? weird. Did you see Liam and Sarah together? Like, she wants to The detective should try to ask more open-ended questions. 
Despite the fact that he's just gathering background information at this point, he should still allow Preston to talk as much as possible. Preston's body language with his hands on the table seems forthcoming. His answers to questions appear honest at first, though brief, and he doesn't Again, elaborate no. much. Weird. But this may be because of his age, and not because he's particularly nervous or trying to hide something. How, um, how would you describe Sarah? What are you... He acts like he doesn't know her that much, though. Yeah. We we exist to create ourselves. Cool. I yeah. like that. All right. I'll create myself then. In yeah. Jesus' name. <laughs> She was, uh, it doesn't matter. She doesn't care about it. You know, maybe she's asexual. Yeah, had bad experiences. Yeah, maybe she had bad experiences. Like, you never know. But it's like, dude, just like respect the woman's territory. Maybe she doesn't want to talk about sex with a bunch of guys. When she's into YouTube, she might be just inward girl. Yeah, exactly. She could have just been waiting for the right moment. Exactly. She just doesn't want to do it just to do it. Yeah. Like, God, these guys are gross. How old was she? I think 19. Like, some 19-year-olds aren't into it. It's okay. When you say first that, what do you mean? Like, her pulse, my God, I don't, don't say that. Uh, it's gross. I didn't think about it in general. And your conversations about sex will be in more context, like... <laughs> yeah, I, like, that's true. Why did they go straight in her sex life? They always have to go in the woman's sex life. Hi, cookie lady. Ugh. Is it her sex life? Is that why she's the way she is? I, like, come on, dude. Why she ended up dead? I wish they'd do that to guys. Maybe they'd stop doing that. Joking around. Sorry. Notice they didn't give a fuck about the sex life of the pig lady, though. <laughs> Sweet pig, 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 Sweet. <laughs> In the fecal porn. Oh. Um, does she ever talk about liking guys or not that I know of girls? Right. No. She has been known to um, obsess over girls in the past, though. Um, one of my ex-girlfriends a few years ago 
she was completely obsessed with her right around the time her mom had cancer and was dying. Um, she just would always say stuff like, Maggie, if you don't come here right now, I'm going to kill myself or... Why would Liam mention these things about Sarah? Could he be maybe trying to set up a sort of... A suicide profile? Yeah, maybe. He was doing that from the start. Yeah. Before anything was said about the girl and, and disappearance or anything, he said, well, I do know that uh, years ago she had a problem with, with, with uh, you know, suicidal ideation and stuff. So Yeah. That's pretty weird to say right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. So that's suspicious, yeah. That's weird looking. Yeah. Why are you saying that? Profile of Sarah as being an outcast, unstable, or as being strange in order to support the idea that she took her own life, so he won't be considered a suspect. I mean, you guys know about the Drapers, right? Robin Draper? He, he spoke to her. There have been multiple occasions where my ex-girlfriend Maggie just had to go to the Draper's house to help her with you know, her dad. I, I can't say for sure if her dad was going to do something, but there has been a few occasions where she said, my dad's going to hurt me or I'm going to hurt myself in the past. And, uh, but I guess the point I'm yeah. trying to make is it's just she can obsess over girls. And this, this YouTube thing that she has going, she's obsessed with these YouTubers. And Who cares? And most of them are known lesbians. Who cares? Who cares if she's a lesbian? Is it any of your fucking business? Why is he making this such a big deal? But like you're so hot, why would you be a lesbian, you know? Bro? I want a piece of that. Why why are you being a lesbian, man? Oh my God, this is weird. Did he kill her because she was a lesbian? I have no yeah, idea. More like that he, she wouldn't do him. Just fuck him. Yeah, right? Maybe that. We'll see. Most of them are now lesbians. So, I don't know if they were her role models. I don't know. I don't Jenna know if family would have, a lesbian. How her family would have taken that if she were to come out and say. Because she's always... She's always been, I don't know, I called her a tomboy the other day. I guess that would be a good way to describe her. Here, the detectives do a good job of staying silent and letting Liam talk. He's offering a lot of information well beyond the question of her sexuality. However, when Liam is done talking... Why does that matter? ...to follow up on the multiple allegations Liam makes. Sarah's potential issue with her father and her threatening to take her life is potentially relevant and possibly related to her disappearance. They should have gone back right then and dug into those things deeply before moving on to her work history. Um, no. Does she, does she work there? No. She's had multiple jobs in Neptune City that she's either been fired from or quit from. I've never known her to be able to hold the job. She gets let go. Yeah, well, she quits both. I know Bruno's let her go. I'm not too sure. I guess she just wasn't good at her job. I don't know. Liam continues to speak negatively about Sarah, stating that she has had several jobs that she's been fired from. Again, trying to depict her as being unstable. I think that his desire to reveal these details about her during the interrogation is very much a giveaway that he's purposely trying to steer investigators. To me, she seems like a sweet girl who loved her dad. Didn't they, huh, Mary? Yeah, she's definitely she's just a, a nerdy gamer girl. She's a gamer girl. She she'd be on Twitch, man. No. Maybe she's not interested in your douchebags. Maybe she's interested in a dude who likes fucking games. Or maybe she's not interested in any dude and she just wants to have her games and just be a girl. Yeah. How about that? Jesus. Not every nineteen year old is into fucking God, I, ugh. ...towards the theory that Sarah took her own life. 
anyone in his position who is concerned about his missing friend would at least talk about her with a little emotion. Uh-oh. With a little empathy. Liam doesn't sound like he's sharing information about his missing friend in order to help investigators find her. Instead, he sounds like someone who is ratting out his friend. The fact that he's sitting in an interrogation room, probably knowing that there's a camera pointed at him, and he's lying and trying to create a story about Sarah being unstable, is a very significant indication of his antisocial nature. The typical person enters... He does look really closed off, doesn't he? Like, ugh. I don't like guys like this, man. Scary. Yeah, right? There's an interrogation room and feels intimidated, especially if they're guilty. But even if they're not guilty, it takes a lot to sit there and lie to two law enforcement officials, something that only a person with any social personality disorder, APD, can really accomplish. From that school, she had a young school. She, uh, she went to work there last semester, and she just didn't even try for classes. Uh, I mean, not last semester. Yeah, I mean, last year, she, she did a full year of school. And this year, she hasn't even registered for classes. Hey, why? Canada, I guess. She's been trying. She needs to get away from Canada. Get away from her dad. What's wrong with yeah. daddy? Yeah. I can tell you. I can honestly tell you that. I'm, I'm one of her closest friends. And I have no idea why she wouldn't tell me anything before she left. Like the, the last time I said goodbye to her. One of her closest friends? I kind of doubt that, bro. I think you want to be her really close friend. Because she's the only girl you probably haven't fucked in town. Because I think he's the same douchebag. He just, see, he seems like it. The same douchebag that was in the beginning bragging about it. Yeah. I think it's that dude. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like, you're bragging about the <laughs> killing like you're some bra. Like, I can't believe it did it, man. I'm such a bra. Like, the other day, like... See you later, I gotta go to work. Nothing. She didn't say anything. Many of her relatives have been over the house. And, uh, uh I think her name was Michelle, or, I don't know, it started with an M, but I just remember hearing Sarah say, uh, this might be the last time I see you, because I might be in Canada <coughs> by the next time. Liam is trying to set up alternative theories of Sarah not being deceased. He begins a theme of her possibly having planned to flee to Canada or somewhere else to get away from her dad. He's trying to portray Sarah as having problems, i.e. unable to keep a job, not registering for school again, etc. These Maybe she just doesn't, she wants to do the YouTube thing for a while and take a break from all the bullshit. And she couldn't keep a job. Well, that happens when you get obsessed with YouTube. <laughs> you know I'm right about it, you set of bitches out there. She's not interested in school. She was interested in YouTube. Which I completely understand. It happens. Sometimes you can't help it. You know what I mean? Things may be true, but they are details the detective didn't ask about that he just freely offers up to give alternatives to her being killed. This is to try to take the pressure off of him, despite not realizing the detectives have already likely collected a lot of evidence <laughs> and disclosed that may contradict his theory. The detectives have also found her car in New Jersey, so the chances that she left the area are unlikely. Liam notably avoids eye contact with either detective, 
He keeps his gaze down towards the table. Um, what kind of car did you know, started driving? Uh, I couldn't tell you the model, but it's a beat up old grandma's car. Have you been in car? Yeah, I was actually in a car on Friday. Liam's excessive nodding slowed down after the questioning began. Maybe because Liam felt more comfortable as the interrogation progressed. However, here the nodding started again, particularly when the investigators started asking about Sarah's car. It's likely that Liam starts to nod intensely and repeatedly when he becomes nervous, or when the investigators are getting close to details that could incriminate. Wait, what were you talking about when it said that a Mason was in distress, their movements <coughs> like this? Would nodding back and forth be something similar to that? Ah. He already did it with that handshake. Yeah. That was clear. Is the piece of finish? No, not yet. Not yet. Nope. Adam, even though Liam admits to being in her car on Friday, which is the day she went missing, the detective never asks when, why, where they're going, etc., and moves on to another question. Anything related to the day she went missing could be important information, and they don't ask about it. Who were Sarah's friends with yourself? She must have called an Upton Sea kid. Went to Woodrow Wilson. Um, she my brother. Uh, Lots of me. Billy McRoy, Robert Tannenbaum. I could give you all his names. But hell, I mean, who was your best friend? I would say Robert Tannenbaum. But she talked to him often. Yeah, I mean, once he talks to me. But oh. I know that he has a lot of internet friends. And the fact that he doesn't, I mean, I don't know too much about it, but the fact that he's inside most of her days just on the computer, I think that she definitely could have a lot of close friends that I don't know about. Liam mentions that Sarah is inside most of her days on her computer. He mentioned the same thing earlier. It's likely that he's trying to make her sound like a recluse to, again, Support the emotional instability theory. What do you guys, what do you guys talk about? What do you guys do? Yeah. Video games, comics, movies. Hey, you video games. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, why well, try to make that a mentally unstable thing? Yeah, is staying in your house. Maybe you just don't want to be out with people. I mean, it could equate to a mental illness, but it doesn't necessarily. And it's like they make it across the board if you stay in your house for mentally ill. That's not the case. Either. No. Definitely not. If you can't leave, now you got a problem. If you yeah. can't, that's agoraphobia if you can't go out your door. But just staying in your house is like, it's, it's not mentally ill to just stay in your house. It's like crazy to say that. Yeah, maybe it's, people want to be in their house. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a safety safe for them. Homebody. Hey, Cap. I mean, it's possible. She was grieving well, from the loss of her mother, right? So possibly wasn't stable. But how dare they assume she took her own life? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> They're asking what any, what, if you could have any job, what would it be? I already know the answer. I've said it. A radio show host. Yep. That's what I... Yeah. Radio show host. Yeah. Even DJing would be fun. I, I mean, maybe she just felt better being on the internet instead of facing people and then having the possibility of losing them, too. Maybe that's why she's a recluse. I don't know. Yeah. That's why I'm a recluse is because I'm sick of losing people. Here you go. <laughs> We're going to try to make it happen for him. <laughs> we'll Comics, yeah. Movies, mm -hmm. what else? Uh, music, I mean, we don't really have the same taste for music, but we're just childhood friends we can talk about whatever. Do you know her family? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, she was her family. Yeah. You know, her dad. Mm -hmm. What's her relationship like with her dad? Not good. What do you say, not good? What do you mean? 
I can't say that anything's ever gotten violent, but I do yeah. a lot of fighting all the time. Just constant fighting between her and her father. So fighting about you know, anything. I was with her. No, we we're not go. mad at you, Snow Queen. And she uh, broke the key to her house, and her dad called her. She had her on speaker yelling at her. She couldn't believe that she did it, right? And then she hangs up the phone. Gavin. Snow Queen says, hi, Gavin. She says, hi, Gavin, to you. Isn't that sweet, boy? Isn't that sweet? You're so loved, boy. And you're going to get your kind of food soon. And you're going to be such a happy boy. And I'll be a happy mommy. And we can be happy together forever and ever. Yeah. Yeah. Your tail. Can you check outside? Maybe there is a box out there from Amazon. Okay. I'll you never it. know. I'll check. Amazon can be is fast now. They can be really fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see you. Um, and he called her right back again, and had the same exact conversation. Like they didn't do it. They did that three or four times right in front of me. And the dad just yes, had no he recollection gets. that they had already had that argument before. And I was just sitting there like, Sarah, if he's calling you again, he's calling you to argue with you. I don't know. Like, you don't have to let him do it. Aw, thank you, p -Thab. Thank you so much. Cooking for show for Shanny and Rev doing politics and radio type shit. <laughs> that's that's the dream. That is our dream. Oh, this is a boy. There's a boy. Wow. <laughs> yes, he's a boy and he's got a cute belly. Yeah, he's got a belly. He's got a you boy. Got a cute belly. He's got a boy belly. Yes, and you got the two beans. <laughs> you got the two beans. You have a toe bean. Yeah. Yeah. That's a two beans, baby. You a boy? Make your boo boo. You want to take him? Here, baby. You want to hold the boy? Oh, 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 you're a heavy boy. You said you have a toe bean. You're a heavy boy. That's all his gravy. <laughs> Gavin, good boy. Gavin, good boy. Gavin, good boy, and he's purring. Is the Gavin, good boy, purring? Are you being a good purr boy? Purry boy. Oh, it's nothing. Nothing. Are you being a good purr boy? He's a good purr boy. Yes. You send cash up on the cash app screen. Hey baby. Can you explain to Snow Queen how Cash App works? I have to pee. What? Oh, pee what? first. We'll get back to you, Snow Queen. Oh. He is a good key cat. <laughs> He really is. He just sits there and smiles. He just sits there. Oh, oh, Daddy's going pee-pee. He has to go and protect him. Uh, I don't have the phone. <laughs> One minute, Snow Queen. I apologize. Um, he's a good boy. And Gavin's like the best boys in the whole entire world. He's Gavin. He's Gavin the key cats.
What's the deal? Can, can you talk to Snow Queen in the comments? She's wondering about um what? Cash App. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just put this on. Did you hear Ken Block passed away? Who's Ken Block? I don't know who it is, but I'm sorry, sweetheart. My condolences. What about Cash App am I supposed to tell them? <laughs> I don't know. Just, you have questions. She said, how do I get off here and use Cash App? She's wondering how to use Cash App. Um, you have to download the app. Or Wait. you could go to CashApp.com, I think it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm confused. Me too. Do that to you. You can just not answer the phone because there's nothing you can say that you haven't already said to him. William talks at length about the issues between Sarah and her dad, so it seems here like he might be trying to frame the story to make her dad sound guilty. It's important to remember that Liam is sitting in an interrogation room with two detectives, and he's giving all this information with what seems to be a clear intention of trying to divert the detective's attention to Sarah's emotional instability, and now to her father being an unstable person. The mere fact that he's doing this shows his antisocial nature. What kind of things aside from that? Okay, Snow Queen. Uh, uh, I know that okay. when her mom died, she had money Capitalism. that was supposed to go to her, and her dad took that from her. Oh. It's kind of been the big thing over the years that she's always said the dad took money from her, dad took money from her. None of Liam's accusations about Sarah's father have ever been corroborated or proven to be true. I love you. She definitely had some Thank trust you, issues because over the past few weeks, um, she's been just packaging things up in containers and moving them to other people's houses. I actually have some containers in my basement right now. I know that there were containers in the Drapers. I know that there were containers in the Reynolds house. Money is always a potential motive in a crime, and when mentioned, should always be thoroughly questioned. Yet the detective moves on to question him about the containers, and not the money. Uh, you... Why are they passing containers between each other? That's so weird. It's really weird. I've never heard neighbors do this before. Hey, can you hold a container for me? Hey, can you hold a container for me? Like, I've never fucking heard that in my entire life. That's so unbelievably freaking weird. Yeah, it is. Almost out. Sus? Yeah. Have you guys watched any of Park and Wars? You can get it on YouTube. Those are some crazy stories. Okay. Park and Wars. Okay. We'll look at that, Rose. Cool stuff. That sounds interesting, actually. <laughs> Is it a bunch of Karens yelling at each other, Rose? Hopefully. Yeah. You ran over! You're right close to my wheel! You're close to my wheel! Mm -hmm. Can you please move your car? Fuck you, bitch! I do what I want! Yeah. <laughs> That's Those type of videos? Most of them are that, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Just containers, nothing to see here. That's what Trump said. Mm. Ba bum bum. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I'm making containers and shit with your house. Uh, I believe there's three in my basement, three or four. What kind of containers? There's big, big gray containers. Like bins? Yeah, yeah. Bins, yeah. Um, and then there's one. What are you looking at? I haven't looked in them, but I could tell you that. It's like a bunch of toys. Why would he have a bunch of her fucking toys? Nah, man. Weird. I sense a grift. Maybe.
I sense a grift. Uh, one of them was just a plastic. There was a clear one, red top line, and the whole inside there was just VHS tapes. I don't know why she would package up. I mean, the container's this big, just full of VHS. I don't know why anyone would need a VHS tape. Where, where are they? They're just in my basement. You took her VHS tapes? Nah, nah. I don't believe that someone would pass. Like, here's my VHS tapes. Like, who's... Yeah. Weird. Yeah, this doesn't make any... He took those VHS tapes. Man, look at this. These are dope videos. I don't think so. I... Whatever. Why did she? Why did she give those to you? Because she didn't want her dad to have them. Did she tell you that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you think her behavior was odd? Yeah. I didn't think it at first, but I. She's always wanted to go to Canada. She's always been obsessed with Canada, and uh, I just didn't think anything of it at first. But why wouldn't you just go to Canada? That's fun. I don't know. She has everything that she could need to go to Canada. Doesn't have to go to school, doesn't have a job. I don't understand why she was going to go. She wouldn't have just gone. The detective fails to dig into the theory that Liam is posing. He should have asked if he thinks that is where Sarah is. How she might have gotten there without her car, etc. To either take that theory off the table is a reasonable answer. Huh. Toronto. She wanted to go to Toronto. The truck, too. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Or to where Sarah is, or to find out more to see if it's feasible. Asking suspects direct questions puts them on the spot. And you can often tell a lot by their responses, even if they're lying. Instead, the detective just moves on to another topic. I don't understand. Did she ever tell you that her dad had any physical altercations? No. Did you ever ask? I have. Well, I've always told her, if her dad puts his hands on you, you need to let me know. And she would always say no. It's always in the verbal arguments. You had asked her, you had been text messaging her and you asked her um if he heard you yeah who he referred to and he said is did he, he heard you done huh. did you tell you if her dad hit her with that said that he didn't he, he did yeah because believe me I, i've done nothing but to try to find out if there was any physical violence between her and her father That's, i've always been trying to get that out of her and she's never told me she uh, didn't really like to entertain herself with like alcohol or drugs. She was, was a good girl. Mm -hmm. You're pissed out of your face, by the way. Odo's drunk. Have fun. You know? Yeah. Enjoy yourself. I had many years of that, and uh, it can be extremely comforting and wonderful, or it can be horrible. So I hope you enjoy it. Amen. <laughs> Give strong mink drink to the man that's perishing. Yep. <clears throat> that's it. That's right. It's more hard to like, drawing. But she did drink, though. She did. She yeah. asked, did you ever see her get drunk? Yeah. You're off work that's for two one. weeks? Yay, Yay. vacay. Um, not beer. Hard alcohol. He said she drinks with the online community. Their friends, I, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. Do you know if she'd ever done any other drugs other than marijuana? Not that I know of. Are you? No. I want to be a police officer. There's, there's no way I would do that. So he went to Canada for the, the YouTubers. YouTubers are having the camera to get together and their fans come, right? Ask some questions, I guess. And um, she always made it seem like <laughs> Damn straight took uh, at, took off after New Year's because when everybody comes back, it's yep.
it's busy as fuck. Yeah, good job. That was that was good timing on your part. I think it was this big social thing with her, um, her internet friends. She was going to go up there and stay at one of their houses. These people that she said that they could potentially be roommates if she were to move up to Canada. And when she got to Canada, her dad had to call her an Uber. No friends picked her up. They have Uber in Canada? I guess so. <laughs> This is my mom's information. I don't know how valid it is, but I just wanted to let you know. Um, and she stayed in the hotel that night instead of with friends. So, she, um, everything she could be telling me could be a lie. Just, just based on that. Yeah, okay. Because I thought she had all these friends that she was going to spend time with. The interrogation seems to be very disjointed. Liam is clearly willing to talk to them, and yet almost 40 minutes in, they have yet to really get into any questions regarding the day she went missing. While it's important to get background information and build rapport, you don't want to wait too long to get to no. the heart of the interrogation. She's thinking. Liam has once again steered the conversation back to Sarah's desire to move to Canada and her familiarity with the country. This is highly suspect because it's quite off topic from the discussion of how much Sarah likes to drink alcohol. Still... The detective asks nothing about this. A few weeks ago, it's your grandmother's house that they live in. They had a house in Avalon that they were going to live in, but it was so far up that they were forced to live in the grandma's house. One of the, the family members came over and they have their turned the bush, yeah. the walkway. Up Hi, Eileen. How are you? You love my hoodie? Thank you. Yeah, right. To make it easier for the grandma. And I'm just a direct quote. The dad said, I'll, I'll crush their skulls in and burn their houses down if they do that again. Like, he was literally threatening to kill them over a bush. Liam is being nice, more obvious now and trying to incriminate Sarah's father. She's in bed Still, the detective fails to ask going. Liam if he thinks the father was involved oh, in her disappearance. Hear noise soon. Asking him this. Wait one minute, guys. Oh, really? Yeah, they just opened up uh, their doors. Fire. Yeah, there's a fire engine out. Okay. Yeah, they're about to take off. You protect them. Yep. Jesus bless them. Yeah. You have some mad dog weed here. I think I will take a hit and hit it. Yeah, I should have. I should hit some gone. shit. It's pretty much gone. Well, let's put it up a little bit. All right. Oh yeah, you got some. Yeah, that worked. That worked. This good battery. I like this battery. Right. I got you a pink one. because You I have know. Skittles? Awesome. Evidence does not in any way point to the father. It's useful to see if Liam is trying to direct them. To God bless you guys. They're all volunteers. I They're told all... you. They're all volunteer. Really amazing people. I told you. Oh shit. You want to go get some more? Holy shit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Go 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 get him. Burn tiger. off the pizza I just ate. <laughs> that, that's correct. Yeah. Energy. Energy. Jason's a good boy. I'm a good boy. <laughs> I should have hold it in more. Re run, Rev, run, 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 Rev, run. I hate running. He 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 doesn't want to run. I hate running. 
He's like, fuck that shit. I like walking at a semi-brisk pace. That's how I, I don't like running. I just don't like it. You don't want to walk shanty slow, though. Uh, God bless you, hon. Jesus. I'm slow as fuck. You do your best. Did you transfer? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Oh, excuse moi. None of the evidence of the father has proven to be malicious. It's so gross, this boy keeps blaming the father as abusive. I'm sure they had issues with the loss of the mother. He was probably struggling. I doubt he was aggressive, though. No proof so far. Yeah. I, I mean, her life was very much like how me and my dad's life was. Like, I'm always on the internet, and me and my dad were just, like, chilling together for years. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Revy Pooh's coming back. Oh. Revy Revy Pooh's being a good boy. Yeah, I gotta be a good boy. Yeah, and some friend wants to pin you That's against each other. Yep. Towards the father. When did you move last Easter? When I was leaving her house. To go to work. When was that? Um, sometime before 4.45 or what day? On Jane Friday. Liam frequently does something called the... T Wait, one minute. This is too cute not to get, like, first up is, is, is Gavin making biscuits on camera. He's showing everyone. This is how I make my biscuits for today. <laughs> We do it like this. The biscuit making. Yes, you keep doing the biscuit. Over. And oh, that is going outside. What's going on? Okay, never mind. All right, continue on with your biscuit making, Gavin. All right, good boy. All right. So we have to do the biscuits like this. Yes. You're doing a good job with your biscuits, Gavin. Keep showing them how you do your biscuits. Yes. You keep showing them, baby. It's just so cute. I love you, baby. I love you. You're a cute boy. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Biscuit Boy. <laughs> He's on the clock. I'll take one order, Gavin. <laughs> I would love to get window shells for the Kikots. They would love them. My baby. My baby. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yes, he is. He's a sweet boy. Yes, a sweet boy. All right. Are you ready to watch this with me, sir? Okay, we'll do it. We'll watch the TV together. <laughs> turtle effect. This is a movement where someone crouches and pulls their shoulders up to their ears, like a turtle going into its shell, and is often accompanied by the person avoiding eye contact with whoever they're speaking to. This movement is a way for Liam to make himself appear small, and is a sign that he's feeling uneasy, or is losing confidence. She lost the last night on Friday before 4 mm -hmm. And why do you say before 4.45? 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 
if the uh, local bridge were from the test. What time did you work at Brunos? What time did I work? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, between 4.45, 5 o'clock, I, I got there and then I was off uh, sometime around 10 o'clock. You drove there? Yep. Did you need directly from Sarah's house to go to work? Yeah. No, I don't try anything other than cannabis, well, not cannabis, but hemp products, Odo, CBD and stuff. CBD just relaxes you, really. Sweet last full time around 445. And helps with pain mm -hmm. management. You know how to change? You go to work? Yeah. Where'd you change? In my house. We literally live a block away from each other. So it was just real quick, getting changed and going to work. Liam has finally asked when he last saw Sarah. Generally, this is a question that would be asked early on in an interrogation. And it's unclear why the detective waited almost 40 minutes to ask him this. Liam once again begins nodding excessively. It's hard to say if this is an exact indication of lying but the nodding can at least be an indication that he's uncomfortable or nervous about responding to the question. His response is inconsistent, first saying he went directly to work and then that he'd actually stopped at his house to change his clothing. Did you need directly from Sarah's house to go to work? Yeah. We literally live a block away from each other. So it was just real quick, getting changed and going to work. Normally, a detective would ask him about this inconsistency in his story. The detective is now getting a timeline of the day Sarah went missing and get a picture of the events that day, according to Liam. So you were eight to five. It's hemp, Odo. It's hemp. So around four, around five. Okay. Um, you got home. It was at your house. Liam was getting ready for work, trying to find his phone. Yeah, I agree. The nervous ticks might be just who he is. It doesn't have THC nine. No. Okay, so he was home when you got home from work, right? How long was the time you got home from work? How long did was um? in the house looking for a spell and get dressed. Like maybe 30 seconds as soon as I walked in, he was like... That's okay, I know. He drives to work or walks to work. He drives to work. Notice the detective continues to lead Preston instead of asking him open-ended questions. This allows Preston to give yes or no responses, which are not nearly as useful. The detective is now asking Preston questions to see if his answers corroborate with the timeline Liam gave mm. them the day before. This would have been a good time to press Preston about Liam being the last known person to be with Sarah. The detective doesn't even mint. No, not really, Eileen. Not really at all. Just kind of relaxes you and helps with pain management. Yeah, pretty much, Odo. Liam and Sarah being together. You don't get the paranoia or anything like that with it. You know, you get a little bit of euphoria, that's it. Not a lot. It's good. They're earlier. What did you do? It doesn't, like, inebriate you, I, I guess I could say. Where you're, like, fucked up. I took a nap, got up, and... Oh my god, Eileen. Shanny, I tripped up as you went on a show that Chris was in. He got a wee fright. <laughs> Let him be frightened, creepoid. Anyway. <laughs> Like, who the fuck talks about their ex, like, six years after, like, you break up and you still fucking talk about them like you know something about them? <laughs> That's just a 
slept for about an hour and what did you have like a half empty coffee or something? Uh, but it doesn't really matter, but we have special, it's like a carbonated espresso soda drink. Okay. It seems rather unlikely that Preston would drive back to his parents' home an hour or more after being home to pick up an espresso drink he left there. It seems like a lot of trouble to get a coffee drink. He may have been saying this in case he was driving and needed to cover his tracks. He may also have been going to his parents' house to have someone provide an alibi about where he was since he was alone most of the night mm -hmm. and no one could vouch for him. Mm -hmm. It's like really old-fashioned kind of thing, like most Boy, that's a little bit more pressure. Your parents are here. He's just tired. He's tired. He's he, he's going through a lot. He's nervous. He's just figuring things out in life. And he's scared a little bit. He'll be okay. He'll be okay. I wouldn't worry about him. I'm not worried about him. over the legal age of a juvenile so while he isn't given the right to have his parents present in the room they offer him the courtesy to consult with them at any time it's interesting that his parents don't advise Preston to stop talking to the police or request he speak to an attorney this may be that they aren't concerned their son did anything wrong that might don't be feel it. it's necessary or they may worry as many people do that doing so will make him appear guilty this is a common misconception as having counsel whether you are innocent or not is always a good idea. When you went to work, what was what were you in All right. When I went to work, yeah, when you left to go to work, um, we left her house. We were just hanging out. We just like, you said, right, maybe let's, let's do this. Let's start, start the day on Friday. Okay, what did you do when you woke up on Friday? About 10, go what time? What's with Dragnaut? Did he say something in the comments that I didn't see? Oh, your kitty is is asleep again? Cats sleep a lot, Drag. I wouldn't worry. No, Sven. Um, I think i around noon. Okay, what I do, we got did some dishes, cleaned up the house. Then I uh, called her initially. Now she wanted to get some food. She said she had to, what time did you hook up with her? Sometime between 1 and 2 o'clock. Um, 1 and 2? Mm -hmm. I went over. I helped her. Did you go to eat? Not yet. We did go to eat, but we initially um, wrapped up all of her stuff, put it in the containers, and then went across the street to the drapers, put the stuff in their face. And Sarah and I uh, was Taco Bell. Which Taco Bell do you The one in Neptune? No. Um, uh, do you remember the names of the streets? Yeah. Yeah. I ain't doing the that stuff. The two were caught on CCTV when they went through the Taco Bell drive through And I won't let Rev do that again. I'm not letting him kill himself like that. In the window, you can see Sarah and Liam talking not worth with it. Sarah in the driver's seat. You stayed there the whole time after you went back to her house? Yeah. We actually went up in her room and played some video games. Where did we eat the Taco Bell? Uh, we, we ate the Taco Bell and... She sleeps for hours? Well, if you're so worried, take her to the vet and see if she's okay. But a lot of cats sleep for hours. Maybe she's growing. How old is she?
Yeah, they're just letting this dude just talk his shit, man. It's like, get to the fucking, like, point of this shit. Like, why are you letting him talk so much? He's a fucking freak. Maybe they're just like, he's given information. You know? I don't know. Kitchen at her table. You went to her bedroom? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've watched the Chris Watts okay, one. She had a bunch of Would you like me to review it for you guys, the Chris Watts one? Because I get that request like all the freaking time. Is the Chris Watts one. Yes? All right. Me and Jason will do the Chris Watts one. We'll go to like a different channel to look it up than we did last time. The Gypsy Rose Blanchard interrogation. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what to call them. It's like a, it's a little box, like a joystick on it, maybe two buttons for like arcade games. So you just plug it into her old TV. We played those. There are a bunch of different games. She has a TV to her. Yeah. She has two actual, two for the old video games and one for her cable, I guess. Okay. Well, we both were playing video games? Yeah. That's all you did up there in her bedroom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you stayed up there the whole time? Um, we actually ended up in, um, I think we might have been in the living room. I don't know. Liam begins frequently touching his face. Neck and face touching are typically pacifying and self-soothing gestures. When Liam touches his face, he's likely experiencing an unpleasant emotion, such as insecurity, and is trying to comfort himself. That's what I'm thinking. You know Liam is becoming noticeably more nervous and on edge. His voice is a little shakier and his answers are more scattered than before. The detective is now slightly more confrontational and Liam takes longer to respond. Throughout the interview thus far, he's been pretty quick thinking in the sense that he hasn't struggled to recall anything. Now all of a sudden, when he's asked details like what he and Sarah did when they were at her house eating Taco Bell and playing video games... He struggles to report if they stayed only in Sarah's room or if they went somewhere else. Liam suddenly can't recall oh, information bro. and says things are a blur. The long pause continues. This is dramatically different than his previous answers where he seems to recall almost everything he was asked. This also deviates from his baseline behavior. Despite Liam's timeline of events for Friday, in a text to a friend, Liam says that he was sick with the flu and spent the last three days in bed. Yet he never mentions to the investigators that he'd been sick. If it were true that he'd been in bed for three days, one would think that Liam would mention this to the police. You so would why think. would he lie to his friend? Maybe because he was actually busy doing something else. There, yeah, yeah, bingo. Yeah, you should get comfy, Odo. Just 
Notice Liam is saying no while nodding yes. Incongruent words and body language are often a red flag that someone is being deceptive. The second detective has not said almost anything during the interrogation. He's likely there to just observe Liam's body language and to pick up anything the other detective may have missed. The detective sits in silence after Liam is done responding to his question. This is a common tactic to get someone to offer more details or to begin talking again unprompted. People often feel awkward with prolonged silences and will start talking again to quell this awkward feeling. This is exactly yep. what happened here, and Liam offers up more details. The detective will likely use this technique again as it's proven to be effective with this suspect. What time did uh, Liam get back she wasn't back in work, but she wasn't in school. She got on. Do you remember what you were doing when he came home? That's what we want to touch on. That's when he came home. Yeah, he played Xbox for hours. Um, did he normally get home that time, or? I don't know. <laughs> We're just moving into the place, so I'm just getting used to him, like, on his work schedule and everything. And what makes you think between 11 and 12 or 12 and 1 or 10 and 11? Like, how do you know, like, between 11 and 12 he came home? This was definitely before midnight. Preston says Liam got home around 11 or 12, which is later than the time Liam gave at his interrogation, where he said 10. Uh -huh. Uh... Sometime around 10 o'clock. The detective's confrontation of Preston is very passive. Asking him to try to explain the discrepancy would have put more pressure on Preston. At an interrogation, police are allowed to discuss what other suspects have said to them, and even lie about what was said or discussed. The detective has a good opportunity to play the suspects against each other. It's proven to be a very useful tactic to tell play them one against suspect each that other the other blame them for things to see if they then disclose information about the other. So, uh, you guys go to bed, and what happens from there? Well, the next thing was around 4 in the morning, the, the police came out of the office door. They asked him a couple of questions. Wait, did you get up when you were in the door now? I didn't even hear it. He just came in, woke me up, like, I am not know if everyone left. What do you think? It's like, dude, the police were scared. It's like, about oh, what? I just don't know, time. man. This is the first time he makes any sort of real gesture of any kind. This also happens he's to be when he's coward, answering questions man. about when the police arrived. He says Liam just came in his room, woke him up, and told him the cops were there asking questions about Sarah. This casual interaction between the boys doesn't seem feasible. Any normal person would find this rather disturbing and would lead yeah. to a lot of conversation, perhaps phone calls to friends, etc., it's hard to believe that after the police come to your house about a girl you've known for many years, you wouldn't ask more questions or be able to just roll over and go back to sleep you would with think. no concern or curiosity. The detective doesn't confront Preston about this. Preston acts out the expression he made when he was woken up by Liam. He makes arm and facial gestures showing how he was startled awake by Liam when the police arrived. Hi, Ramu, for the first how time, are you? There was some expression of emotion here and movement that we haven't seen before in Preston during Hi, the interview. Hi, Absinthe. This is a dude who recorded himself talking about him just murdering a girl. It could be that Preston is trying to sound more convincing here. We I mean, must work here at home, playing Xbox or taking a nap or whatever. Did Liam come home at any point? 
Jared is on the team, like ran on the street, went down the storm, he was kind of looking for it. And then both times his friend went back. So he came back home twice. Yep. For the first song. How long did he stay each time? That long. So he didn't manage to come to the best part. Preston now changes his story, saying that Liam came home twice during his shift at the restaurant. Uh -huh. This is a pretty large detail to leave out and also seems rather unusual. Waiters are rarely able to walk out of a restaurant on a Friday night during their shift once, let alone twice. Yet the detective doesn't even ask Preston why he didn't mention this earlier. Why did you wake up on Saturday morning to start looking for again? Yeah, I really tried my house one more time, then I took off. It's long run. It's full market, you got it. I think it was by a friend that secretly recorded him. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Super long. What time did you get there? Sometime after the time. Who went? This is the only one who drove. When asked who drove, there was an unusually long pause before Preston answered. This is unusual because firstly, it shouldn't be too difficult for him to recall whether it was him or Liam who drove. Secondly, it's unusual because so far, Preston hasn't paused this long to answer questions. When he finally answered that Liam drove, Preston avoided eye contact and oh, just looked stop down it, back Abson. towards his hands or the table. He's <laughs> locked in the basement, jeez. The, the detective curve. purposely uses the word opportunity to indicate that it would benefit Liam to tell them the truth or what he knows before they potentially find her body. Notice he starts this line of questioning by expressing how they have lots of divers and people looking for her to plant fear in Liam's mind that she will likely be found. This is an interrogation tactic commonly used by police. The police want to convey a sense that they are giving the suspect an opportunity to talk and to help themselves before it's too late. In truth, confessing will only help he the has, police like, all her the stuff. If she told you something, if she told you that she was going somewhere, if she told you that she was going to do something, you need to tell us. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I understand that you're very close friends with her. Um, she confided in you a lot. Um, none of that matters now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rev, don't leave us. He'll be back. Okay. So I want you to think very hard. I'm sick of him too, Absent. Like, need. fuck this mm -hmm. dude. Um, I want you to think about your conversation that you had with Sarah on Friday. Mm -hmm. Sarah. 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 jumped off a bridge. He threw her off a bridge. He threw her off a fucking bridge. By the car. What an idiot. Oh, you fuck face. Question for Liam to ask, and is very revealing about his mindset. Asking about whether her body would be out in the ocean by now if she jumped off the bridge <laughs> could be Liam's way to feign concern that they won't find her. 
And did she tell you she was going to jump off the bridge? No. Oh. If, if she had told me that I that she was going to jump off the bridge, there would have been no way that I could have gone to work that night. Hi, baby. I, I went to work and I, okay. I had one of the best friends of my life. I had a bunch of, I made a bunch of money. And all my tables were good. I had a great time. It definitely, I would not have been able to do that if I knew something. She inherited a lot of money from her mom. Dude, we're thinking he 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 asked a question. He asked a question to the cops. What if she jumped over the bridge? Okay. I, we're thinking he threw her over the bridge. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe they did try to kill her for the money. Is this still Sarah? Yeah. What money? She inherited a lot of money when her mom died. Oh my God. Well, that... Holy shit. And she's cute. Yep. Oh my God. Well, that makes... That, that really makes everything clear. Rich boy. Disgusting shit. Needed more money. Come on now. She's fucking 19 and she inherited her stuff, man. Sounds a little familiar, huh? Uh, no, I wasn't that young. Jesus. No, you were in your 20s. Yeah. And I was an orphan at that, that time, though. Yeah, you wore baby. <laughs> I kept to myself, I didn't bother no one. They got the money, but it was unusable as so old. Ta. The detectives take a break at this point likely to strategize how to question him from here. They may want to change tactics of questioning and be more confrontational with him. They may also I be would leaving be more to come back with new evidence with to him. present him with. Police also like to observe a suspect's behavior when left alone. He's a dick. It's not uncommon for suspects to change their behavior or even talk to themselves if left alone for a little while. Despite being on camera, suspects often show more of their true selves when left alone as they aren't aware they're being watched. Oh, when really? the detective stepped out of the room, Liam appears to let out a sigh of relief. Liam sits with his head down and his arms crossed in a defensive posture. He looks uncomfortable and nervous sitting there. Aww. He puts his hands over his eyes, rubbing his face. These are all signs of distress. Liam appears to be briefly crying, which seems a little out of place if he truly believes his friend has just left to go live in Canada and isn't deceased as he keeps indicating. It's not uncommon for some suspects to cry when they are left alone, as the gravity of what is happening or what they did sometimes sets in when left alone with their thoughts. I feel so bad for him. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, as you're driving down uh, West Street, not Holly Street, Bradley Street, Bradley Street. Yeah, we're going down Bradley Street, we're going to the left, and that's the right, the uh, spot. Go down the street and like she like wait that was like as we drove by. Okay. When we turned after her, she turned off onto the side of the street. Hey baby. Yeah. Since you're since you're out there, can you get me a, the Dr. Pepper? Yeah. I wouldn't mind one. Okay. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. I have one. This is good. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. 
little bit and just hugged his mom. Oh. And hugged his mom? Um, did he answer any questions? Oh. Is it cold outside? Oh no, my god, no. It's 60. Sure it's 60. Yet. Questions about what happened. 60. So I would imagine any reasonable person, friend, whatever, you know, family member, you probably asked. Any questions, right? What kind of things did you ask? Yeah. Madness, man. That actually became like an investigation. You got to call them for another round. Wow, I feel yeah. blessed now, Eileen, you know. <laughs> that climate change. <laughs> that day in climate change, you hear? You hear? Do you want to turn this down to 2.5 again? It's unusual that when they yeah. found out Sarah was missing, neither Preston nor Liam asked any questions about what had happened. The detective again lets this go without confrontation. Preston is being rather evasive and seems to be getting nervous. This is a good time for the detective to start confronting him, to be honest. But he doesn't. He's just being slick willy. Let me turn this down a little bit. I know. What the fuck was that? Like, if I was cutting this, I would try to make it sound like a wee bit better by tinkering on the sound parts of It's a very, editor. very rough audio. It is. It hurts the ear. Don't play me like that, bro. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. That poor guy. John Kerry. I know the bastard. I don't like people taste. Oh, <laughs> Kyla. <laughs> I know you were at work, you weren't with her. But she's a little neck like, dude, she's missing. What'd you guys do? Where did you guys go? Would you say you, you know, it just seems just like, I don't know if it's bad, I don't know if it's like, it seems to be like acting different. No. It really wasn't. Um, how, did, how did you find out that he was with her? Is this the friend that Brad, that was Brad to? Like, he's not, I know he's not the bragger of what he did, like, mm. but he, I think he was the one who set up the recording to mm. get him to brag about it. The cops probably. Yeah, wired him. Probably. Yeah. Unless he did that on his own accord, I don't know. I mean, it is saying on here, voice muffling. 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 Thank God for the uh, text. <laughs> the detective is finally being confrontational with Preston about his lack of curiosity about the police being at their home at 4 a.m. It's very hard to believe uh, yeah, that Preston agree, doesn't Stacey. remember anything after midnight that night. So, <laughs> Liam wakes up on Saturday and he doesn't talk about Saturday. <laughs> Bro, I don't remember so shit. I was too high. Uh, Sarah, 
I was too high, bro. I don't remember shit. Here's some Mongolian folk singing. The detective continues with a confrontational tone. By summarizing the answers Preston has given, the detective is showing that he doesn't find his version of events believable. No. As well, the second detective's body language, leaning back in his chair with his arms crossed, also helps to display that he isn't buying the story Preston is telling. That's interrogation. This adds some nonverbal pressure yep, to Preston. Yeah, that's what that is. Did he say that he was at our house? Did he say that they went to the movies? Did he say that they went to the beach? What, what did he say they did? Guy's a demon with that voice. The growling snake voice. I know you can hear everything what the freaking guys say, but the him. Cops, yeah. Yeah, the cops, but he's like. <laughs> His mom is crying out in the street, <laughs> and Liam is now crying, and nobody's asking him. Like, so, did she say, well, there's no questions at all. They said, when the lunch, went out to breakfast, went to the <laughs> Enjoy movies. the pancakes. Did you enjoy the pancakes? No, she's making them now. Oh. Was there any Oh, enjoy your pancakes. <laughs> yeah. At any point, was there ever any conversation? Does anybody care about any, like, asking any of these questions? Like, ah, oh, you're sweet. We need, we need <laughs> your time is enough, Stacy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just enjoy your pancakes. Yeah. You got the munchies? Yas! Pancake munchies! <laughs> I've been fed so good because of them, like, I gotta take a break from this stuff, like, seriously, I do. <coughs> they had too much salt in the last few days. Notice that the list of topics Preston shares are all the same ones I'm that good. have been discussed during Liam's I interrogation. I gotta take a break from salt. This is a pretty good indication that the boys tried to make sure. Look at those boys together. Ah, what cute little fuckers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> say so. Yeah. What cute little killers they are. They were consistent in their stories before Preston came in. This seems especially likely since some of the topics seem rather trivial considering the circumstances. Yeah. All these things are coming out about our relationship with your dad. Too much salt. Still not coming out. I got what, my man? stomach feels bloated. And Sarah did. Too day. much salt. Uh, uh, Salads. Yeah. They always... No, I just take a break from it for a couple days and I pee a lot. Yeah, and have a bowel movement, and I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Bless your heart, babies. The magic thing's off for now because I don't have. I'm missing some time. We went to the movies, we watched the movie, or we watched. I went to her house, and we had lunch, and we watched TV. And I thought about it, and we came up with a conversation. I'm using your mind control. I'm using mind control on you. How? Please know. give me a scientific, reasonable answer, Jules, on how I'm doing mind control on you. <laughs> Watching this together is comforting, to be honest. Yeah, you don't have to get so freaked out. I'm a shanty simp now because I'm trolling, duh. 
Wait, hey, that's if that's your priority, <laughs> Jules. I mean, you're like a lot of people, if that's the case. Is this having fun? Yeah, fuck people what they think about you, Jules. Do what makes you happy. No, the, 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 look, they don't want... The thing is, the, if anybody that's like Austria or trying to make you feel bad about coming in here and getting talked to in a nice way, they just want you being talked to in a shitty way, Jules. Like, you're having fun here, right? Yeah, exactly. Fuck them. Yeah. You're having fun, right? If you're having fun in our room, fuck them. Yeah. Who cares? We if... know you're restreaming and shit. It's cool. We'll do what you want, you know? Yeah. Fuck them. But you might have a little feeling of what it, what it's like to be us, though. You know? Yeah, it's you like might. You're being, you're ostracized for no fucking reason, you know? That's bullshit. Yeah. <coughs> People just want to attack just to t attack. I wouldn't worry about them. Good friend. Good friend's help and find. And if you answer. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> the detective is implying in various ways that their behavior, or lack thereof, is not No, you're not homeless, and you're welcome. Is missing. He isn't explicitly saying that, well, but the, the message is clear. This makes yeah. Preston think that he isn't coming off credibly, and the detective hopes this will get him to crack. He may have been more successful if he posed the question and stopped talking. By continuing to speak, it takes the <coughs> pressure off of Preston. <laughs> South, Autumn. Oh, God bless you, Absent. Oh, my God. I'm really drunk and go into head, into face, in pillow with man piece in places that only the gods can imagine. Comment. That only made sense to you, Odo. That only made sense to you. Re, are you a 4chan or Jules? Cats can open plastic bags quicker than me. Yeah, they can. They're smart little fuckers sometimes. Most of the time. They're not stupid right. animals. They're very, very smart. Let's get back into this. Yeah. How can you ever us about the bank? Though he didn't mention it before when he was telling the detectives the timeline of his day, Liam and Sarah had gone to the Kearney Bank and were seen on CCTV. Oh. Well, I'm told she was out the bank, but did you go to the bank? I was with her. Okay, it's the way back from Taco Bell. What bank did you go to? She invited me to Kearney. And what did she do at the bank? No idea in the car. Stay in the car. Yeah. They have begun using the read technique of confronting the suspect with evidence related to the crime. This will likely increase the suspect's stress level even more, and they hope this may cause him to get tripped up or ideally confess. This is also a rather large detail to leave out in his prior accounting of their activities that day. Why don't you stop in the bank? That's another statement. Something to do with her mind. I don't know. She had found money in that one house a few months ago. And uh, you know, she has a lot of box full of money. I don't know. Uh -huh. She was taking money out, putting money in there. A lot of box full of money where? In Carney Bank. How do you know? She's told me. What did she tell you about that? Uh, it's just that that's where her money is. The detectives bring up the money Sarah had as it establishes a possible motive for Liam. 
Initially, ah. Liam acts like he doesn't know much about the money, but as he continues to old speak, hundreds, he keeps revealing more and more details. Hundreds. Oh, those are beautiful. The detective never awesome. out the possibility or he asks if maybe she them. was what an for idiot. the money to get a response no. from Liam. Since money is such a common motive, it's a logical question he to has ask. All old money. It puts more pressure on Liam. Oh, and how he look at the old money. Been. I would have kept that forever. That's beautiful. Oh, my God. You wouldn't want to spend that. You'd want to... God, that's going to be What worse. an idiot. That would be worth so much money. Like, on the internet, you could get more money for the bills. Because it's the old bills. Yeah, yeah, man. That's collector currency. Wow, that's beautiful. Isn't it? Is there $2 bills in there? I don't see $2. I don't see $2 bills. No, they just I see made... 50s. They're all in, in a... More 50s than 20s, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it is worth a lot now. God, could you imagine that? You resell your money on eBay. <laughs> the bills for more money. Oh, that's so pretty. It is. <laughs> Useful. Whose money did you find? She said that it must have belonged to her mother. Which she thought was her mom left it for her. It is in the house. So if her dad were to, uh... Take her money. He's a selfish douchebag. By her mom. Just, how much money? I couldn't tell you. She, she never told me. She said it could be. She told me a range. Imagine looking at that and thinking that girl's life is grand. worth no it. Way. Right. She sure. No way. She wasn't sure how much money she found. Yeah. How could that make sense to you? That you wouldn't be sure how much money she found. Well, she told me the condition of the money was. Pretty bad. Like it was all stuck together. But it was all old, old bills. Did she give you any of the money? No. Remember? Yeah. There's a good motive now. Do you know that Robert St. Amon's another person that knows about the money besides me, though? Because she had told me that uh, he needed to get something done with his car and he was asking her for money. But. Liam states that her friend Robert also knew about the money. This appears to be an attempt to establish him as another potential suspect. What did she say about Canada on Friday? I don't even remember if we discussed it. Everything's just like blending together at this point. Once again, there are inconsistencies in Liam's statements that weren't there previously. He first stated they talked about Sarah going to Canada, and then that they may have. He has now twice relied on wow. saying that everything is a blur, which seems to be an attempt to explain away any mistakes he makes in his recollection. Yeah, right. It's her. not that hard to remember what happened house. that day. I know. She had been just taking calls from multiple family members over the past few weeks. Everyone saying how worried they were about her. So, Friday was the second. Somebody usually could call her and had a conversation. With Liam claims family members were calling her, saying how worried they were about her. But the detectives seemed to move past it without asking more questions. This piece of information could have given them more insight into what was going on in Sarah's life and her mindset just before she went missing. Did you cry about it? No, yeah, but first one. It's like coming in the woman. I know, I right? We drove the car. Stop whining. Um, water on the house. Yeah, I can't understand how people can go this far. Like, you just, like, they just don't value life or look at life right. She was really into YouTubeiano. What is YouTubeiano? Oh, yeah. I didn't take one, sorry. Oh. Yeah, I need to get out of pain, dudes. <laughs> sorry. What was told to you? <laughs> hey, you. Until the detective Sarah Ron came around and started asking questions, I really just. Has <laughs> oh. anybody told me that she jumped? What do you think, Sam? 
these two times. Okay, why are you just jumping? You like looking at fences? Maybe you just like looking at them. <coughs> There's no shame in that. and then seems to immediately stop as he continues to talk. His breakdown seems insincere as it lasts only seconds. This is also the first time Preston has demonstrated any emotion at all, even if it is insincere. He may also be crying from stress or fear of being caught. God, the noise. Preston requests to speak to his mom and to take a break. <laughs> the detectives return to continue questioning oh, Preston about 35 minutes later. Yeah. Mom and dad are still here. They're waiting for you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so, you. You wake up, you said you woke up around what time on Saturday? Uh, around like 10 o'clock. Around 10 o'clock. So when you get up at 10 o'clock, do um, you remember coming out of your room? I think you hear yeah. All right. What do you do when you come out of your room? When they return, the detectives immediately begin asking him questions again. Perhaps to try to unsettle him into revealing something. Maybe. Uh, you know, I was here he has already answered this question and may be trying to remember what he had said previously. The detectives appear to be checking that Preston's timeline of events matches Liam's. Yeah. He continues taking long pauses before responding, as though he's trying to watch what he says. This is, of course, in stark contrast to Preston's usual response style, which was more immediate responses to questions with little to no pauses. I asked him what the police were there for last night. Huh. I can't wait really until this implodes. Uh, you know? This technique can backfire if the suspect then replies, 
I don't know, or I'm not certain. If they respond this way, it adds uncertainty to the suspect's prior timeline that has been previously established and allows the suspect to show he isn't lying, but just isn't sure. It's better to have a suspect answer once and then lock them into that answer. I was back to my girlfriend. Um, he was the conversation with so far. Preston shows some transparency here when he takes out his phone in front of the detectives. This shows his willingness to answer some of the questions. It's interesting that the detectives don't ask permission to take Preston's cell phone when there is logically <coughs> useful evidence contained in it. They could. Cell phones often provide a ton of important data for the police, and a suspect's refusal to hand it over can be telling in and of itself. How has to be a big mess like this. I mean, you know, mostly like a facade that like, this guy was just like, he's okay, like, trying to be talking about it. But, so I'm like, pretty upset about it. That's really busy. He said, I'm normally a pretty upbeat person. <laughs> When Preston was asked how Liam's demeanor has been in the last couple of days, Preston responds by again using his hands, but this time to show that Liam was trying to be tough. Preston doesn't make facial expressions while speaking, and his voice is monotone pretty much across the board. So when he uses his hands, it's possible that he's lying. The random nature of his sudden use of hand gestures indicates that something is different about what he's saying at that moment. He used the same awkward gestures when he banged his hand on the table earlier, and when he impersonated himself, being startled awake. Do you communicate with Sarah yeah. and you after you left her house that day? No, I didn't have my phone. I actually left work while I was at work to go to my house, tear everything apart looking for my phone. What do you mean you didn't have your phone? I didn't have my phone on me that night. Where was your phone? I have no idea. I still don't know. You guys have it now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened with my phone that day, but I just remember going to work, realizing I didn't have it. And yeah. My mom told me. My guess is he threw it over the bridge with the girl. That's my bet. What do you think? Maybe. I'm calling it. <coughs> I mean, I found the phone in the Draper's driveway. I, I could have lost it when I was moving. So you didn't realize you, you didn't realize you lost your phone until you got to work. Yeah. What, Eileen? The woman who married the Eiffel Tower is banned from there now. She was grinding on it with a skirt and no knickers. People saw. Hilarious. Well, she married the Eiffel Tower. She had to fuck it and consummate it. Yeah. The marriage. <coughs> oh, <God>. I mean. <coughs> she needed some pull. Yep. I'm, I'm trying not to use my phone as much as possible. I don't know, distraction on different social medias. I just call, text. I don't really use it <laughs> it's too just often. Stick some knickers so on it and off call. you go. No. <laughs> I mean, I'd say probably like an average person. Nothing <coughs> too crazy. What kind of phone do you have? I have um, Samsung. Liam immediately contradicts himself. He has changed his answer to how often he uses his phone three times. 
Likely after the initial lie, he realized that the detectives could easily obtain his phone records and see his usage. Did you try to reach him, Sarah, after, um, after you left her house? No, there's no way you could have. Why? My house phone? Yeah. <coughs> Why is there no way you I could do that? I lived in my house, my roommate, I had my cell phone, he had his cell phone, put it out of your mom's house. It's right on state property, right? Yeah. Uh, Pretty much, but no, I didn't even, I just went straight to work, straight home, straight to work. Well, we have the detective think, intentionally have looks at his notepad and then asks him a question. He may or may not have been. No way. No way. No way. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. There it is. The lady who fed her victims to the pigs <laughs> were my, was my neighbor. No way, Scarlet. Really? Are you for real? Crazy. How did it smell up there? Yeah, she was odd. Yeah, she probably... Yeah, she was friendly. Oh. Odd but friendly. That sounds right. And fucked up. But wouldn't let anyone on our property. I wonder why. Been referring to notes, but he wants Liam to think he already has evidence to support the answer to the question he's posed. This is another common technique police will use, <coughs> even referring to blank paper sometimes to give the impression they have evidence they don't in fact have. This tactic works extremely well with many suspects. She, she called your she called your your number on my house line a couple times. My cell phone number. What was it? Why was she so mad? Why it would be during the time that you were there at the house. While I was at the house, or what time would that be? It could be the afternoon or right around the time that you left to go to work. Come on. Did you try? Did you tell her that you lost your phone? Come on, dude. I didn't even know that I lost my phone. Or when you went to work? No. Does he no realize how dishonest he's looking? Yeah, no, we're No. No, I didn't. Liam's statements aren't adding up. The fact that Sarah had been calling the phone <laughs> at times he claims he was with her doesn't make sense and is very suspicious. Yet the detective doesn't ask him any more questions about it and never really presses Liam on anything. Instead, he moves past a lot of his statements that either don't like make sense or contradict themselves. Do you themselves. see that Donald Duck yeah, freaking... Yeah, like he was high. It was Donald Duck, but it was um, the, the a starry night behind him. I love oh, that. I he want that. High as fuck. He probably was high, man. Donald smokes weed. He has to. That voice. That's definite weed voice. <laughs> yeah. It has to be, man. He, he has so much anxiety. He has to do it. It's it's his medicine. Like, seriously. Not. <coughs> the detective again sits in silence, waiting for Liam to fill the void. Liam's excessive nodding starts up again. That's so funny when it's fed up. situations where she's heard, tried to hurt herself in the past that I actually didn't remember. It wasn't until Maggie... Any close friend of Sarah would be genuinely concerned and distressed when recounting this story about how she tried to hurt herself. Instead, Liam is simply sitting there for over an hour, spilling all of his close friend's dirty laundry and implying that Sarah might have taken her own life. All the while not being a bit no, concerned about her. No. People with antisocial <laughs> or narcissistic personality disorder often engage in smear campaigns where they will speak very negatively and very convincingly yep. about someone, often spreading lies, exaggerations of the truth, or even That's what a lot of people like doing to me. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> that but yeah, it. I'm the liar, but yet yeah, they're doing the smear campaigns. Okay. That's exactly what's done to you. Yep. Exactly what's been done to you. And lots of exaggerations of the truth. 
Exactly. Lots of that. Mainly that. Mm-hmm. And lots of lies, too. That's true. <coughs> Mixed in. That's true. Even just their own negative theories or suspicions about that, someone. That's everything. It's a right method there. that the ABD yep. person you. uses to do damage control when they fear they will be exposed. Or when they are trying to get out of trouble, they will do it to family, friends, their own partner, or anyone who threatens to expose them. But I don't want to expose anyone. I want to leave people fucking alone. Oh my god, earlier I said he was doing a smear campaign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an actual term, yeah. Yeah. Turn box up all these personal lives. You helped her carry these belongings to a neighbor's house. And you accepted belongings. You accepted things on Friday as well. Right? So, how, did, how did they get to your house? We dropped it off. It was on Friday, that was three days ago. We I mean, have, this isn't the first time we've done something like this. No, absolutely. So, you're not blocked. Just hear me out. It's, it's just, no, you're not blocked, <laughs> absolutely. It doesn't make sense that you do all these things. We're doing all right. And you go out to lunch with her on the way back from Taco Bell. You would uh, have you stop in the bank so she can take care of her money. And then you ask no questions. She doesn't, you know, inquire about anything. She doesn't share anything with you. Well, I've known about it. So I don't know what she could have told me. She has already told me. Well, so I mean, if I was the car here, I got to stop and get for her cash. Well, see, I got to tell you, I got to deposit this year. It's like I have stuff on the bank. So, so gross. That is no. It's a car so house. Fucking bad. Same car. Yep. Same car. Watch the YouTube video or something. And then <coughs> we were at her house. That's a no for me. She said the county had to do it up, car. like, recently. Yeah, well, that's car. good. Yeah. At that point, you had to go in the car. So you had already dropped uh, the, the belongings off across the street. You realize that I just have my phone number at that point. Yeah. The detective now confronts Liam, but only slightly. An accusation or confrontation of guilt will sometimes be enough to get someone to crack. It can also get someone to clam up and stop talking. But the detective should take that risk at this point in the interrogation, because they haven't gotten very far with Liam. Liam slips up and catches himself lying about having his phone. The detective is ah. made clear he doesn't buy the story Liam is telling him, which likely is adding stress to Liam. Because I was, I was using my phone and entertained myself while she was in the bank. So I did have my phone on me in the car. The detective sits in silence again, waiting for him to keep talking. This technique has proven useful on Liam, so he deploys it repeatedly. A lot of interrogation is trial and error, as people can differ in terms of what gets them talking and what techniques work for them. When was the uh, initial phone call? It was at 1 o'clock. Did you communicate with her? Yeah. Yeah, it's breakfast before 1 o'clock. Yeah, I must have been on 32 o'clock when I got to her house. The detective begins pulling documents out of a file pocket that looks to contain phone records while he asks Liam about the timing of his day and calls. This is to try to make him feel like the detective already knows the answers to the questions he's asking. Liam has been caught in numerous lies surrounding his phone activity and a few other details, but hasn't confessed to any involvement in Sarah's disappearance. Okay. Of course yeah, he wouldn't. I, um, I told the guy out there that my car is parked on Main Street. I don't know if I've been there for two hours yet, but oh, now you are. You don't have to worry about your phone. We stepped out of the room. You can probably wonder where we were going. Um, you, 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 your, your dad is here right now. Uh, um, your dad came down. Yeah. Um, did you tell him that you guys you came and told him that you were coming down here? Um, so your mom contacted an attorney on your behalf, and your dad contacted an attorney on your behalf. So there's no now two attorneys that um, are expressing an interest in, to represent you. We're not going to talk to you any further today. We do appreciate you coming down. Yeah. If you hang tight here, I think your dad and maybe one of the attorneys I don't know would want to talk to you. Uh, um, so kind of just if you if you don't mind, yeah, no, um, you don't have to. But um, we're done, um, you know, talking to you at this point uh, for today. So we appreciate it. Okay, all right, thanks. Thank you. No problem. Bye.
can change the account. It's not just about 455. It'll be over and over again. We're going to find this close for a second. Yeah. Okay. The detectives were unsuccessful in obtaining a confession, but they have caught Liam in numerous inconsistencies and nailed down a timeline. It appears they suspect Liam knows more than he's letting on. Yeah. However, they will now have to find other ways to get evidence, since he'll likely not be giving any more statements to them based on his attorney's advice. The detective may have been more successful in confronting Liam with more direct accusations and questions. God, why do rich parents defend their children and like this? him on the fact that they don't believe she left for Canada. They never mention the possibility of foul play at all, which is a distinct possibility. They should have asked more open-ended questions and then asked more follow-up questions on statements Liam made. No, 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 no. We have not had any kind of relationship on the friendship. Do you have any kind of romantic relationship with him? No, I really don't. Two days off. We're still in Well, welcome back, Billy Ann. How are you, darling? How are you? I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and he rose three days later. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm sorry, but a person cannot utter that out of their mouth unless they truly believe. Gymnastics is written in scripture that whoever confesses with their mouth is the abundance of their heart. Preston likely reveals this information unprompted because he knows the police will uncover it anyway. It's strange that he waited to mention this until now, especially since he was asked explicitly about his relationship with Sarah and how well he knew her. A friend trying to help would normally want to offer as much information and detail as possible you to help think. with the investigation. I don't know if you guys already know about her and her friend, uh, Maggie Lassack. Well, I'm not going to worry about myself. If people don't believe me, that's their problem. God judges me. I 
also now offers information to corroborate Liam's theory that Sarah possibly took her own life. Aww. This may be something he and Liam discussed, and he realized he'd forgotten to mention it earlier. The detective intentionally sits in silence to see if Preston will elaborate yeah. unprompted to keep speaking. What else would be important for us to know that we have this? Those are really not things I did to go for a child with these questions. Did he talk to you about our conversation with him? Did you ask him questions about him? Other than what it was all about, how did he see him okay after talking to us? Someone's kind of like, oh, exhausted. Thanks for subbing, Cookie Lady. Yeah, thanks for subbing, Cookie Lady. I know. Without the detectives getting a confession, that makes but this me wasn't the end of the time. story. <laughs> it was more horrifying that. than anyone oh. could have ever imagined. Despite some of the suspicious answers that both like Liam and Preston gave during not. their interrogations, oh my God. the police had no solid yes. evidence to connect either of them to Sarah's disappearance. At this point, it's still unclear what had even happened to Sarah. Did she run away to Canada? Sad Did she shit. take her own life by jumping off the bridge? I don't think or she ran away from Canada, but that's just my opinion. There was no sign of Sarah, no body, and no one was admitting knowing anything. The only thing that was clear was that something wasn't quite right with the stories Liam and Preston were telling. Sarah's disappearance remained a mystery for a few months and was investigated by authorities as a missing persons case. That is... Until someone came forward with information that finally blew the case wide open. What? What, what did they question? Oh, yeah. A lot. Is that a word? Uh, ah, he yeah. taped his friend! They've been, uh... They were on my ass. First, it was just normal police. They were on my ass, and I had to go in and get interrogated by them multiple times. But then it kept moving up levels, and now it's a federal case. And got the FBI. So you've been laying low, I guess. Oh, yeah. And not even, that's not even the worst part. The worst part of it is I thought I was walking out 50 grand, 100 grand in my pocket. Oh, my she God. Had safe and she took money out. And she only had. That's what he cares grand. about the money. And this money, I don't know if it was birth or something, it's old money, terrible quality. I don't even know if I can put any of it in the fucking bank. Right, because it'll probably, it'll probably look sketchy, right? It looks sketchy, and it'll look like it's Sarah's money, especially if it's a federal investigation. Right. If they're looking for the guy that? who has the fucking What old pieces of money. shit? Right, because it's probably like the old, the old dollar bills. It's okay. not like the new shit, because the hundred dollar bills have changed now. Exactly. No, it's from the 80s, dude. It's old. And then, of course, she's on the house or something. Huh? She found it in her house. Yeah. She found a lot of money. And I didn't... I didn't even get a quarter of it. So you only got like, what, seven, seven grams? Somewhere around there. She has a lot of money, but I don't... I didn't even get a quarter of it. <sighs> it's not your money, asshole! What a piece of fucking shit he is, man. And you spent it all? No, I, I didn't even try to do anything with it because it's in such bad what a shape. Yeah, you can't even use it. Like, I need to play low and then maybe, like, tape some shit up and see if I can put it in the bank. So what, do you have to hit it or something? Yeah. I have. Uh, you're handsome. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. 
First it was in my house for a long time, but then I stopped trusting Preston. Yeah, what's the deal with Preston? Was he... No, he's cool. He was... Did he end up, like, helping me? Oh, yeah. Sarah wasn't missing. Liam had murdered her. One of Liam's friends, Anthony Curry, had been interviewed by police that same December about Sarah's disappearance. A month later, on January 24th, Anthony came to the police to tell them that he actually knew something about Sarah's case. What he revealed that Liam shit. had told him on Thanksgiving that he was planning to rob and kill Sarah for the money her mother had left her and that she had just found. He went on to claim that at first, because Anthony was a filmmaker, he thought Liam was pitching him an idea for a movie when he talked about killing I Sarah. Just it However, soon. he soon learned that wasn't the case at all, and Liam had actually killed her. Anthony told police that over the past month he'd grown terrified of Liam and began you to worry that Liam something? was going to kill him or hurt his minute. family, presumably because of what he knew. After revealing all of this to the police, Anthony was asked to secretly record his conversations with it. Liam, and oh. he agreed. A week later, on the 31st, Anthony secretly videotaped Liam. We can imagine that he was probably more than just a little there nervous as he drove over to meet up with Liam, it. who he would soon realize was yeah. a cold-blooded killer, singing mm -hmm. along with tunes to likely attempt to calm his nerves. It's good, man. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? You want a cigarette? No, I'm good. good. I quit there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was smoking a lot of cigarettes while I was tripping. I was smoking a lot of, a lot of yeah. cigarettes, but I was tripping I balls, tripped, like, man. Whole, like two months straight. What were you doing? Sitting around. What you been up to? Hiding from the cops. What's what happened? Dude, you can't blame me for doing this, right? I gotta feel you up real, real quick. Alright? No disrespect. I'll show you. No disrespect, okay? Nothing. Yeah, I got the FBI on my ass. Alright. I had planned Sarah's All right, it's no situation point. for me to be interrogated by cops. Like, that was whole part of my plan to make me look not guilty. This dude's a like, narcissist, what, what straight you up. You didn't hear that? It was all over the news. Right, but I didn't know if you, like, went through. Yeah. And the worst part is, we threw her off the bridge. And I knew the it! They did throw her off the bridge. Body never showed. It's probably all the way out in the ocean. And it's frozen, so she's not coming up anytime soon. She, her body's probably at the bottom of the ocean. Or she got eaten by a shark or something. Yeah. Bro, this is like a fucking movie, bro. Yeah. And, dude... Alright, so I'm hanging out with her. She has we we went to the bank, she took some money out, not all of her money. We're counting it out and then she goes to walk out the front door. I choke her out, drag her. My biggest problem was the dog, and her dog laid there and watched as I killed her. Didn't do anything. Her f***ing dog. What, what kind, kind of, of dog? Yeah, what kind of dog is that? It's like some... Was it a big dog? It looks like a beagle, but it's like the size of a great day. What the fuck? Jeez. Nobody was there? Grandma? Was no, there? nobody was there. Even her dad wasn't there. He was in Florida. Yeah, you said that. He was yeah. There. So... Aw, Snow Queen. I see all your comments. I love y'all. I've known Shannon Red for years, like nine. And they don't know me. Oh, God yeah. bless you, Snow Queen. Oh, God bless you. Oh. Uh, these people are nuts. I have to leave. I can drop my phone at Sarah's house. My phone was at Sarah's house. Oh, my God. He but dropped it. Good. God, yeah, God got you. I couldn't find it. God I bless go you. Work. I had timed everything out so that... God got him. You see that? He he was like, I'm just going to leave this behind. Yeah. Boop. I'm going to get you that way. What a fucking psycho. He he said he planned. He even planned for the interrogation, he said. Yeah. He knew he was going to be in an interrogation, so he planned for that, too. Fucking wow. There's people like this out there. I don't know why people want to do this shit. It makes no sense to me. They want to kill 
Just like he could have just stole the money and left the girl alone. Just like we want to be here watching, be on Twitch with people and watching this and smoking Delta. There's people that want to kill that much. I can't. That's nuts. Yeah. To me. <clears throat> What's IP2? Maybe I don't want to know. Why you take your phone? You should have left it in your pocket. Dude. What were you doing? <laughs> Strangling someone? I couldn't find it, dude. It ended up being an out. Aw, thank you. I make my mind about people. I like y'all. I love y'all, Rev and Shanny. I'm scared where the fuck are they? I let them up. Oh, it's okay, honey. God bless you. You're welcome, Snow Queen. This is nuts, man. He's he's literally t he talks about strangling her like it's nothing. I know. Just nothing. That's nuts. And I he, don't think this would is the first. He was a lifeguard. I don't think this is the first time he's done this. No, he's killed a lot. I Probably think. as a lifeguard. Yeah. Oh, Andy Dick. I oh no, it's my friend. No, they, you're talking about Andy Dick. Oh. <laughs> Out in the driveway. Oh, we must have dropped that. Huh? We must have dropped when I was crawling to the, get in the car. At one point, while the boys are talking in Anthony's car, someone knocks on the window and asks for a ride, which they refuse. Oh, who's that? Oh. How do you roll this one? It's over. Can you guys do me a huge favor? Give me a ride, like, right down the road. No, I can't. I got so much in my back. I'm sorry. I can't. Really? Yeah. Please? Nah, I really can't. I'm sorry about that. No. That was an angel. Yeah. I think that's a... No, that's an angel. <laughs> that was an angel. Yeah, I agree. Should have taken the road with that angel. They could have told you something you needed to know. <coughs> oh, well, you refused. You refused. You might be entertaining angels unaware, dudes. She looked off. Fucking jumping yeah. down or something. Yeah. No. No, hell no. I'm not giving you a ride so she can steal my fucking equipment. Yeah, you know. I don't know who you're talking. So you're worried about a crime being done to you, <coughs> but you can't seem to realize the crime you did to a poor, innocent girl because of money. Didn't care. Didn't care at all. But, oh, no, you can't steal my shit. What a fucking loser! Is that how you feel when you're in someone's out, in someone's <laughs> car? Is you're you're afraid of stealing of, of people stealing from you? Maybe it's because you're the fucking thief. You killed a girl for fucking money. You fucking piece of shit. And it seems that Anthony had good reason to worry that Liam or even Preston might do something to him or his family because of what he knew. You are the only person on this planet that knows besides Preston. And Preston doesn't know that you know. <sighs> and I think we should probably get back to our house. Because yeah, I gotta get him back to <coughs> I gotta work at 6 a.m. <laughs> because Preston doesn't like this idea. He doesn't like that you didn't just come to the house. And if he knows that you know, I don't want him... You know, I don't want there to be a chance. I'm not no f***ing rat, bro. Yeah. You don't have to I'm question me. I'm in Brooklyn. They have to <laughs> question me. I, I, know, you, I know you're not a rat, but we rat. gotta we gotta play it safe. Anyone? No, yeah, I understand. It, it could be anyone. And I don't want Preston to, to think that he has to kill you and take you out because you are the only person that knows. <laughs> I tried to tried to imply that you might know, and he gets really upset. 
So maybe don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't yeah, tell him. maybe yeah. not. Don't tell him. But you're the only person besides Preston that knows. And I told you that in the beginning. That's how it was going to be. I planned this thing out <laughs> for like six months. Wow. Without it? Yes. Wow. Six months, dude? What was it about this girl that he... Why? It was the money she had. The All right. money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she didn't give him. And she didn't give him any. Fucked up. Fuck you, dude. Oh, I can't wait to see him nailed and see his reality just splinter. Cocky, stupid son of a bitch. Just dead eyes. <coughs> yeah, he never found her body. Horrible. They never found her body? What an idiot telling people about it. <coughs> Anthony coming forward. Hey. Liam may have gotten away with it. Liam McCatasney was arrested on February 2nd, what a 2017. Pig. It was a measly seven thousand dollars. <coughs> As you can see, he was brought into an interrogation room in handcuffs. His demeanor doesn't look like that of a person who killed his childhood friend in cold blood after sharing a meal together and planning the crime for half a year for <coughs> a small amount of cash. He spends the next few hours sitting alone with his head. We'll bent, be doing Chris Watch tomorrow, Odo. Investigators suspected that Preston Taylor knew a lot more about what happened than he let on in his initial interview. So he was also brought in for questioning. While Liam remains quiet, Preston, on the other hand, finally had a lot to say. Alright, Preston, you can have a seat right over here. I'll be right with you, okay, man? No. While Liam was handcuffed, Preston was not. This could be an indication that the police want Preston to Yeah, we could do Casey Anthony tomorrow, Liam. too. That way, they may be able to earn his trust and use it against Liam. After being left alone, Preston looks around the room and bites his nails. He appears nervous and uncomfortable. <laughs> the detective instructs him where to sit and strategically places him furthest from the door. The room is stark and has nothing on the walls or inside it besides some chairs and a table. This is done intentionally to not distract the suspect and to make them feel on edge. Hey, Preston. Sorry to keep you waiting, man. How you doing, all right? Yeah. You remember me from uh, December? Yeah. My name is Brian uh, Weisbrow. I'm a detective with the prosecutor's office. I don't know if you ever met um, Detective Wilbrecht, Mike Wilbrecht from uh, Neptune City. Um, he was not uh, with us when we had spoken. We get down to Baltimore. Yeah. But uh, I, I first just want to tell you thank you for cooperating, coming down today to talk to us. We appreciate it. I know you had said you have a lot of questions. Um, uh, we, had, we had spoken to you out in the car and transported you here. Baby. I told you that we were not going to talk to you in the car. Um, we want to do it in the setting. Talking to you in a car is not appropriate. Um, so I, we'll get to all your questions. We're happy to answer anything that you have. But, um, <laughs> we do want to talk to you. Um, and, uh, before we it is a very to you, powerful tool, isn't it, Absent? The two detectives are very friendly as they think Preston is ready to confess fully. They read him his Miranda warnings and It'll have him initial average right to indicate that he understands them. This is the best It'll practice, save your especially life. with a suspect who is either young, uneducated, or unfamiliar with the criminal justice system. Uh, Preston, obviously, you know why Mike and I want to talk to you today. Um, it's the same reason why... Um, Detective Mahoney and I spoke to you um, back in December. Okay, it's about Sarah. Um, we know <coughs> what happened to Sarah. Um, ever since she was reported missing, the Neptune City Police Department, the Belmar Police Department, and the Mullen County Prosecutor's Office has been working tirelessly to find out what happened to her. And we did. Okay. Um, we know what your involvement in, in it was. Right. We want to talk to you about that. 
we're most interested in knowing not necessarily what happened because we already know that. We want to know why it happened. All right? We want to know why Liam did what he did. He killed Sarah. Okay? And we know you know that. Right? You know that. I know. Right. Her dad can't even see right. her have her body about. for the funeral. All right. I want you to know that... He's probably um, kicking himself. He left her at home. We understand that people put themselves in positions that, looking back, they regret. We get it. You're a 19-year-old kid. You have a whole life ahead of you. Right? You got to lay it out for us as to why it happened. Right? And why he did what he did. Money. Yeah. How much money are we talking about? He says that she had anywhere from upwards of fifty to hundred hundred fifty thousand dollars left to her in cash from her mom. Okay. Where did she get the money? From her mom when she passed away. Okay. She found a. That's so gross. Story. She, found a, she found a box in their old house now <clears throat> that they keep just for stories that had a note and all much money and he wanted to try and get his hands on as much of it as possible. Okay. The detective immediately begins I definitely the want to see step Gypsy. of the read technique. <laughs> this step is when the interrogator informs the suspect of the evidence against them, implying in a confident manner that they already know the suspect is involved in the crime. The suspect's stress level increases and the interrogator may invade the suspect's personal space to increase the discomfort. Here, the detective leans in towards Preston Gypsy as he is speaks, the same age as your daughter. minimizing the severity oh, of the bless. situation and downplaying the consequences of Preston's involvement. The detective hopes he will be more honest and forthcoming with them. At some point, either before Sarah was killed or shortly after, Liam had been bragging to his friends about having a lot of money. But later, when one friend asked to borrow money from him to buy a camera, Liam said he didn't have any. Liam refused to tell the friend why he no longer had money unless they spoke in person. But he added that he was running out of data on his phone and that he was unemployed. We now know what that Liam had been expecting to steal a lot what of money a from Sarah. Fucking loser. Instead of fifty thousand to one hundred thousand dollars, Liam only found around ten thousand dollars. He once again ominously warns the friends that he can't explain what is going on over the phone. Did he tell you ahead of time that he was going to do this? Yeah. Right. How how long do you think he had he planned to do this? About a month. Which wasn't too serious at first. Do you remember the first time he told you that? No, it wasn't a month. It was the first six time months. First time told me about it. Him and uh, him and Sean came into Clancy's where I was working, and he just said, like, no intentions at this time, but Sarah just found a bunch of money, and that was it. And then. It wasn't until about a month or two later he said that he was coming up with the idea. Okay, what did he, what did he tell you he planned on doing? Taking her out and then find somewhere to dispose of the body. Oh my okay, God. He taking her out, what do you mean? Strangling her. Okay. And then he was going to dispose of her body. Mm -hmm. Did he tell you what he planned to do with her body? Why did this idiot fucking tell people this shit? Like, did he think he was, like, being all edgy and cool by that? Something. Oh. She's, she's licking her ass. I'm, so, I guess, Stacia, she's saying, I kiss my own ass. Watermelon, you know you're licking your ass in front of people. And she goes back to it. I guess she doesn't care. No. All right, back to the interrogation. Okay. Um, how did you... Let's, I want to bring you back to... Um, I see Watermelon as being a good co-host. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, was it Friday? Uh, um, not anymore. Do you remember that? Yeah, okay. Do you remember what you did that day? Did you work? Go to school? I went to work with my dad. Yeah. 
she can never wear any work. She's like, whatever, I do what uh, I want. Exactly. Lenny uh, Collins, okay. Uh, doing a construction job? Yeah, I was working on my time. We're taking out a bathroom. Okay. Doing the whole She's a funny line. girl. Okay. And I got home just as he was getting ready to run out the door for work. And he was like, dude, I did it. I need you to follow me later with your car. And I just didn't really know what to do. I didn't go along with that far. Okay. When he said that he did it, did you know what that meant? Yeah. What did you take that to mean? I turned into the street. Killed Sarah. Okay. Um, so the, her body was still at the house. Oh. He needs to get rid of its wreck. The detective is establishing premeditation. There's no legal obligation for Preston to report what Liam was planning, but helping him before or after the murder is a serious criminal offense. Despite being honest, Preston is using minimizing words to downplay the horrific nature of what Liam did to Sarah. He speaks in a monotone and is emotionless, even though Sarah was his friend. He's a piece the detective of shit. Is establishing a timeline now that he thinks Preston will be more honest with them. And now that they have a better idea as to what really occurred, without realizing it... Do I remember you from a while ago? I'd like to say yes, but I don't, and I'm sorry, and I feel really bad. Like, I wish I could remember. But I talked to so many people, and I'm sorry. Jamie is showing <laughs> Shani's 420 vid from years ago. That was funny as fuck. Jesus Christ. Preston implicates himself further by stating that Liam simply said, Dude, I did it. Showing Preston was involved in the planet. He's all, she's a witch. He's reaching. Yeah. I don't care. If he hadn't been, he wouldn't have known what Liam meant by this very vague statement. I got home just as he was getting ready to run out the door for work. He was like, dude, I did it. The detective catches this and has him confirm he knew what it meant so that he can't deny being involved in the planning later. I choke her out, drag her into the Thank back, you, Stacia. put her in the bathroom, and then I had to go straight to work. So Preston came over, took the body, put it in the bushes, and then I was at work. I had a full like night of work except i left work a couple times which looks sketchy right. i look for my phone though right. which is a reasonable like thing to do yeah you gotta look for your phone you which is kind of like me losing my phone is kind of a good thing it's all good just wish you didn't get sick though yeah i did it but i showed i showed people that you can't die from overdosing on it <laughs> You, you'd buy a print of that in the flame of me light in the... Oh, that... There's a t-shirt. <laughs> hey. I didn't do anything bad. I just... I just loved life. Is the and I was giving like, people oh, a good time. He wants to phone... He's phone... He's going back and forth between his house looking for it. And then I get off work that night, go straight over, press and I go over to her house, take her safe, bring that over to my house before we do anything. Then we take her body out of the bushes and drag it over to her back Oh my God. And I crawl, Get into her car and I back up. She had, there's a security camera across the street. Right. So I had to back. I had to act like her. I watched her every time she backed out. She does the same thing. So I backed out exactly like she did and drove what did off. You put her in the trunk. No, I put her in the passenger seat of her own car. And then Preston and I had these watch talkers to communicate with. We just used them again. What the fuck? What the fuck? 
when you said you looked like Lady Liberty, but of weed, I lost it. <laughs> he did, though. He watched to make sure if anyone saw her car pulling out, they'd not think it was someone else, so he watched exactly how she pulls out. Yeah, exactly, Autumn. So I was driving, and I had her buckled in, in the passenger seat. Right, so she looks like she's just sleeping. She's just sitting up, and my, my plan was for me, I underestimated my own strength and how much a dead body would weigh. Because it's length, it's length weight. Yeah. I got up on top of the bridge to throw her off. My my plan was I was gonna throw her off, run over, jump over the divider and get into Preston's car. What and the fuck? I go up, open the door, and hook her, pull her out, start dragging her to throw her over, and then cars start coming up. I see, like, headlights coming. I try to get her over, and I can't my leg up. Like, the weight from her body, like, made me fall, and my leg, like, went up. So now I'm limping, my leg's up, and there's three cars coming up. So I grab her body. Dude, I had superhuman strength, and I threw it in the car, and I picked it up, and her feet were up here, and her foot, was, her, head, her head was down there. And three cars go by, and I'm fucking losing my. Oh, you have a good me. one, Billy Ann. You enjoy your babies. It could have been a cop. Yeah. And then, I mean, the police station is like right there. Yeah, yeah. And then Preston comes over the bridge, goes around, makes a, a U-turn, comes up behind me. The two of us throw the body over. And then we were out. Oh, so you needed help? I needed help, yeah. I pretty much hung her. Like, I just, I picked her up and had her just, like, dangling off the ground. And she just pissed herself. And oh, yeah, she what the fuck? Name, and then that was it. And it took me a half an hour to kill her. I thought I was going to be able to choke her out and have her out in, like, a couple minutes. Took her for 30 minutes. I choked her out, and then she was just laying there having a seizure or something. So then I just, I had to, I got a shirt, and I just shoved it down her throat so she wouldn't throw up or anything, and held my finger over her nose, and set a timer. That's the only time I had my phone. And it took me like a half an hour after I hit start on the timer. What a fucking lunatic. This, this is the thing about, like, heists. There's so much shit that you can't account for. Because you don't know. Yeah. You, you don't know until it happens. Liam then went to work as though he hadn't just killed one of his closest friends. He lightly continued on with his night as normal to have an alibi for at least part of the night and to appear like he wouldn't have had time to commit the crime and move her body. Preston is describing all of his actions as if Liam made him comply. There's no mention of Liam threatening him or otherwise forcing him to assist in this crime. And Preston is looking more and more like an accomplice and co-conspirator. Bob, um, did he tell you where her yeah. body was? Just on downstairs. Okay. Um, and what did he ask you to do? Best man, how we get the, get her into the car. And he drove her car up the bridge from her and I just came up behind and came up after yeah. Okay. Now prior to um you said you got home from work right around the time that he was he was going to going to work, right? Yeah. What time do you think that was about? Was it was about four o'clock. Okay. It's still daylight. Okay. Did you go to did he have you go to her house and move her before he got home from work? I see you're shaking your head. What does that make you miss? Okay. What did he ask yeah, you? man. Mainly he wanted me to look for his phone because he dropped it. He the dropped phone. It like his phone. His uh, phone. His phone. He was there. Where's the phone? So, so you went over there by yourself? Yeah. Okay. And when you got to the house, was there anybody home? No. I just said that her and grandma were stopping by later. That's why I had to be. 
Okay. How did you get into the house? You left the back door unlocked. And do you remember, did you drive your car over or another car? I drove my car. All right, where did you park it? I parked it uh, across the street from Holly Street. There's the garage on the right, and there's the little dead end street. Okay. Parked on the dead end on the fence. Okay, so you didn't pull up in front of her house? No. Okay. Were you by yourself or were you with somebody else? I was one last one. Okay. Preston admitting he parked his car away from Sarah's house shows that he knew he was going over there to do more than look for Liam's phone. Yeah. And what he was planning to do was something he didn't want anyone to see. So you accessed the property from the back? Okay. And you went into the back door? There was nobody else home? All right. And what did you see when you went into the house? She... I saw her body in the downstairs back... Uh, bathroom. Okay. And can you describe what you saw when you went into that area there? Just her body just lagging over the toilet. It was over the toilet? Yeah. Okay. And what was she wearing? Uh, her jeans. Okay. Did you see anything unusual about her body? Did you see uh, any? Her jeans. Okay. Um, did you see any blood? Did you see any bruising, any marks or anything on her body? She was starting to turn pale. And that is karma kind of absence. Purple color, but kind of like bruises right there. Okay. Um, and you see, so you went into the back door. Did you, the bathroom is right, right, pretty close to that back door. Yes. Yeah, so you know, Baby, kind of do you want to kick that? No, I'm good. Okay. Oh, and upstairs okay. to look for her. Yeah, it's fine. Where in the house did you go? Look for us from? Oh, it's on Sarah's room. So you, did you leave Sarah in the bathroom or did you do something with her? No, I pulled her out back. Okay. Just set her over on the side. All right, so when, how did you carry her? Did you throw her on your shoulder? Did you drag her? Just put her up under her shoulders, dragged her. Okay. Um, and you took her out what door? When you came out of the back door, did you go to the left or did you go to the right? To the right. Okay, so was that towards the driveway or away from the driveway? Away from the driveway. Okay. For the first time, Preston Punk. seems upset. Punk. However, his reluctance to talk about this is to protect himself, not because of what he did to Sarah. They f they killed her for a hundred k, but all they found was ten k. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and how far, without uh, yeah. the back door, how far away, like away from the door did you go? About 15, 20 feet. Okay. Under the bushes by the back fence. Okay. Is there, is there a shed there? No. Yeah. Okay. The casual way in which Preston discusses Sarah's dead body is disturbing. His tone never changes, and he seems completely unbothered. It was dark out by the time I got over there. Yeah, he gives got no fucks like to this shit. Okay. None. Um, were you able to see, or did you need a flashlight or something like that? I was able to see. Okay. Um, so then you, you leave. Um, you go back through the backyard to where your car was parked? Yeah. You got back in your car? Yeah, I went back to my house. Okay. Did you go back to your house, or did you go back to your parents' house? That's my house. Eleven, eleven, eleven. What happened? Was that eleven, eleven, eleven? Okay. Um, and when you got back there, what did you do? I sat on the judge. Just waited. Okay, waited for Liam. Preston admits that when he got back to the house, Liam wasn't there, and he sat on the couch waiting for him. This shows he had ample opportunity to go to the police or to discontinue his involvement, but actively chose not to. He came home twice during work. The first time, he was like, did you do it? Where's my phone? Like, freaking out. Just, no, I did it. I don't know where your phone is. And he just got mad and stormed back out the door. Okay. And then he stopped back home another time. So, like, we went the house looking for his phone. Liam left work a few times that night and was caught on CCTV as he snuck in and out of the back of the restaurant. And then... When he came home from work, 
he told me, okay, follow me. What a and little cowardly we bitch. Went over. He grabbed the safe, put it in my car, and then he got Sarah's body in the Sarah's car. Took her car, had me go meet him. I intersect at the bridge. And when I got up to the bridge, she'd already put her over and okay. um, jumped in my car. He jumped in your car? Yeah. Preston now admits he had the safe they stole from Sarah in his car. Liam obviously trusted him with the money, and they are clearly acting in concert. Had Preston not been a willing accomplice, Liam would have never let him hold the money, which was the motive for the killing. By saying that Liam alone threw Sarah over the bridge prior yeah, to Yeah, and he even there, had the money in Preston his wallet like a Preston is trying like to make himself not criminally liable for helping Liam dump the body. The detective looks away and down at the table and puts his hand on his head. His body language indicates he knows this part of what Preston is saying is untrue. When he finally got off of work around 9 or whatever time it was, and he came home, you and him went back to Sarah's house. Is that right? Um, how did you get to Sarah's house that time? I drove in my car from the same way in the same place. The dead ends. Okay. And did you park your car in he front of Sarah's house? He didn't plan very well on, if he was um, planning this for six months. Uh, on her street or behind? No. I parked on the dead ends behind her property. Okay. And you accessed her property from the back of yard again? Okay. Um, so you didn't pull up in front of her house, park her driveway, and walk in? No. Why, why did you do that? Liam told me that there was a camera on the neighbor's house across the street. Right. Okay. Knowing about the neighbor's camera shows that they must have been staking out the area around Sarah's house and that this was well planned. And you said that um, when you went back to Sarah's house... Hold on, guys. Baby, can you babysit for me? Yeah. I got to go bachis. Okay. All right, guys. She's going to scream. <laughs> Whatever, man. I don't know how people can just do this. Like, these, like it's human beings. How they can just have such callous, you know. It's callous to just have this girl, she's the, I mean, it's a foreign, it's just really foreign to my thinking, which is, I guess, why I'm not a killer, okay? But, you know, you have somebody in your passenger seat that you just strangled, and it's like, yeah, I have to get her over that bridge. Like, wh how does a, it's evil, man. Like, I just, it's weird. Yeah, they do have an agenda. Like this one, this one is clear, you know. This one's clear. It's money motivated. Yeah, that's true, Autumn, too. That's true. Because they did, yeah, motive, it's usually money. It seems like it's usually money still. We're still killing people over fucking money. I'm a witch. Yeah, I always do that. I like witches. I love you. <laughs> I know your witch. That's cool. <laughs> That's what G-Man's going around and saying. Who cares? You, you, you have beliefs in like some some new agey kind of fucking. It, like I'm I'm not a witch. Shit. Who cares? No, but... you don't. No, you don't do any spells or rituals or anything. No. No. But even if I was, who fucking cares? Yeah. Um, was Sarah still in the bushes? Was there anybody in the house when you guys went back there? Okay. Yeah. Um, what is the first thing that you guys did when you got back to her house? Went inside to look for his phone again. Okay. And then... Where's my phone, bro? 
Kate went upstairs to get the safe. Okay, where was the safe? In her room, I'm assuming. Did you go with him or not? Where were you? I was outside the living room. Okay. Um, where is the dog at this point? Still in the cage. Okay. What does the safe look like? So it was green metal, kind of like a, a Coleman camping Idaho. style. <laughs> The Idaho killer was a vegan? Dude. The Idaho killer was a vegan. Hitler was a vegan. Yeah, apparently some details have come out about that. People are saying it's horrible fucking shit. Yeah, I need to look more into that. Very, very bad, gruesome shit. Yeah, I know. I've been hearing that. And he ends up in Scranton. Jesus Christ. Man. Right? Uh, how big do you think? Uh, I'm not big. I go up like a laptop. Okay. And, um, did, it need, did you need a key to get into it, or was there a combination lock? I had a key, but we busted it up. How did you bust it open? Just with that hammer and screwdriver. And your house, you're right, Sarah says. Uh, let's okay. A screwdriver, um, man. I do need a screwdriver. Okay, sorry, river park. Buried in the Shark River Park. Pig. Did you bury it or did you get buried? Buried it. Leave it. With the money? No. Where's the money? One's and another. Side. Where's the money, Lebowski? Yeah, Lebowski, you don't give hey, us the Sandy money, you guy who will kill the girl. To bury it? Would you be able to show us where that is? You know exactly where it's at? I fuck you. I fuck you. Money, <laughs> I fuck you. I had enough money to just be like. I fuck you in the ass. Comfortably in my house, tripping, throwing parties all the time, doing whatever. Yeah. The That's what answer. he wants to do. Is it's it's for drugs. Dude, be careful. Don't drink too he much. He killed that girl for drugs. No wonder he killed her. He's a dumb shit drug addict who 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 probably freaking was tripping out, and the idea came to his head. You know that type of shit could have happened with dogs. Yeah. The easy. Easy. Fucking easy. We believe is nothing, Lebowski. No, I'm coming. I don't like. I don't want you to like, hurt yourself. I'm coming off a bender right now. I was just a uh, bender. Sort of everything, all kinds of drugs. Be careful. Cocaine, Adderall, whatever. Be careful. Shrooms, acid. You can't do that too much, bro. I told you. No, it was combined in a mush. No. It was just a uh, experiment world time. Of pain. I've never really done a lot of drugs, so I just wanted to try it all out, trip a little bit, find myself. Well, you did it, so just stay away from that. Yeah. See, uh, no, seriously, because I don't want you to be stupid after all this. When you arrived there, you were the behind that from Sarah's car. Where was Liam? He was on the sidewalk. On a what an Basically idiot. In the car. Okay. He's completely there, reckless with his life. Just stand there with him. Okay. And when you pulled up, was Sarah still in the car? Did <laughs> Liam need help? Pete, did you have to help Liam? Because I know he said that he couldn't drag her, he needed help. Did you have to help him lift her over? Yeah, he had her on the sidewalk. I just talked to him. Okay. How, how would he get her on the sidewalk? She was sitting there? Like half out of the car. Okay. So he was having trouble over the plane. Alright, so you helped him lift her and throw her over the bridge. Okay. Um, what the fuck? Is that dude? hard to do physically to get her over the bridge? Um, Preston changes his story. First, he claimed Liam threw Sarah's body in alone, but now he admits that he helped. Notice that Preston reenacts a throwing motion with his arms. He may not even be aware he did that, as people are less likely to lie with their body than their words. Do you know about what time Sarah went over the bridge? We know what time we, the, we found her car. Yeah. Uh, what's that, 10, 30, 11? Okay. You're you just kind of guessing based on, uh, obviously, the distance. I want to say it was 10, 30, just off of memory and okay. like relative sure. time. Um, now, what did you guys do after that, like that night? What did you guys do? Did you guys party? Did you drink? Smoke? Yeah, we went past the house, drank and smoked a little bit. Okay. You crashed the safe and started counting money. Okay. How much money was in the safe? It was 10,000. 
Only ten thousand. She should have never told these guys. Yeah, why did she? Because they were friends. Friends, yeah. What do you tell you about that? You're not going to think. Now, um, the money, there's 10000 Did did uh, How much of that money did he give to you? Three grand. Three grand? Okay, have you spent the money? You still have it in the house. I spent half of the um, just a really big summer weed. Um, weed. Rest, heat, I spent it on weed, man. Yeah. Um, and so did you and Liam went to uh, to bury the money together? Did you, what did you use? The, did you need to use a shovel or were you like how big did you keep this all? Uh, really isn't keep it all. We just started that ass. And the safe is in the, in the ground there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm blue yeah, like that. Yeah, like a marker or something like that would you know where man. it's, there's, I don't really know how to describe it, but there's like courtyards, like, it's fucking fake job, dude. They're, they're like, have walls, like retaining walls. Okay. And in one of those, it's just in that very corner. It's a very number of street. It's always very useful to get detailed information about things that only the perpetrator would know. It's also very useful for trial to have the money, as it was the motive for this crime, and introducing the money they stole into evidence will help sway a jury. You said there's another safe that's buried in Shark River Park? What safe is that again? That was the safe that we got from Sarah, and that just has a few loose articles of clothing. actions of burying her soiled clothes show absolute callousness it's, and also yeah. how gruesome the killing was tell us what he told you happened when he strangled her what, what was what was he doing there with her how did they get there what were they doing beforehand that sort of thing he told me that he was at her house i don't know what the scenario was it's such a piece of shit isn't leave. he Um, did he ever hook up with her? Go out with her or anything like that? <coughs> um, 
Did he ever express an interest in doing that? Do you know if she liked him, like wanted to go out with him or anything like that? So I know you had said that he did this for the money. Did he think he was going to get ten thousand dollars, five thousand dollars? How much money did he think he was going to get from this? All of it. All of it. Yeah, it was all of it. it was what he described as anywhere from like fifty thousand to five thousand dollars. Um, what are the other reasons <coughs> why he killed Sarah other than the money? Is there a thrill involved in it? This is something he's always wanted to do. Hmm. Well, no, it was just it was for the money. Yeah. It was just for and the what money. Yeah. The money for. Wow. For, Kill your friend, lifelong friend, for money. Because she didn't share it with him. Did he owe anybody money? Uh, I don't know. Um, was he was he having a problem? Like, would he have concerns about paying <laughs> rent? Like, it was just like, a, was he worried about money? I'm just uh, trying to get a feel for what, why. Not really. He has he had money in that bank at the time. Is he like the type of guy that's always down on like money, like doesn't have money, borrowing money from people all the time right now? No, it's always, it's always got some money on top of it. The detective is asking these questions to show how senseless the killing was, and that he didn't actually even need money. Did you know when you went off to work that day or the night before, did you know that this was going to happen, that he was going to do this? Did he, had he been talking about it? Had he been... First time he said it, it was just like a like insanity. Of other people, and it just seemed like a joke. And then he <coughs> mentioned it again. And then it was just that day, and it's like, hey, I did it. I need your help. Okay. The detective is again trying to show premeditation so that first degree murder can be charged. Good. Do you remember when Charge him. I hope he gets so much this time. Is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to but the bank something Sarah. tells me he's not because he's a fucking rich house. boy. Probably. Does it, does that, do you remember him saying that to you? They like to cater to the rich the boys. Of, yeah. Just like, yeah. Don't tell me. So the day that I don't want to know. Uh, did he tell you beforehand or he told you after? And he told me like, while I was going on. Like while he was with Sarah. So she were talking to him? I was at work and she had said, he's with Sarah, you know, he thinks that this might be his chance. Okay. Did you ask him any questions about her? No. No? Did you know what he was referring to? Yeah. The detective has built a very strong case against Preston by asking him specific questions concerning his knowledge of the crime. Were you were you supportive of him doing this so you can get some of the money? Whoa, more, just one more. Thank okay. You. Notice the extensive pause Preston takes before <laughs> answering this Still question. <laughs> if you were, it's okay. I don't know if there's gonna happen. So Preston did. The detective tells him if he supported Liam's actions, it's okay, as he can see Preston is having a hard time admitting he was okay with it. Preston just says it happened. That's contradictory to all his previous statements. It happened. The show this had been discussed and planned for months. You know, when it just came really home happens. From work that night, how did he look to you? Was he, he was sober, right? Yeah. Was he fucked up, drunk, high? No, yeah. he was completely sober. Was that? He was completely sober, just really frantic. Okay. Um, so do you think during the day, like, he was sober when he did this and just went to work and came home, and then that's when you guys started partying and hanging out? I'd rather suck a little weed during the day, but... He seemed fine to you when, yeah. when he was coming home from work to check to look for his phone. He seemed okay to you. <coughs> this line of questioning is meant to defend against any diminished capacity defense Liam could possibly try to raise at trial. There was a lot of search efforts that were made to find Sarah. Um, one, there was a big community came together and put together a big work, big organized search. Did you participate in that? Okay, he Liam participated in, that? in the search. Okay. Um, and what's the reason why? What did Liam tell you? He participated <clears throat> in the fucking search. What the fuck? That is beyond disturbing. 
Could you imagine they're searching for this girl in the right next to the dude who helped kill her? That's insane. What the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? I don't know why you guys did that. So just my gun to anyone who's got their eyes on him. Liam said that to you. Yeah. Did you agree with him? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What did you guys do? We went to the search party when it started. Fucking loser. We got split off into a group. We started walking down the beach. The detective is getting Preston to admit to a lot of compelling evidence and their state of mind during and after the crime. This will be very useful for the jury to hear. It shows they had no remorse for what they did after the fact and were able to put on an act in front of their family. Yeah. Has Liam ever done this to anybody else? Off the phone? No. Um, has, has he upset about what happened? What's his overall affect about what he did? Was really kind of anything with him? Okay. Um, is he sad? Is he depressed? I think it's is he really fucked up. How getting counseling, like therapy. Yeah. Uh, he just. It's very fucked up. Man. Quit his job afterwards, and it's just been. Yeah, body. we need to okay. stop this shit. Um, how do you feel about everything that happened to Sarah? Oh, You upset about it? Yeah. Do you think about it? A lot. A lot. Because it's been weighing on you? Yeah. I know this isn't easy for you right now. What do you think about? I think about what it means for me if Leila did come back to us. Did you think it was fine to? Liam did a pretty good job with convincing me that she covered everything up. Just for a while. But has he spoken to you about it? I, I don't <laughs> think obviously you guys talk about it every day, but does he tell you that? He's upset about it. Does he tell you that he regrets it? Does he say anything like that? Yeah, he doesn't say anything about it. Okay. Have you noticed a change in his demeanor or his attitude? I mean, it's, or is he just going on with his life like normal? He's going on with it like normal, but it's definitely he's just got, like, I don't know. More of an ego. More of an ego, yeah. He's cocky so, about he's it. Honest. The detective is trying to see if Preston has the capacity to show any emotion or remorse for what he and Liam did. He has shown almost no affect whatsoever during this interrogation. Preston only discusses his concern about getting caught and is solely focused on how this crime could possibly impact him. He doesn't even mention Sarah or her family. Preston displays the traits of a narcissist and possibly a sociopath, having more of an ego since the murder but otherwise acting normally indicates that Liam is likely a psychopath and definitely a narcissist. Oh, yeah. Liam being arrogant about this crime is a sure sign of a serious personality defect. I've done acid once, but I had a bad acid trip. Yeah, don't, don't trip. Uh, um, I, can't I did acid, and the cops came and took Preston to interrogate him. Oh, so you were on acid? I was on acid, and first of all, I come out of the shower, Preston's mom's on the couch talking to him they're all like secretive and i just go in my room i'm freaking out like what the f is she doing over here she leaves next thing i know the entire belmar police force is at my f door taking preston away like i thought they were arresting him they were gonna get he was gonna tell them everything he didn't say forward he didn't say anything i was losing my when I was tripping, I'm like, hey, you're probably scared. That's, that's not a good, that's not what I'm saying. You gotta stay away from hey, that. Hey, Ted. Shit. 
Where was Liam's phone? He said he lost his phone. Where was that phone? So he found the trial phone. Did he find it or somebody found it? So he found the trial phone. Um, now, did he... When did... When Do you know when he... No, Mahoney it? said he found it in the driveway. It was the next morning he got it back. Okay. And when you say Mahoney, the detective from Belmont? Yeah. Um, hang tight here. We're just going to take a quick break. Make sure we don't have any other questions for you, okay? Okay. You want a water? Want a bottle of water or anything? I'll be good. Okay. Yeah. We'll be right back, okay? All right. Thanks, person. He, he knows he's busted. down on his knees, which shows a sign of resignation and exhaustion. Yeah, yeah. The suspects will have to cry or show emotion once over. left alone in the interrogation room. He knows. Preston still shows almost no emotion and appears pensive and almost looks bored. Preston begins drumming his hands on the back of the chair. <laughs> This may be a sign of stress and self-soothing, but comes across as very strange after he just confessed to conspiring to rob and kill his friend and helping to dispose of her body. He begins to loudly bang out a song with his hands on the chair legs for the next few minutes. It's rather eerie to watch. There's a guy in solitary that did that for hours on the fucking sink. Uh, I just have a couple more questions for you and we'll be all finished up, okay? Um, so, just brought some, some maps in here. Where, where, looking at this aerial photograph, can you circle the area, put a circle around the area where the bushes <laughs> are that you dragged Sarah to? Okay. Okay. Um, and can you just write Sarah next to there? Right, and that's where you, that's that's where you you moved her to. Mm -hmm. So you which and the, the door is where. Right. Yeah. Well, this is like an arm under the that kind of. Okay, and that and so you dragged her all the way forward to the towards the right. Yeah. Okay. You just put your signature on the back of that for me, please. And I'll just put today's date on there as well. The detectives return with maps and photographs to solidify the statements he gave. This is the final stage of the read technique. Having the suspect point to maps or sketches of the scene and returning the suspect back to the scene or reenact the crime are commonly used at this confession stage. It's vitally important to back up the truthfulness of the confession with independent corroborating evidence, such as disclosing key facts of the crime, which would only be known to the perpetrator and investigators or turning over critically implicating evidence. We're, all, we're hoping that you're going to um, be able to take us to show us these locations. Would you be agreeable to that if we put you in a car? Would you take us, take us just to these spots so we're not having to go out and look? Yeah. All right. Um, and obviously, this what we're doing here, Preston, is obviously we want to be able to give the family some closure. Um, Sarah's family is devastated by her loss, obviously. Um, <coughs> I'm sure you can understand that. Yeah. Um, so everything and anything that we can do um, for them is is important. How are you communicating um, with Liam? Are you guys communicating on the phone? Are you guys communicating by like radio or portable radios? What were you guys using to communicate? He bought walkie talkies. What's that? He bought walkie talkies. Okay. What he bought walkie talkies. Uh, black did, black did, black. Did, like, why didn't he just go into the military yeah, and do stupid ass stone things stone. in the military? Okay, so one's in your car. Yeah. And where's the one that he has? And then someone in the house. Okay. Do you know what brand they are? Maybe he's okay. crazy he for them? that. Well, uh, okay. Did he buy them specifically for this? I'm uh, sorry, sir. Okay. Did he tell you that? Did he say, hey, I bought these walkie talkies so we can <laughs> when, we, when, we, when I do this? And we, or no, he came in a walk and talk to me. Like when we were going over the bridge, he was like, Yeah, I don't know, if not using bombs. Maybe a walk talk. Okay, so did he give you the walk talk before you left Sarah's house? Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you guys use them? Yeah. Okay, and what kind of things were you guys communicating about? 
they just said, I'm coming up on the bridge. And I said, okay, I'm coming up behind you. And he's like, all right, hurry up, because I'm not, because I can't get this over myself. I pulled up behind you. This is another compelling piece of evidence that goes towards premeditation and the depth of the into this crime. But the evidence that Liam bought these specifically for this crime. This also indicates that Liam may have intentionally left his phone or was planning to leave it at home so his whereabouts aren't trackable. When you spoke to Liam and Liam told you that he was with Sarah and that today may be the day that he was going to do it, however he explained, expressed that to you, um, how did he tell that to you? Did he tell that to you on the phone, through text message, on Snapchat? Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, yep. The there you go. Okay. There's fucking no, murders being planned. I'm never going on Snapchat. Fuck Snapchat. I'm staying away from all these places that are like um, fucked up. Leon Katazi something. Okay, does he have one encounter? Does he have more than one encounter? I think the one. This is relevant as Snapchat messages disappear after a brief amount of time. The detective asks if Liam normally uses Snapchat to communicate to try to show that he purposely used it in this instance because it would disappear quickly and isn't stored like a message. I know reading Miranda rights, everything that I'll use to I'm under arrest. What's um, so there's no, your situation right now is there's no, there's no complaints filed against you right now. Um, Okay, after we're done talking to you, um, basically what happens is we make it, we'll have to consult with our supervisors and we'll have to come to a decision from a legal perspective. An assistant prosecutor would make a decision as to what charges um, would be filed against you. Okay. Um, you've been today. Um, we appreciate that, Preston. Uh, I know this wasn't easy for you to do. Um, I think you, I think you understand that um, what you did today was um, a very positive thing, um, not only for yourself, because you've been carrying this burden and you've been walking around every day since this happened with this weight on your shoulders. Um, I look at you today um, and I remember seeing you on December 7th when I spoke to you and you look like a different person. Um, I would imagine you have some relief. Uh, I can't imagine what it must feel like every single day waking up in the morning, um, especially knowing that you have a sister, um, looking at yourself in the mirror every day, I'm sure was it not an easy thing for you to do. Am I right? Yeah. Um, I can tell you, um, I think you did the right thing here. Um, I feel like you wanted to do the right thing in December when we spoke to you. I remember looking at you. I remember how upset you were that night. Right. Um, I, I think you're, you're a young guy, man. You're 19 years old. I think you have, you have many kids. years ahead of you. You have a long life ahead of you. And I think, um, I think by doing this, you're able to put yourself in a position where you can, you'll be able to move on. Uh, I hope you feel that way. Um, we appreciate, as I said to you earlier, that your cooperation. And, um, you know, from when, when, when we saw you the first earlier today until we brought you down here, um, you've been nothing but respectful and cooperative, and we appreciate that. It was the same thing when we spoke to you out, at, um, out in Delmar. <coughs> All right. The detective knows he has enough to arrest Preston at this point, but wants him to cooperate and take them to the crime scene. So he makes it seem like this decision has not been made yet. The reality is that his arrest is not a question of if, but when. The detective yeah. is trying to elicit emotion from Preston yeah. by mentioning his sister and how much of a burden this must have been for him to carry around. Preston has given them a solid case, but he may be needed to prove the case against yeah, Liam. I don't care. His cooperation could benefit him if he will testify for the state. If the state needs an accomplice to convict the main actor, they will I'm often give them a lighter thing, sentence man. in exchange for their testimony in court. Would you be able to bring us to where Sarah's body is, Preston? I don't know where her body is, but in the safes? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you already explained to us where you, 
she was thrown over the bridge. Yeah. All right, we appreciate that. Um, let me just go uh, get our cars ready and we'll, uh, we'll take a ride, okay? All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. finally shows some emotion and cries momentarily. This appears to be out of stress and because he knows he will likely be arrested since he already asked about that. Preston never says anything about regretting what he did or express any kind of remorse. It's disturbing that he could do this to a childhood friend and a person he took to prom over some money. He had ample opportunity to report Liam as well as the opportunity to discontinue his involvement. Right. Preston made decision after decision <clears throat> to continue with the crime. Liam is the mastermind behind this, but Preston was intricately involved. It seems unlikely Preston would have done something like this without Liam, whereas Liam seems like he would have done this no matter who was or wasn't involved. Following the interrogation, the detectives take Preston to exactly where he and Liam threw Sarah's body off the bridge and into the river. Note the eerie and emotionless way Preston reenacts how he helped Liam lift her body and throw it, even miming the motion with his hands. My name is Detective Ryan Weisbrot with the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. I'm currently located in my county-issued vehicle uh, parked behind the Neptune City Police Department. Uh, present in the car is Detective Nicholas Catalona of the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office Forensic and Technical Services Bureau, along with uh, Preston Taylor and Preston Taylor's attorney, uh, John Carone, uh, what was the purpose of traveling to the bridge? To dispose of Sarah's body, throwing it off of the bridge into the marina. And what was your route of travel from Sarah's house to the Route 35 bridge? I made the right off of Midwood Street onto Steiner, straight to the intersection on 35 and made a left and continued straight to the Belmont Bridge. Okay. And um, are you aware <coughs> if Liam traveled to the Route 35 bridge on the same route that you took? No, he took another roundabout way <coughs> to avoid being seen on any storefront cameras along 35. Okay, Preston, we are currently approaching the base of the Route 35 bridge on the Neptune Southampton side. Can you please um, identify the location where Liam had parked Sarah's Dirt vehicle on December 2nd, 2016? Yeah, right over here. Now I'm pulling my vehicle off to the shoulder of the roadway. Liam had lifted Sarah's body by the shoulders and gotten her partially up onto the curb where I then grabbed her by the legs. He... shoulders and hoisted her up onto the railing and then I pushed her feet over so that she was going over the rest of the way. Are you confident that her body went over the bridge prior to getting to this equipment? Yes. Do you remember seeing this equipment? Yes. Okay. Specifically what that is happening, like right? cone-shaped radar piece right there. About a week and a half later, yeah, the police right? then take like, Preston to Sarah's house to do a walkthrough so, so that he could style. show them what he did the first time he arrived at her house to move her body and look for Liam's phone. Crazy. Uh, we're along the back fence and I parked my car just right over here and hopped the fence right here. Okay. Uh, I was informed beforehand that the back door would be left unlocked. Okay, who told you that? Late. Okay. And I entered. When I entered. Are you guys with the lights on in the house? Or are they off? 
The lights back here are off, but the kitchen and the room are off. Kind of extremely low okay. voice. And I know. This uh, door was closed. <laughs> This one I couldn't get open, but I was able to push this one open, enter, and Sarah was slumped in this corner right here. God okay. bless her, oh, man. Again, again, behind on this door. Preston, you said, no, there's these two bifold doors here. The door to the left was in what position? It was closed. Okay. And did you try to open it? I tried to, was only able to get it about that far, and realized that she was behind the door. Okay, and how about the right door? Were you able to open that fully? Yes. Okay, and uh, where, where, how was Sarah's body positioned in this bathroom? She was sitting like this, tucked into the corner and leaning over the toilet. Okay, and her feet were where? Sticking out into the room. My first reaction, I left her, and I went to go throughout the house and look for the nearest phone. Okay, you can take us to where you are uh, looking for the phone. This is bullshit, here, man. Is your body just naked in there now? Like, maybe. I can send you this way. Because like, they just both of her clothes, right? Right. The dog was in its kennel as it is right oh, now. Right, where was the dog's kennel at the time? Right there. And at first, I just looked in this general vicinity. I looked under the couch. What are you looking for when you're in here? Liam's phone. Okay. Uh, when you were in this room, did you take note of anything that was out of the ordinary or in disarray? Yeah, it looks like a firefighter outfit. I mean, it's actually from the police like department. This, not these yeah. same ones, but okay. Probably for an it inmate. Similar clutter. Okay. You know, yeah, and probably. From there. But that is weird looking. I looked it's up empty. here, opened the closet to see if it had slipped under the door. Closed it, and I continued upstairs and into Sarah's room, where I searched just on the floor and on top of everything here. Like these people the have no shame. And amongst all the clutter on this half of the room, and I didn't see the phone anywhere, so I went back down to where Sarah was. Okay. Yeah. Um, prior to coming here, did Liam or anyone else tell you? Where you would find Sarah? Liam told me that she would be downstairs by the back. Okay. And... Did he specifically say where downstairs by the back? He didn't, but... Okay. I didn't take much looking to find her. Okay. And then, once I got back down here, I picked her up under the shoulders and hoisted her up. And I dragged her backwards out the door. She was been facing away and I had my arms under her shoulders like this. Okay. Um, so were her feet dragging on the, on the ground? Yeah. Okay. And then I carried her over here, dragged her over here and kind of sat her under the bushes right here. These are the bushes that you place Sarah in? Mm -hmm. Okay, and yes. how, did, how did you position her when you brought her out here? She was laying on her side like this. Okay. Which direction was her face? Facing outward. Okay. And with her feet down here and her head up here. Okay. So her head was up here and, and her face was facing... God. Her her? Yeah. Okay. And then from there, I... Jumped the fence where I had entered. Okay, if you can take us back to that area. I jumped back over the fence. I got in my car, turned around, and went out that way. Immediately <laughs> after, Preston then did a second to reenact what happened when he and Liam returned together after Liam finished work. I waited right here where I could see the car, plus what's going on with the lights in the house. And what was the purpose of you being here the second time? Just to keep watch and make sure everything went smooth. Okay, and now why did Liam come back here with you? What was your purpose in being here? To move Sarah's body to. Okay. Um, you, during your second trip, did you go inside of Sarah's house? No. And um, did Liam go inside the house? Liam went inside the house to get the safe and <coughs> out front 
and he does look like a firefighter. I don't know why he's wearing that. Uh, it says NCPD. Yeah. Maybe he was cold, he, he, uh, and they gave him a jacket to, to wear. Maybe. Uh, okay. Um, so we went inside the house. Did he get the safe? Yes. Okay. What door did he go inside the house in? He entered through this back door. Okay. And did you see him come out of the house with the safe? No. Okay. What door did he come out of with the safe? The front door. Okay. And what did he do with the safe when he came out of the house? He came out the back door, not the front door. Okay. And he gave me the safe. Okay. And I put the safe back over by where we jumped the fence. Okay. So you walked the safe back over there? Yes. Okay. And so we came over here to where Sarah was left. Right under these bushes here. We pulled her out. And he picked her up to start dragging her. Yeah, exactly. It's reflective, so if he runs, they can still see him. I grabbed her yeah, legs exactly. and got her over to the fence. That's correct. So you have, you're carrying Sarah by her legs, or her legs She's dragging on the ground, or are they up in the air? No. I was, yeah. like, holding them up okay. in the air. And what part of Sarah's body was laying for? Her torso. Okay. And she carried her over to this fence near the safe was. Hoisted her up and over, threw the safe over, the two of us jumped over, and I got in my vehicle, and they got in this girl a lot, this fucking exhausting. Sarah's vehicle. I know, right? Um, when you say you hoisted Sarah over, you explain how you did that and what, what happened. I have no idea. Liam jumped over the fence much. first. You're just lugging her around, man. I lifted her up. He grabbed her by the torso <coughs> from the other side of the fence. <coughs> as I lifted her legs up. So, did you help him put Sarah in the car? I helped him <coughs> keep her in while I got the door closed. Yeah. Okay. Um, and how was she positioned in the car? Sitting upright. Okay. Um, did she have a seatbelt on? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> If somebody were driving down the road and looking into that car, would uh, they? Yeah, they I guess. Well, they would have seen yeah. Liam driving a car and Sarah. I mean, lay off the check first. Okay. She was asleep, asleep in the passenger seat. Sarah's body has never been found. It's your life, you might as well make it one. <laughs> what, are you going to live some boring ass life? I don't feel any different. I don't think about it. You always think you're gonna try these new things, and you're gonna change. Right? Like murdering change, someone? It just doesn't do anything. Like tonight, we were gonna potentially kill a bunch of people and, and get a bunch of drugs and money, and nothing. It's weird. Wait, he was gonna kill again. Yeah. Get a bunch of drugs and money. Well, it was good seeing you, buddy. When I come back down, let's fucking do something. He, he, it's listen, look at me. Be safe, all right? Don't do anything stupid. Listen, I'm not going to let Preston do anything dumb. I did something really dumb, and I planned it out for half a year. I, I have patience. I got it. It's good talking to you, bro. Good talking. Take it easy, bro. Safe travels, all right? Psycho. You got everything? No, that's uh, a true psycho. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, killing is like just, yeah, I think whatever. I know, I'll kill you. He just does not care. Is that? Oh, oh my keys are. Thought I had everything. Oh, they're there. You got them? Alright, brother. Alright, bro. Chasney was charged with first-degree murder, first-degree felony murder, first-degree robbery, second-degree conspiracy to commit robbery, second-degree disturbing or desecrating human remains, and second-degree hindering apprehension. Wow. Liam's attorney tried to have the secret recording where he confesses excluded from evidence at the trial. They argued that the first uh. who made the recording was acting as an agent of the police. And if you'll remember, Liam was represented by an attorney at the time. So therefore, he should not have been questioned about Sarah. 
the video was still shown in court. Wow, they still used Preston it. Preston took a plea yeah. by and wow. against Liam. He said that Liam claimed Sarah had the type of money somebody would kill for, and that he originally planned to get her drunk and take the money. During his own trial, Preston apologized for his part in Sarah's death. Though he addressed his statement to Mr. Stern and all those who had the blessing of knowing Sarah, Sarah's father didn't want to hear anything Preston had to say. Good As for he him. Spoke, Michael walked out of the courtroom with his girlfriend, Christine Eckert. Preston also apologized to Sarah and called her a very beautiful young woman who didn't in any way deserve the end you met. Her father only returned once Preston was done talking. In 2019, Preston Damn. Taylor was sentenced to 18 years in prison. He must serve at least 85% of the sentence, about 15 years, before he can be considered for parole. Also, in 2019, then 21-year-old Liam McAtasney was convicted of Sarah's first-degree murder, conspiracy, tampering with evidence, and sentenced to life in prison without parole. Why are you he also received an additional 10-year sentence for the desecration of human remains that, that one will dude's run consecutively years, to his life sentence. But good. He will never get out of prison. Good! Fuck him! Wow. He eventually admitted. He... He freaking deserved that. Wow. That was nuts. Heck yeah, man. That was nuts. Yeah, man. This dude. Like, fuck him. Wow. What a psychopath. That was nuts. He's just bragging about it, and he has no remorse. No. None. None at all. Mm-mm. Enjoy prison for life, asshole. You deserve it. You earned it. Horrible. Disgusting shit. Alright, guys. We're gonna head to bed. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. You know. Peace and Maranatha, guys. It's been a good stream. Yeah. Yeah. I love you guys. Thank you for all the support and everything. You're just like really touching my heart. I hope I hope <laughs> I hope it doesn't go bad. So praise Jesus. Jesus bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye and good night. Good night.